Kill all the guys first. Uh, man, I thought it was going to take like three or four days to get back on track, but new motherboard in the machine. Everything is, everything's A-OK. -okay. Uh, I'm going to play some Doom 3 because I've been wanting to play Doom 3 again. First, I'm going to let this music play. Yeah, verbose. Yesterday was a journey. Uh, my PC did not want to live. I was very intent on not living and dead staying dead. The HD Absolute? You'll have to tell me. Yeah, the title screen leaves a little bit to be desired. The uh, HD pack is one of many mods that are currently running. Sick mod is the, is the most important one. It's got all the like color correction and lighting and uh, ambient occlusion adds a lot to this game. Ots rock track. <clears throat> Digital Tears, thanks for the prime. Is that weird sphere part of the original t release title screen? It's usually Mars. It usually is Mars back there. I don't know why it looks like that with this mod. Fragtastic, thanks for the prime. Uh, so the mod uh, that I installed, I was trying to merge a bunch of other mods. Nor uh, specifically merge sick mod which really does add a lot of really cool graphical effects to the game and I think makes it look a lot better like especially compared to BFG mod here let's actually let's do something for fun let's do something really fun here and hopefully it quits okay whew. um so <laughs> while I was in the process of modding this and testing out some other mods and stuff holy moly was my my PC getting really unstable um yeah, let's let's take a look at BFG and see what that looks like, and then and then we can appreciate the point of uh, of modding the original Doom Three. Um, yeah, BFG edition's not great. Um, that I think BFG edition was the attempt to turn Doom Three into the game everyone thought they wanted, like a really bright, straightforward shooter. <clears throat> yeah, so let me uh, let me go through the story of what happened to my computer. Holy cow! So, uh, it was, it was getting unstable. I was like, I was testing some stuff with Doom 3. It got to the point where like the game couldn't quit, uh, gracefully. It would lock up my entire PC when I tried to quit. Um, had a couple of times where like my PC just wouldn't boot. Like I would, tr I would hit the button, things would turn on, but I wouldn't get any video signal. Uh, another time I tried to boot and it didn't find a, a boot drive. Like it just, it went to the Windows recovery screen. I was like, shit. So I power cycled it. It came back. I was like, oh, okay. <sighs> It's always, this is, no, this wasn't live. This, this was me setting up for a stream yesterday, which I ended up not doing. So this motherboard that is now out of my PC has always been a bit of a pain in the ass. It's always been a little unreliable, always been a little unstable. I really haven't been happy with it since I was using it. Um, I bought it mostly because it had like, it had the number of USB ports I needed and didn't have, didn't have some other stuff I needed or didn't want basically. But anyway, yeah, Aorus, go in the, go in the trash can. Uh, what? Probably gonna end up just slamming this into the ground. It's Gigabyte, which I usually had pretty good experience with. Um, it could have been on my setup or something. I don't know. But it was always a little, a little weird. I went, I wanna say like, 5% of my boots didn't go through, but the, the rest would. Opinion on drunk driving? Well, that's an easy dunk. Don't do it. Don't ever fucking do it, ever. It's, there's no point. We have rideshare now. Anyway, uh, so yeah, this is, this is the bane of my existence. Yeah, so what I was doing was, I was actually noodling around on my PC. All right, where to start with this? So it occurred to me, I was running 3D Mark uh, because I was testing the difference between game mode and creator mode. Uh, which are presets in Ryzen Master. So essentially, like, game mode turns off half the cores, but then I think raises the boost clock of, of the remaining cores. So I was just like, I was just like, let's see what, what, 
you know what the difference is what what the difference in performance is between game mode and creator mode and while that was happening uh i noticed whenever there was a uh whenever there was a load dropped on my cpu i wouldn't really hear the fan spin faster so i switched to a water like a water cooling solution um and so because of that there's no fan on the cpu the cpu jumper is just for the pump uh all of the fans are chassis fans because it blows through the radiator and uh i was like well that, that's weird shouldn't shouldn't the chassis fans kick up even if the cpu is getting hotter um so i went into the bios and i noticed oh the uh the, the fan speeds are linked to chassis temperature not to cpu temperature so i swapped them to cpu temperature and look at that uh um my my temperatures dropped my performance went up it was great so i put it in creator mode uh i was i was cooling down the processor a little bit better a little more effectively and uh everything was great um and then i was like oh i'm gonna do even one better because there's a there's really old fan in the front of my very old case it's a bad case for airflow but there was a fan that's been in there since i got it basically uh and it wasn't turning very fast like 300 rpm because it was old as shit so I was like, well, I can swap that out with a newer fan that can push more air, but I'm gonna have to like pop the front panel of my case off, which involves like, there's some plastic things that I have to like squeeze out and push and like pry off with a, it's a bit of a process. I've done it before, but I was like, well, you know what, whatever, I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling crafty. So I did it again. I popped the front off, I replaced the fan, but then as I was taking off one of the side panels, my computer shut down. I should have probably had it off in the first place, but I was like, I've taken the panel side panels off my PC while it's running a million times. It's never been an issue. So I thought it wouldn't be a problem this time. Um, so yeah, in the middle of doing that, my PC just went pew. And I was like, eh, must have just, must have just, you know, something probably just rattled. Something probably just changed. You know, like, little connection just went bleep, and it just shut down. No, no, but no big deal. So I finished putting in a new, P, a new fan, and then it wouldn't turn on. And I was like, that's not good. So I checked, I like checked all my jumpers, reseated some cables, unplug, plug, 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 plug. Still not turning on. Like not even turning. Aerospace Corporation is the this largest is, corporate whatever. Entity so this is BFG. I'm gonna run this just so you guys know what Doom 3 does look like when uh, they just apply global lighting to everything. It, it is dumb. This is this is just a control a control group right here. Okay, so yeah, uh, and then I was like, well, what's going on? Because usually a computer will at least turn on, like the fans will spin, the uh, the LEDs on cards will light up because they'll get power. It was nothing. It was big time dead. I'm just gonna skip that. We'll watch. Wait, can I skip that? Maybe not. Can't skip this in BFG, huh? All right, well we'll watch this. Uh, so I was like, shit. It's either the motherboard or it's the power supply. So, uh, or any number of other things, but probably one of those two if nothing's turning on. Um, so I took the power supply out of my streaming PC, plugged it into my main PC, tried powering it, still nothing. Super dead. Wow, okay, so I guess it's the motherboard. That's the only other thing it can be. Um, so I actually looked around, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I either, I either wait a couple of days to get something shipped to me, or, luckily... I poked around on Best Buy's website, found a motherboard that has my has the socket for the CPU that I have, and there was one that was like 20 miles away, actually more like 10 miles away. We've got to 10 LA mi 10 a LA miles is 20 miles anywhere. <laughs> so uh, I ordered it for store pickup, drove down there, got it, came back, swapped everything in, which took a while, but I did it. Put on a little more thermal paste this time because the, the coverage looked a little light. It's come to this. I didn't Plugged it all in. Plugged in the power, plugged in my video card, but this is the last time. and it turns on. Fires right up. Boom, right to BIOS. All right, sick. And it, de it goes one better than that. I go, to the, I go to the RAID stuff, I set it up, it detects my RAID array, because I have a RAID because I'm an idiot. And it even booted Windows. I was like, all right, cool, we're in business. So I'm like, cool. That was a little stressful, but no problem. We're, we're in the money now. All right, so this is Doom 3 BFG edition. Behold, it looks like a, a video game, right? Welcome to Mars. There's this guy. All new arrivals need to check in at reception. I don't know why it's like... To help you, just head to reception. I don't know why it's giving me button, like controller button prompts, even though I'm on a mouse and PC. So this is the re-release, but we don't need this. This is dumb. This looks stupid, and I'll show you why. That looks okay. Looks fine. 
But is it though? Is it actually fine? <clears throat> what if I run this totally cool, completely hacked Doom3.exe dash shortcut? Then we get to see how the game was meant to look. With the absolute HD pack. Okay, so everything's fine. I'm plugging in all my peripherals, I'm plugging in my monitors. And then all the monitors go black. PC is still on. Monitors are black. I'm like, that's weird. I'm like, keyboard is kind of, it's, it's stuck. Like, it won't turn the caps lock light on or off. Um, so I was like, okay, weird. So I turn it off. Try to turn it back on. And now it won't boot. It just won't. Katie, thank you for the resub. It's good to see you. Oh, that's right. They don't give you the drop. Um, luckily, this motherboard has uh, LED lights on the board. It was getting stuck on DRAM, like it was passing the CPU check and getting stuck on RAM, so it said. I didn't change a thing. Nothing about the hardware setup changed. It just beep and would not boot anymore. So I, don't, I was like, what the fuck? That's one of the only times I've ever had that happen. Um... So I spent the rest of the evening troubleshooting it, basically. Pulling things out, changing things, clearing the CMOS, popping the battery off the motherboard, trying to get it to just post. Trying to get it to output something um, to a monitor, so I had something to work with. I even tried to update the BIOS like via the onboard stuff, and it just didn't do that. I don't know, BIOSes are really fickle. That's I suppose they ought to be. Uh, but it just wouldn't happen. Wouldn't go for it. Bearing in mind that it completely booted on this exact setup. Uh, completely to Windows, everything was fine. For a little bit. Anyway, look how moody this is already. See how moody? Yes, sir. It's still gonna get moodier. Tower. Uh, so eventually, uh, so I, I'm just like, I'm just bummed. Because I'm like, okay, maybe it's the CPU at this point. I don't know what's going on, but something's crazy busted and it's just not waking up. Uh... So I, I kind of start looking into other hardware to buy. And I'm like, man, this is going to be expensive. Because I basically have to buy everything, you know? I could just buy a new... I could buy a new RAM to test it out, but the RAM worked. Left you no choice. True. And even then I have to wait, like, a couple of days just to test. to running damage control every time he makes a mess. Right. You're the control. And if that fails, I'm the damage. Missing the very cool story. But Truger is going to start doing things our way. Double. Was a RAM stick slightly unseated? I did so much unseating and reseating of RAM. All right, look at how moody this room is. It's got character. It's got contrast. This looks like a place demons would invade. Um. So yeah, I tried. I tried pulling sticks out, changing them around. Definitely tried reseating them. Um. Tried tried rotating in which dims they were in. Looked up in the motherboard manual which dims they were supposed to be in. Nothing. Would not get past this DRAM light. No RAM in there at all. Same thing. Would just not get past it. Um, so I was like, wah. It's just effed. It's just effed. But then this morning. Then this morning, I was like, well, I'll try one last thing. All right, one last thing. I popped the video card out, popped the battery off, shorted out the CMOS clear with a screwdriver. Put it all back together. Guess what? Now it posts. I get to BIOS just fine. I, set, I updated the BIOS, set up my RAID, booted into Windows. It's been rock solid. Performance is really good. Uh, I got Welcome nice... To Mars. All new arrivals need to got good scores in 3D Mark, better than they were before, so... To help you, just head to reception. I don't know... I don't know what happened. Something... I didn't change anything in, in the BIOS. I don't know why clearing the CMOS got it... Got it over the hump, but it did. I'm not gonna, to not gonna question it too hard now. But Aerospace's premier research facility. To expedite your processing, please proceed I directly to reception. But I'm not looking to gift horse in the mouse right now, because Doom Three is running. I don't have to reinstall it and all the mods. I don't have to set up Breath of the Wild on Simu again, which I was really not looking forward to. I wasn't looking forward to losing my Ripper save. <laughs> like I was kind of itemizing all the, all the things that would evaporate into dust if I had to build a new one. Maybe there's some weird issue going with Windows and the motherboard. Maybe. Maybe. All I can figure 
Um, back up that Reaper save? Yeah, I need to. I really do. I need to throw it onto Google Drive or something. All I can figure, um, because when I took the old motherboard out, there was a chunk of, of metal, like a pop, a loose pop rivet or something, that had fallen behind the motherboard. So I'm thinking like, okay, when I was taking a side panel off, I'm going to guess that some loose piece of metal from this old ass uh, case must have fallen behind the motherboard and shorted it out, um, which prevented it from turning on, which is good. Because if it had turned on while it was shorted out, it probably would have caused a fire. Uh, or actually burned some hardware. So that theoretically explains why the old motherboard would just not turn on at all. Why it got nothing out of it. Doesn't explain at all why the new build uh, decided to just flicker off and then fuck me over. Like, Welcome just completely fuck up for like four hours straight. But whatever, I'm past it now. I'm gonna need you to step on one of those red squares on the floor for a bio scan. This will only take a second. Such a wet sound. Okay, let me get this started. You're gonna need to hold still. Moving around only makes the test take longer. Anyway, can we get subtitles? I don't know if this game has them, but I can look. I don't think it has them. I think this is from an era before subtitles, and I don't know, I don't think any of the mods I added have that. Scan looks yeah, I, th I don't think subtitles exist, unfortunately. I gotta rebind some of this shit, though. <sighs> Era before reading. There's not that much dialogue in the game, if that helps at all. Maybe there's... Maybe they added it. I don't think so, though. Explosion effects. Blood spray. Dynamic HUD. Okay. Can't believe I almost didn't apply some of those totally cool options. Ring gun, aids, plasma, rockets, e soul cube, chainsaw. Oh, there is a reload in this game. Ah. Hmm. That sucks. <laughs> I don't think X is bound to anything. A doom with a reload. You're cleared for entry. Would RTX do anything for this game? Uh. RTX is not on. This game does not have ray tracing. But it does have dynamic shadows, which is kind of a form of cheat ray tracing. Dynamic lighting was the whole the whole tech of this game. Please report to Central Administration. Goal number one at the UAC is the PDA and well being of all. Watch some more cutscenes. To help achieve this goal, we ask you to follow all UAC corporate. Oh yeah, it's not frame tearing, is it? No, this looks good. Let me know if it ever gets weird. Welcome to Mars. First time. You can just leave your bag there. I'll have it sent up your quarters. Okay, there's a few things we need to take care of first. This is your personal data assistant. Do you see the shadows on the table? It's all secure areas. They're moving with his arm! Any security zones from a dynamic light source. Directly. It's important, so don't lose it. I see here that Sergeant Kelly has requested your immediate attention. Head directly to Marine Command. It's just that way. Follow the signs. Ooh, Chaim, Chaim Ifra. Hope I'm saying that. Let me know if Chaim Ifra. Let me see if. Let me know if I'm saying that off. I might be swinging a little too high. Might be shooting a little too high with that, but hopefully, hopefully I'm close. Thank you for the prime. Your PDA is critical to your work at the UAC. Toggle your PDA with the assigned bind. Yeah, whatever. There's no fun lore in these things, I don't think. It's just uh, just uh, tutorial messages. Got closer? Okay. I'm glad I got close. Welcome Mars Marine. 
I would like to take a brief moment of your time and welcome you to what we call our home away from home. We will make every effort to make your stay here as pleasant as possible. And if you need something, please feel free to contact your supervisor for immediate assistance. I hope that you can find the time to take advantage of some of our great staff amenities. As a reminder, we engage in technical, highly secure testing and research here. Please refrain from wandering into unauthorized areas. Any security team member will be will assist you if help is needed. Thank you, Director Banks. Marine. Report to Marine Command as soon as possible. Don't waste any time getting here. We're short on troops and I need you out on patrol as soon as possible. So Sergeant Kelly. Still has the... Oh no, the animation isn't playing. That's weird. I... Hmm. Maybe there's a mod for that? It did... There was... I did see something to turn my, my player model off. Maybe if I do this... Oh, Jesus, no. That's... Oh, that's way worse. Usually there's a little animation of him whipping out his... uh. A little animation of him whipping out his, his PDA, like a little his little doom hands come out. Uh, it's not necessary, but I kind of miss it. There's probably an uh, there's probably an uh, animation or an option for that. Bogsy, thank you for the prime. Oh, Morgan farts. Thanks for the prime. I'm forgetting to renew because I don't have the time to pop in as much, but I'd like as I'd like to. But hello, hello, hello. Let's see. I bet there's got to... Hmm. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe one of the Thank mods I installed got rid of it? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Sweetie, no. Dr. Jonathan Ishii from the Delta Science team is missing. Security is concerned that he may be injured and unable to respond to pages or return to his post. Please keep an eye out for Dr. Ishii and report to UAC security if he's located. He was last seen in Mars City Underground approaching the airlock leading to the old communications array. What game engine was this made on? This was tech. Id tech 5. 5? 4? 4. Huh, 4. I guess Rage was 5, because they're on 6 now, right? Safety is critical to everything we do on Mars. We will review all standard safety protocols during the month of November, Safety Awareness Month. It is mandatory that you schedule time to attend each of these valuable workshops. Proper plasma handling. Review with the proper storage of plasma, how to handle plasma leaks, and the best ways to treat plasma burns. Emergency first aid. Learn the location and correct use for all of the health packs placed throughout the facility. Special attention will be given to waste prevention methods. Health resources are squandered if a large pack is used when only a small pack is needed. <laughs> We're giving you some doom strats here. Just played a few levels of Doom 2016 myself. Also bought Control and Steam for 12 bucks because it's on sale. Those are both excellent action games. Oh, man. Good pickups. Uh, storage of weapons and ammo. Special lecture on the safe storage of weapons and ammo. Fred Nelson. we giving a hands-on lessons of proper targeting and strafing. Emergency loss of environment. This lecture will focus on what to do if you're faced with an air leak structural failure or airlock failure. Special care will be paid to the locations of emergency air tanks. Postings outside of UAC HR for times and locations. Yeah, I'm glad people are kind of people are kind of finding control a little late, which is great. It didn't do so well out of the gate, and it's super rare for a game like that to have any kind of tail. But it does seem like control is is doing okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot. Gotta watch this dude write some emails. Pretty sure there's an Easter egg here. Writing that script for IG. I wish Doom Marine would loom over my shoulder while I wrote scripts. Hacking with my index fingers, one one letter at a time. I enjoy watching it, but I had the same distaste for Alan Wake. This is cool, but the gameplay is not hitting. A supplemental here. Uh, yeah, Alan Wake was a was a pretty basic game. Pretty easy, pretty simple. <laughs> Covered over me reading everything I type. You're damn right. It's got heart and lore. Yeah, it does. Um, it's 
got hardened lore. It was made. It was made for a different time. Yeah, I think you'll find most console games, most games targeting console at that time, were pretty. Were pretty like paper thin, in terms of the actual gameplay they offered. It was. A, it was an era of glitz over, over consistency. That's for sure. Or sorry, it was a uh, flash over substance. I'm here. Style over substance. There seems to be some very serious problem. That was the style at the really? time. Really. Do I need to remind you of the groundbreaking work that we're doing here? No, but I've been authorized by the board to look at everything. The board authorized you? It's hmm. OG prey on your list of play on streams eventually. Science. All they want is something to make them more money. This is a fun game. Product. Maybe. Don't worry. I do like that They'll game. They'll get their product. After how many accidents? Like that game in Quake 4 Why are so were many the only, like, cinematic single-player shooters of that era. They simply can't handle life here. They're exhausted and overworked. If I had a larger, more competent staff and bigger budget, even these few accidents could have been avoided. I'm afraid you'll get nothing more until my report is filed with the board. I will need full access, Dr. Petruga. Delta These are the longest cutscenes in the game. Difficulties doing that it's really not a cutscene heavy game. Only it's kind of weird that the intro has this many. Just stay out of my way. Amazing things will happen here soon. You just wait. I guess you needed some juice for the trailers. Let's go. Keeks. Thank you for the sub. I can't take the monorail yet. I think the lighting in BFG edition is really good, but seeing the original version now, I get what people might have been saying about the game being too dark. Even the areas you're supposed to have a lot of light, you can't see shit. Uh, I'll get a flashlight eventually. What I one of the things that I really love. I think I've seen you before. You must be a replacement for one of the guys we lost. So, uh, sorry. First things first. This is modded. This is modded to be even more even more dark eh. um have higher contrast basically and even more shadowing it's kind of overlaid on everything so there's more shadows there's uh soft shadows and a bunch of stuff eh. uh. look at it look at the shadows oh. uh. 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 <laughs> uh. there we go okay it only goes back and forth so first of all, this is not even what original Doom 3 looked like. This is even kind of darker. This is like, this is Escape from Butcher Bay lighting, which is rad. Uh, but most people didn't like the being forced to choose between shooting and seeing, but I love it. Also, Doom 3 has dynamic lighting, as I was saying before, which means the muzzle flash from your gun can illuminate the room and cast its own shadows, which was a totally new thing then. Um, so I am... I really like the idea of either having to put away your gun to see where you're shooting, or you shoot from the light cast by your gunfire. Also, uh, most enemies have something on them that glows. Imps have glowing eyes. So you can be in a pitch black hallway with like glowing eye imps kind of stalking after you, and then you're like firing a machine gun at them and there's like it's like strobing the hallway. It's a super cool moment, but it can only happen if you don't have a flashlight on all the time. And uh and, and actually, like, let players pe be in pitch black. Uh, but most players didn't like that. They were going for a different kind of uh, experience, a different kind of uh, shooter intensity. This game had resource management. It would have been an amazing survival horror game. So I'm playing on Veteran. You can play on Nightmare, but it actually ticks your health down uh, to 25, unless you're constantly picking up health. Which is okay, but it makes a sound, too. There's probably a mod to turn that off. Ah, someone new. It's always nice seeing new faces around here. Hope you enjoy your stay. On Mars. A I've been here four years. My advice is to work hard and stay out of trouble. I'm here fucking sucks. So many things kill you in one hit you have to save scum through the entire game. Yeah, that was an impression that I got, so I didn't... Oh, the animation played. Weird. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to... I. It didn't seem fun to me to just have to, like, hammer quick save all the time. Um, this... Hopefully veteran will, like... There... I, oh, uh, that's the other thing I got distracted on. Um, there is actually a mod that changes the ammo balance in the game and makes it a lot tighter. So you have to be much more efficient with the ammo you use and on what land your shots and that kind of thing which is which is really cool which actually makes it closer to like doom 2 
where there would be maps with so many demons in them that if you weren't killing demons efficiently, or making them kill each other, or using uh, specifically placed explosive barrels to kill multiple demons, like you would run out of ammo. You'd just be screwed. Which was really awesome. I, was, I really liked that. Welcome to Mars, Marine. This briefing is designed to acquaint you with a few of the standard operating procedures here on the Mars post. First and foremost... Hold on, I'm gonna get away, let me get away from this radio before I start listening to videos. It's a little distracting. Miller, you hear about Corporal Allen? Yeah, they said he just lost it. Shipped home this week. We lose one, gain another. No shit. I wonder who they're gonna move to Bravo Team now. Who knows? I just hope they don't take anyone from my squad. I hate pulling double shifts. I hear ya. Yeah, the BFG edition makes the whole game so much brighter. Welcome to the worst assignment you'll ever have. Another replacement, huh? Listen up, newbie. I'll give you some advice. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. Yeah, I see people come and go around here all the time. I wonder how long you'll last. Listen up, newbie. I'll give you some advice. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. Oh, look at that dynamics! The dynamic lighting! The dynamic light! Oh, super tur turbo punch. I gotta punch this turkey. Super turbo turkey puncher. Three. I think this is where this started. I was really glad that they inserted this into 2016 and Eternal. It's so dumb. Good combo. One step closer to heaven. Max pain shit. But Doom 3 VR. Actually, yeah. I, I dicked around with it a little bit, but I was getting these weird, like, texture flickering issues. For IPN there would be there would be surfaces and textures that would only flicker in one eye. Which drove me insane. I couldn't hang with it. But yeah, there was some I, there was some cool stuff. I eventually got it working. Which it was fun to mess around with. <laughs> Accidents? That's good. Is that what they're calling him now? So tell me. Just what the hell is happening over there? Beats me, man. Look, all I do is repair the converters when they blow, okay? That's it. Fine. But what's overloading them so much? I mean, how much damn power do they need? I wouldn't ask him if I was you, man. I heard Travis started poking around and he got transferred fast. Didn't even see him leave. Hell, no one saw him go. Was it one minute? On the next? Lucky bastard. I didn't check out the burger enough? No worries. This game have V-Sync? Why, does it look like it's tearing? I don't see any- I don't see any frame tears, but... Dynamically shadowed Borg gear? Borg gear. Uh. <laughs> Holy shit! Holy cow! Uh. This is what happens when Doom Guy doesn't have any demons to punch. Oh! This is why games have physics. This is the reason. Am I supposed to go this way? Oh, it didn't play the enemy? Weird. Okay, whatever. Who cares? Delta Labs is looking for individuals to fill critical positions. You can help with our exciting breakthrough work and earn credits at the same time. Volunteers are needed in the following areas. Teleportation. We're looking for some test subjects to stress test the new teleporters. Experience tomorrow's travel technology today. Medical research. Our advanced pharmaceutical team needs volunteers to participate in exciting medical studies. Help us find cures to everything from the common cold to Ebola 7. Specimen handling. We need volunteers to help handle and track the specimens gathered through Delta Labs experiments. Health test and liability waiver will be required. For more information about any of these opportunities, or to post openings in your department, please see an HR coordinator. Well, there it was. What the heck? Oh, maybe it's when my fists are out, is when it plays the animation. That does seem to be the case. Interesting. Gotta have those hands up already. I'm really trying to get this fixed quickly, so uh, Green command is right, right around the corner. Why don't you go you can fix this, there. you can stay and help. Yes. But otherwise, I'd love to talk, but I'm really Why busy. Why are you bothering me? Can't what? you see that I'm working? Do I look like a tour director, leatherneck? Wasn't Prey? Prey was on id Tech, wasn't it? One of the few games on the Doom 3 engine? Yeah. Pretty sure Ed Prey was on this engine. Which might be why you're thinking about it. It might be why I'm thinking about Quake 4. Ugh! Let's 
This game uh, had co-op if you linked consoles? Really? But never online co-op, not even in BFG editions. I guess not. I don't know, I never never played co-op. I didn't know it supported cross-console co-op. That's pretty cool. I remember being a little bitter that it seemed like it was more popular for Xbox than for PC. Because I worked at GameStop when this game came out. Before it sounds terrible, I never rolled my eyes or scoffed at any Xbox customers. I was just glad anybody was buying Doom. You need to report to Sergeant Kelly ASAP. He's in command HQ. But that was the first indication I think that was like, I was like, oh, PC is not a popular platform. Go see the Sarge. Yeah, yeah. Sarge is gonna have your ass if you don't get the command HQ pronto. This is Delta Science Management. We would like to request another security team here in Delta. Yes, sir. Thank you. Don't you have some orders you need to be following? I'm too busy to talk now. I'm trying to reconfigure this little guy. I can't talk now. Hey, man. They put in so much effort to creating this initial area you can walk around in and talk to people with. Maybe... Kind of like now, when you start a game, you kind of expect this big... Like... This expensive partially scripted sequence that tutorializes you, introduces you to the game and all that stuff. Maybe that was, this was their attempt at that, that sort of thing. Uh, let me. This is the audio log of maintenance technician Adam Bernache, dated November 10th, 2145. I fixed the couplings on the heat shields this morning with no problems. I did, however, have another odd experience while I was down there. Shortly after finishing the first coupling adjustment, I distinctly heard whispering. When I went to investigate the sounds, I found nothing. Checked the work logs, and I was the only person scheduled to be in that area today. That experience, coupled with the stories I've heard from some guys over in the Delta Labs, has me pretty freaked out. I'm really beginning to hate going down to the underground maintenance area. The people down there are a bit off. The mumbling, the weird looks. The whole place is just plain creepy. I'm always expecting someone to jump out at me. I've secured my tools and the busted modulator in the storage cabinet next to the I main I can't be elevator. interrupted now. I've Technicians got work to should use cabinet code 396 to access them. Huh? End of log. 396. If you're late reporting in, Sarge will have you patrolling outside for a week. I'll have to remember that. I think there was a... Yeah, here we go. Welcome to Mars, Marine. This briefing is designed to acquaint you with a few of the standard operating procedures here on the Mars Post. First and foremost, chain of command. All enlisted personnel are under the command of Master Sergeant Thomas Kelly. Sergeant Kelly will assign you to a security detail headed by a security chief. Please report to your security chief for all duty-related concerns. While on duty, please stay on your assigned patrol coverage area. All PCAs have been pre-designated to provide overlapping security and maximize efficiency. All personnel must have Ow. proper authorization <laughs> and assigned the way he says that. Be sure to annotate any discrepancies on your security inspection report. Safety is integral to all operations Ow. here on Mars. Handle firearms with extreme caution. Never discharge weapons in an area that may compromise the installation's structural integrity. Remembering these procedures is paramount to your success here on Mars. Keep in mind that you represent the greatest fighting force in the galaxy, and your actions are a reflection on the core. Take good care, and good luck on your new assignment. Punched my microphone. I don't remember there being this much lore in this game. I think it's lore heavy at the front. There's a lot of emails and PDAs to pick up. Representing yet another great accomplishment of the UAC. I love the this, this three narrator. The Series gun is an extremely versatile, medium-range combat weapon. Harnessing the exhaustive resources of synthetic plasma, the plasma gun meets the critical requirement of low-cost, abundant ammunition for today's highly mobile military. Capable of sustained firepower due to the latest advancements in plasma injector technology, this weapon's lightweight and high yield make it desirable for most combat scenarios. Always on the forefront of technology, the UAC is making safer worlds through superior firepower. Thanks, UAC. Narrator's giving heavy Starship Troopers vibes. There's a lot of 
there's a lot of uh there's some humor baked into the the narrator or the choice of narrator which i never really thought about all right this is the uh an email sent to adam bernache adam please take more caution in securing your personal data assistant turned up in lost and found three times this month and as you know your base security clearances are stored on that and it becomes a serious security issue anytime a pda is lost Failure to secure your PDA could eventually result in your termination. This is Mr. Peterson. Adam, your report is long overdue. Record an audio log for what you've done today and on your maintenance shift and send it to me immediately. Like, they're trying to tutorialize you on some parts of the game that, like, uh, you should listen to the audio logs and also that PDAs unlock doors. Like, that's interesting that they're, that's, this is how they're kind of slipping the rule, world rules to you. Uh, I know you recorded it. Uh, reco uh, I know you recoded the cabinet today. It's imperative that I update my master list with a new code. I did not want to tell you again how important it is to record those codes. Write them on a post-it note like everyone else. Mr. Benesh, I have some great news for you. Your name just came up in our last management meeting as a possible candidate for our Delta Labs outreach program. You've probably heard, as you've probably heard, we are conducting some very exciting and important experiments here in Delta. Your supervisor recommended you as a good candidate, and in fact, he insisted you would be perfect for the job. I've reviewed your file, and I agree with his assessment. You will make a perfect test subject. Our work here is very important to the UAC, and should you feel privileged, or you should feel privileged that you have a chance to become a part of it. Writes Mr. K. Clear Sky from Delta Future Systems. P.S. Here we go. Remember, volunteering is the best choice. A to invoke clause 12.a of section 543 of your employment contract, which, if you are not familiar with, allows us to appoint volunteers. <laughs> FYI. It's better if you volunteer, because we can volunteer you. There's more there's more goofs in the in the like subtext of Doom 3 than I remember there being. I don't remember this game having a lot of fun with the uh Hmm, that's weird, the texture disappears. Oh, uh, hopefully that's not a problem. How am I missing it? This? No. This? No. Alright, hold on. I'm gonna get it this time. I think it's this. Just keep not going in here. Yeah, there we go. Took your sweet time, Marine. Hey, Remcha. Now, here's the situation. <laughs> chosen or been chosen? Missing. Since you're the Such a good line. Such a good read. Get to find him. Welcome to, to check out City the City 17. Com facility. We heard he might be heading that way. The only way there is through the service passage under Mars City. I've programmed this sentry to guide you to the maintenance elevator. I hope you follow the sentry better than you've followed orders so far. You pick up some gear at the security checkpoint at the bottom of the elevator. Oh, and when you find him, just bring him back. Do not hurt him. Now move out. All right, little buddy. It's the road. I wonder, like, they must have playtested this, and people, like, I, I did two loops before I actually saw this, this door. People must have gotten so lost when they told them to go back. UAC they had to put in a little robot, and they're like, "Follow the robot. <laughs> Just follow the little guy. He'll take you where you need to go." <laughs> Although that's a good solution, right? I guess nowadays you just have like you would have Doom Guy Vision just draws a line on the ground for you to follow. The UAC cares about the quality. I don't remember if games had glowing, employees. glowing go this way trails yet. When Doom services. Three came out. Sometimes there were giant arrows pointing where to go. Like in-game GPS stuff. Okay. All right. I don't know. I don't think this is the closet. 396, right? Oh, okay, yeah, they're telling it. <laughs> Feels good. Dark, that is. That's so dark. So doom. Fable had a glowing trail? Alright. Has anyone played Fable recently? How? Is, what is Fable like these days? Nowadays? I remember Fable fondly, but I didn't, I wasn't as hyped up on it as most people were. Fable 1 doesn't hold up 2 was pretty fun. I remember I remember thinking the twist uh, like the the 
hoo 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 uh, jokerized gotcha in 3 was pretty fun. The, like, the interaction between money and, like, at, like trying to put you in a spot of making hard choices. Most unexciting place on Mars. Tried. I'm gonna need you Side to switch. Thanks for the reset. Secure your pistol before I can pass you through security. JJ one. Okay, thank gear. you. Yeah. Now you're ready for combat. Let me do a radio test. Such a clickety clack. Don't fire that thing in here. You're gonna kill someone. Sorry, Steve. Mars sec radio check. Excellent. Good signal. Uh, NB. Thank you very much for the resub. Looks like you've been assigned the decommissioned comm facility. Just follow the main passage through the underground junction. Getting alien vibes? Joe, it's funny you say that. And what better way to see the Martian surface than to run Because I always... Okay, you're all set. I always thought... Oh, yeah. Uh... My so still civilians talking. are working down here. Don't get excited and shoot any. I guess with... I guess there's alien isolation nowadays, but I always thought Quake 4 was the, like, the James Cameron's Aliens game. Like, the, it has a ton of strobing of lights. It has the lights behind fans and fog. You're with, like, a marine group that walk, like, it has AI where companions walk with you and shout out a bunch of contextual lines. Like, they're coming from the walls, look up! Like, it had the chatter, it had the action, it had the, like, fighting aliens. It had the, uh, it was, like, fast and dumb. And yeah, I guess this game is, like, Especially with this color grading and this moodiness, is really like grimy Ridley Scott space. Though it is a bit more alien. At least the timing of it, uh, so far, is very alien. Oh, haven't seen anyone new down this building. Way dread, kind of thing. Welcome to the dungeon, brother. Enjoy your stay. Hey, don't touch that. Alien 3 look. Hmm. Yeah, the high contrast. Alien 3 is not... Well, Alien 3 looks really cool. Oh, no, wait. I'm thinking of... No, no, wait. Resurrection actually looks pretty cool, too. It's hey, a dumb movie. Yeah. You're looking for the scientist, right? Oh, why does he look like I'm that? I'm not sure you want to find him. You see... Uh, uh, never... I'm not sure... I'm not sure what that lighting is all about. What the heck? That looks cool, but I don't think it's... I don't think that's what it's supposed to... Oh, well, whatever. Who cares? Don't listen to me. Never mind what I said. <laughs> I'll just roll with it. I'm I'm kind of terrified that at some point it's going to crash or my computer's just going to shut off. So I'm... Gonna, oh, it must have been like... Okay. It was like reflected lighting from this that, that was a little too... Okay. A little too strong, but that's fine. I think it gives... I remember this room blowing my mind. Like the shadows of stuff, like moving across the wall. It's like... Blah, 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 blah. Games have done it. It still looks really good. And it's the same rendering tech. It's the same, like... Same lighting. They just... They fuzzed out some of the shadows. It makes it look even better. Damn. Listen, Scott. I've done this a million times. It's not that hard. Why don't you crawl your fat ass down here and do it yourself? Because I'm getting paid to make sure you do it. Just finish the coupling so we can continue. Buddy, don't know if I can really help you with anything. It's kind of busy here. <laughs> so bright. Does anyone play Chernobylite? I'm actually going to play that pretty soon. Uh secured a small sponsorship and it's another one of those games where i was like i have always really wanted to play this so great yeah sure let's go i'm excited for that one uh it, it seemed to have a really cool energy really cool grant baston your environmental Style. services supervisor the date is october 19th i've been hearing an alarming number of reports on some uh unexplainable things being on another planet and working underground has always been a little spooky so we always have the occasional report of strange things. But what is worrying me is the fact that the number of these reports are up by a lot. People are truly frightened. The rumors we're hearing about experiments from the Delta Complex are not helping. The power fluctuations aren't helping at all either. Having the lights flicker constantly and losing power for several minutes at a time is scaring everyone down here. I'm doing my best to keep people in track, but we're continually shorthanded. 
Someone's reporting in sick almost every day. I'll keep my director apprised of the situation, and will continue to log reports as I get them. It can do colored lighting. Flexing the lighting so hard, yeah. There's just a series of like tech demo rooms. Which like no one I wonder how many people even paid attention, you know? I guess it's just part of the environment. Seeing like lights twirl around is cool. Yeah, shadows on each other. The Baja Blast mixing room. <laughs> Scientists studying Bahology. Pushing the limits of theoretical Baja. Running? Yes, sir. It's just that the science team demands a lot out of these things. Enough excuses. Just do your job and get the science team what they need. Well, I'm doing everything, but I just can't explain some of the things that have been happening to the systems. It's weird. Just get it done. This must spin the Baja. Unlock the blast. Or some emails. Emails from Grant Baston that I did not read. Grant Bastin. That's just a new code, yeah. I like how they the subject matters make them pretty... After a while, the subject lines are pretty good at telling you this one is the one that has the code in it, in case you don't want to read them all. But I do, because we are lawyer respecters. You're not going to believe this, smiley face. You will not believe this. Actually, you probably will. The late night security detail couldn't figure out how to open the security cabinets from the security office. I spent the next morning walking them through the steps in the security panels. They didn't realize you could open both cabinets from one security panel. Where do they find these people? Oh, Brooks, we've all been there. That's crazy, man. That's, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, the cool folding Jeez. bridge. Ooh. Do you make a habit of sneaking up on people? Whatever, bro. Everyone's already on edge down here with all the strange things that have been going you on. You see the bridge you're standing next to? This actually is really nice depth of field, too. That's another part of the, the mod. The area is right through that door. Now stop bothering me. Some weird texture flickering. I don't I wonder what would be causing that. Looks like the does the site have a serial number that's scratched off on this pistol? Oh. See, this is cool. This is awesome. Like something that is actually pitch black. But maybe like that, that amount of light, having to like, like fight based on the light from the gun is pretty terrifying and awesome. It's a bit easier when it's the, uh, when it's the machine gun, it's more constant light, but man, make you walk through that one room. Hey, you're that new guy headed for the old comm center, right? Get better hustle up, pal. This passage doesn't go all the way there. You'll have a quick walk outside to the center's airlock. Eh, hey, don't sweat it. Your suit's got plenty of oxygen. Oh yeah, that's true, Moezy. I probably don't want to blow that ammo. I'm on, uh, I'm on Veteran. Which is, you know... It's weird, they didn't use the... Oh, you can turn the flashlight off? I didn't know that. Weird. It's the, it's the difficulty under Nightmare. So yeah, I'm probably gonna need that ammo. Just pistol, right? Pretty sure to go off the path. There's like goodies around here somewhere. Yeah. I always thought it was odd that like outside Mars surface sequences are a little odd. Maybe it's just one of those things that's trying to like stress you out a little bit. Alright, I might actually die. Right around too much. Oh my god, let me in! <sighs> Dionysus, thank you for the sub. Yeah, that's all That's all I can figure is like, they're just trying to stress you out, which is why the breathing is so, so loud. They, they're just trying to I'm just trying to get you a little, a little rumpled. Any special occasion for Doom Three? Not really. I'm just kind of feeling. It. Marine, this is Sergeant Kelly. You need to double time it down there. Search your assigned area and haul your ass back to Mars City. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it's 
the the flickering lights is such a uh, such an alien thing. Dionysus plays. Thanks for gifting five subs. Thank you very very much. Is there no ultra nightmare in this doom? No, that's that was the thing that started with 2016, as far as I know. Huh? Uh, no. No. I don't think there was ever a mode that let me get this forced out. a deathless run in a previous doom. Time. I can't let. I, <laughs> You don't know what I've seen. It's a weird box you around his gun. possibly understand or comprehend. The devil is real. I know. Are you streaming this on a microwave since your computer exploded? I unexploded my computer. Actually, I unexploded it, and then it exploded again. But then I unexploded it for good. got a little ghost body. Huh. Ow! Oh, shit! Oh, fuck! Huh. All units, this is Sergeant Kelly. We're under attack by an unknown enemy force. Fall back to Marine HQ to regroup. Yeah, the radio starts lighting up. I say again, fall back to Marine HQ and await further orders. Imagine like a skeleton guy picking up somebody's transceiver and be like, nee. <laughs> like they know what radios are already. <laughs> oh. Just a little trolling. A little good natured trolling. Over. Command HQ, this is Bravo D. We can one Marine down, two wounded. Command HQ, this is Fire Team 4. We are pinned down in Alpha Land. Command HQ, this is Fire Team 2. Main power down at sub level. Back up and life support systems only. We've got lots of civilian casualties! It's a mess! Man HQ attempting to secure the area! Uh. I'll have to figure my aim out. Okay, buddy? Buddy? Oh! I thought their bodies just kind of like... Just kind of disintegrate. Squelch? It's a good squelch. Top tier, it's a top tier body squelch, I think. I feel like after playing 2016 Doom, I'm going to be quite a bit more critical of this version. That's fair, I think. The lore of this game isn't nearly as, uh, as awesome as 2016's. Definitely a different flavor, too. Just the alarm, the, like, the pulsing red light, the, like, pipes and grates, the screaming on the radio. Uh, it hits so many of the marks, uh, at least in this kind of more intro cinematic s sequence. The game gets quiet, and then you just fight demons in hallways, which is still rad. Uh... There's a little less uh, effort to make it cinematic, though. I get to see this cool bridge. No! 
Oh yeah, this is Command HQ. Report directly to Marine Headquarters and await further orders. I thought a, I thought a little zombie guy was, would chase him. Does this Doom Marine have a name? I don't think so. I don't think so. Ow. I think he is just, he is specifically Doom Marine in this one. Oh yeah. It was it was giving me the jukes. Just, hoo, ha. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out this aiming. I'm I'm pretty garbage aim so far. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't become an issue. They actually lurch around a fair amount. Makes getting headshots interestingly difficult. It was wave dashing. Yeah, it was working too for him. Delhi. Yo, Frank, don't forget, we're starting a party early, the, or starting the party early this time, 8.15. Right. UAC employee, we have received your complaint and will consider your request. Safety is important to us and we will do everything to ensure security throughout the UAC. Original message, I'm becoming increasingly concerned for the safety of myself and my coworkers down here in Underground. We've had guys getting stuck outside the airlock that leads to the old comm building and there seems to be a buildup of tension over the past few weeks. I've seen friendly coworkers change. I formally request additional security as well as an investigation as to what's causing all the angst. Good job, Frank Delahue. Oh, we got two. This is the audio log of Frank Delahue, engineering manager assigned to power production dated October 18, 2145. The current operational status of the grid is 23% over nominal capacity. I've increased work shifts to 12 hours a day for all personnel to keep up with demand. The constant and increasing load from the Delta complex is causing havoc. We are going to start losing critical systems if we have to sustain these levels much longer. I request clearance to requisition parts from other departments in order to maintain our equipment. Okay, I don't know what is going on over in Delta, but I'm doing all I can down here. The constant demands are bad enough, but the rumors gone around are making things a whole lot worse. And I gotta tell you, things don't get better oh, soon. Thank you. All hell I'm getting out of here. Loose. He said it. <laughs> haven't haven't run into Arlene yet. The the very first woman. There hasn't been a single female in the game yet. I'm starting to wonder if there ever is. But the first one I will completely imprint onto. Frank engineering manager assigned. She will be my girlfriend, but not, and I'm cool with that. Who? Reclamation problems continue to plague the main process. Two more valve just these overloads can destroy the valves, causing very dangerous fire, jetting with enough heat to incinerate sensitive equipment nearby. Today, we've had only one reported injury as a result of these valve failures. And this is due in large part to the quick response of the engineering team. Our procedure of entering the failure code 842, oh. the operation terminal is Ah, uh, tricks. No changes in that procedure. All right, 842. In fact, that goes to something. I don't know what. The shotgun is a little weak sounding in this game. For how, uh... How much you need to use it. The demons tried to trick you. <laughs> yeah. They knew I'd want that shotgun. They knew it. Ah. That was armor. Oh, I'm... Alright. to trick me. I'm blowing myself up. Huh. See, they give you enough light. They give you just enough to actually see your targets, but people don't like... I mean, pretty justifiably. I think get panicked when they have to fight in the dark. Guess what? Life is dark and gritty. Power up 
comes down here. Oh yeah. Can't see shit. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if like maybe maybe my display is uh is brighter. Because I can see just enough. I can see just enough to play. You can kinda see that there's a hallway there. Kinda. Look at me taking my sweet time. Huh. Oh yeah, the, the monster hallways. Or the monster closets. My man was just chilling in here. Just hanging out. Doo -doo -doo. Can't wait for somebody to walk by and this panel to pop open. Doom 3 rules. I think that's the other that's the weird thing, is like it kinda tried to be really cinematic at the beginning. But then it's also super video gamey. You know? There's monster closets. There's no like fancy attempt to try to wave that away. I think I can run through it. I did it. Graphics don't look that bad. That's ow! Ooh, ow! Damn, that actually took all my armor. I got stuck in it though. Yeah, there's a there's a combo pack of mod. God, that does look good. Eat my ass. Eat my ass, demon. Oh, where's that coming from? I'm like, look at how how bright the fireball or the imp fireballs are. If there's an imp throwing fireballs at you, you can see. It's just. Light being cast by uh, a giant glowing fireball. Man, the ambient sound of these like just mach random machines. Hey, look at that. Doom 3 canon to Doom 2016. It's actually the one Doom that's not uh, so far. Doom 3 is its own thing. It worked in Doom 64, but not Doom 3. Oh yeah, you can listen for the footsteps and stuff. Oh hey Pop-Tart, it's good to see you. Happy Easter, if, if you observe. I observed by uh, eating a piece of banana bread. Talk to All right, I sent, I sent some texts to my mom. I should call her. What Japanese high school do I go to? Ooh, it's the one where I'm the only dude. Uh, crazy mishap. I went to a private school for like daughters of Zaibatsu uh, owners and stuff. And I'm the only guy. Crazy. I know, it's crazy. They all have problems that I help them out with and stuff. They have a variety of personalities that are pretty definable and one-dimensional. You know? Normal high school stuff. Now, look at that red light. Uh, uh. I'm playing Doom for Easter because of the pet rabbit lore. You know what? Sure. Yeah, sure. Why did Jesus come back from the grave if not to kill demons, huh? Also, yeah, his bunny. Although I don't know if his bunny is represented in this game at all. Excuse me. Jesus would love this game. Oh, shit. Ow. Okay, I got tricked. I got tricked. They got me. Oh. Thought that was a new. Jesus Christ, no! Didn't work out for him. 
him. I like the more satanic vibes of this game. Yeah, it it goes way harder. Or it's not as like tongue in cheek, and I think because of that, it ends up going harder. Negative ID on the assailant. And uh, Resurrection of Evil, the expansion, I thought was real good. It's like it built back to being classic Doom, but it took it took an expansion to get there. I saw a post the other day and it started that if you think about it, Jesus was a zombie. Uh, or was not a zombie. In fact, if anything, he was a lich. Because he was an immortal king whose body just rots. Was he rotting? I mean, he had his wound. But yeah, that stands up. One of the more powerful, I'd assume. Oh! looks so confused between being a survivalish horror game and a doom game not like in a bad way just so different from the rest of the franchise it's different i think if like it depends on it depends on what your experience with doom was um some people played the like really fast arcadey stupid big fun game that was doom other people played the horror game doom uh there were a lot of people who had strong reactions uh to playing Doom, and, like being scared. So, if if like if there's a modern game, well, this isn't modern anymore. But for a game to channel and, and harness that aspect of it and make a game about that is what this game is. Command HQ, this is Fire Team Two. Monorail track is destroyed. Unable to secure safe transportation back to base. Over. That Fire Team Two, fall back to the nearest station and get up a CP there. Out. It took me a while to understand that, that that was the aspect of Doom they were they were targeting or wanted to enhance. Uh. Ow, you! Holy cow, where did you come from? Damn, man. It worked. It just jingled keys. Demons got me. Never been a huge fan of Doom games, yeah? Ooh. Oh! Goodness. I'm getting all units. I'm getting the jump on me quite a bit. Fall back to Marine HQ and await further orders. I wonder if there's got to be a way to open this locker from inside there. I wish there was an email about it. Is this something? Hmm. Oh, on the PC, some menu down. That was something else. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Sweet. Oops. How do you like how do you Oh, there we go. Okay, alright. I don't think I've ever done that before. Don't play the BFG edition? Yeah, that'd be my advice as well. I mean, it's not bad. If you just want to, like, check it out, get a feel for it. I think it's on Game Pass, which makes it really easy. Man, with the... Ah! <laughs> with this, this reload animation with the depth of field... It really does look like the reloads in the Doom movie sometimes. It's like... <laughs>
Reload animations done in real life are the best. Like all those clips of somebody reloading their toilet paper holder. That must be, I wonder if that's a satisfying job. Modeling reload animations. Feels like it would be. Like the modern day equivalent of uh, sculpting pottery. All remaining marine units. The tactical Sorry reload, yeah. I'm unable to reach Mars City from my current position. Move to Marine. Damn, I am burning through machine gun ammo. You open this. I think that explodes. Shoot it. Doom guy talks in this game? I don't think so. I don't think he ever says anything. That was um that wasn't me talking. The only one still alive. I can't believe I found you. Something happened. I don't know what. It, it, it was like a shockwave. It, it passed through the entire base. People started changing. It was crazy. I, I was working up here on the vent shafts. I don't know how I survived. Go for help. Please. No way. I'm staying up here. It's the only safe place. You can't get me down. I'm staying here. Ooh. Ooh. It's so triangly. Cool. Be careful. I don't know what's in there. Nothing I can't handle. Man, all these sizzling vents, just steam everywhere. More industrial that way. Wait a minute, I turned around. Yeah, here we go. Everything's so dark. Hell yeah, it is. The real Doom 3 experience. Oh, baby. New emails. This is Mark Stanton, Manifest Controller currently stationed at Mars City. I'm not sure who to send this to, so I decided to send it to quite a few people. If you're on the recipient list, please take a moment to review this report. It is quite important. I'm very concerned over the shipping procedures out here. I am the Manifest Controller. As such, I need to be informed of everything coming in and out of Mars City. Someone here is subverting my position and preventing me from getting data on things being shipped. This is unacceptable. Not only could this reflect poorly on my upcoming review, but this is my job and I'm tired of being out of the loop. I have no idea who keeps telling the shipping crews to allow things in and out without allowing me to produce or procure the manifest. But who cares, bro? It must stop. One of the dock workers actually told me to piss off when I tried to stop one of the last containers from going straight to Delta. I immediately filed a report and will follow up with the transit manager next time I see him. End of log. What a nerd. Oh. Uh, Jack, thank you for continuing your gift sub. Cargo is my responsibility. Would you believe chainsaws? Marcus, those morons at Mixum have done it again. I requested a crate of jackhammers. Well, what we got were several crates of chainsaws and no jackhammers at all. What the hell were they thinking? Chainsaws serve no purpose on Mars. <laughs> I'm sending these back as soon as I get the time. Meanwhile, I would appreciate it if you could lodge another complaint with Mixum and expedite my jackhammers when they arrive. All right. Crazy. Oh, that's the one you were thinking of? That's pretty fun. Farewell for now. If you've received this email, you are someone I worked with while here on Mars and have made an impression on my life. I want to let you know that I'm leaving Mars and UAC to pursue other opportunities after one last assignment tomorrow in Delta Labs. I will miss you terribly and will think of you often. I'm sure the friendships I've made here will last the rest of my life. And I will be sure to keep in touch. 
As soon as I have a new address, I will forward it along. I hope you will join me in the Mars City Kitchen for a drink tomorrow evening. My shuttle leaves first thing on 11.16, and I'd hate to miss my last chance to see you. Until next time, says Ray. <sighs> Good old Ray. Oh. oh boy, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should. Hmm. Well, maybe it's fine. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that that is really good. Oh, awesome! It came back. Whew. That is really good, but it might be a little too lewd for uh for normal wear. <laughs> we're fine. We're fine. That is an awesome shirt, though. I'm trying to think of where. Looks like I could just wear it at home. I don't know. I don't, I don't think the opportunity would come up, unfortunately. Ah, good looking out, though. God damn, that's sweet. That's a little too much. Ugh. Ah, holy cow. All right, got some coffee to celebrate my... Oh, that's way too much. Holy shit. Got some coffee to celebrate my uh, PC working again. Ugh. Ooh. What's up, Thrill How? Oh yeah, give me a minute. Jojo Power Ranger, thank you for the prime. So the NSA Gaming VOD on games as service. Really happy you explained why Destiny 2 failed even though it's not bad. Still play to this day, thanks. Yeah, I figured I needed to make some disclosure there. Uh, um, yeah, that, like I said, it, it gets tricky in the episode. One thing that, that bugs me, I think, is is when people associate like financial success with quality or value uh, they're not the same it, it's not seen as that way in any other art form really like music movies or whatever i guess some people get a little bit weird about which movies do well and use that as like a scorecard of which which like belief system is more right oh just verified hugo did say doom 3 is canon as there is only one hell i'll stop now oh okay I didn't know that. <sighs> oh, so that must that must have been on like a stream or something. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Any idea who this guy is? And the farewell, f a forward from the farewell for now email. Just read. Uh, I think he may be the funny looking dweeb from Alpha Labs, but I always thought his name was Alan. You gonna go have a drink with him? I wouldn't normally, but if he's buying, other people will be there. It might be fun. This dweeb Ray. Suspicious. Lord Sorg, thank you for the prime. Love Doom 3 not as a sequel to the originals, but as its own thing. It's almost more of a spin-off to me. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the best way to think about it. But they did put a big old three on the end, so. Oh. Managed you. This is Specialist Wilson. My team is gone. They're all dead. I'm running blind here. What are my orders? Over! Specialist Wilson, this is Sergeant Kelly. Very sharp, son. Look to your last known RT and fortify your position. We'll find you. Damn. I guess you can interrupt reload. Nice. Good job, little robot. Like, this is a really cool- Ah! Jesus. Sometimes pitch black can be fun. I just don't know what to do. What are these things? I don't know. Stay where you are. Don't let anyone in the <laughs> Yeah, that dynamic lighting. Yeah, that's the whole point of the game. That's the that's the hot tech. 
Damn it. Oh, tricked. <laughs> oh, those wily demons. There's got to be a power up in here. No, nothing, nothing. All right. It's your favorite Doom? Yeah, Mom? I think it's quite good. I think it's weird. I think every... Rage is kind of forgettable, you know, but every good software game has been really good. But people like to get really up their own ass whenever whenever there's a new like game like that. I don't know what it is. People really people were really teed up to hate Doom 2016 too. I remember people talking about how shit it was when it was just the multiplayer beta. I was like, "What game are you playing? This is pretty good." I don't know. It's dumb. It's dumb. The gamers, man. They don't deserve video games. Leaving. Oh, Sarah. There we go. We finally found our uh, Arlene. I heard you tried to download a Doom 3 mod. Accidentally downloaded a Doom PC BIOS mod. Yeah, apparently. Doom guy shot a rocket launcher into my BIOS or something. <sighs> my stuff died and it died hard. But I swapped everything into a new motherboard. And now we're up and running. And actually really well. Everything's really snappy and responsive. My previous PC, I could kind of feel it in my bones. I was due for a meltdown. I could feel it. I think I even expressed that on a stream or something else. I think I was saying I need a fresh install of Windows. I think it's okay, though. What was the problem with the PC? I don't know, honestly. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the, uh, what the root cause was. Uh, I have theories, but nothing that I 100% proved by, like, swapping around parts or anything. Uh, but yeah, I think my old motherboard is just toast. I think it always was. I, I think it always was kind of busted, but whatever. All right. Email time. Time for lore. <laughs> Mark, I hear you're leaving Mars. I'm happy that you'll be able to spend some more time with your family, but I'm very worried about the deteriorating situation here. We're short-staffed already. Your departure will be a big loss. Speaking of which, I've noticed that Zack in operations has been behaving more and more erratically. Since talking with you, I'm not sure if I'm being overly sensitive or if he caught the bug going around. I swear he tried to bite me today. In your absence, is there anything I should do? Mm. Mm. Got a reply here. Mark, thank you for sending me the audio report. I wish the news were better. I will coordinate with our colleagues here on Earth to find additional staff and resources to assist. Given the situation there, it isn't going to be easy. You may be on your own for a while. My advice to you, continue to document everything you can. Attempt to find the root of the problem, and for goodness sakes, stash weapons and medical supplies for yourself in case things get worse. Glad to hear you've already taken some precautions by locking some supplies in that cabinet. I hope it's enough. I appreciate you including the code in your report. We'll keep it secure. Oh. Audio log for Dr. Casey, currently stationed at Mars City. I have just left the weekly status meeting here in medical. The most prominent topic was the vast number of psychological issues. He plans for a 420 stream. Yes. The number of reports I'm, I'm just going to stream weed games all day long, basically. Base personnel yeah, get really high. Symptoms. It's kind of it. As many people will not come in for this type of thing. 420 extravaganza. Affected personnel could truly be in the 30. Steph agreed to play Call of Duty, so the COD cam will return. It manifested itself here in kind of medical. It. We uh, have several nurses and a couple of good doctors out for related reasons. I'm going to formally request two additional psychiatrists on the next shuttle from Earth. The two we have are being overworked, and the content of their sessions with patients is starting to affect them as well. Dr. Casey and out. Will Bert make a return? I can try. There was one that I have that does Bert. It's just a little... it's a little loud. But I guess that's the point. I also think I've changed my stream setup. Like, there was a, an exact combination of settings that loaded my CPU down enough to make it Bert. Dr. Mark Casian, 
1547, patient Jonathan Wills was admitted after... But yeah, one of them still birds, I think. ...nausea. According to the nurse, Mr. Wills was calm and exhibited no signs of disorder. Yeah, I have a list, uh, a list of weed games However, to play. However, by the time I reached him That's at 10 after 4, cold. his personality had things changed simply. dramatically. When I entered the room, Mr. Wills lunged at me with a scalpel he apparently stole from a supply drawer. With the assistance of an orderly, we managed to subdue and sedate him without injury. Mr. Wills was heavily medicated and could not be diagnosed, but in the 20 minutes he was left unattended, he managed to carve three symbols in his arm and cut his own tongue into two halves. I, I can only guess at the cause of his problems. I hope that additional psychiatrists arrive soon. In the meantime, in response to this assault, all medical supplies and armaments will be locked in a secure hospital cabinet with the code 347. Dr. Casey and out. Cool. Lore pays the bills, everyone. how this game balances horror and action yeah i think it does a really good job i think it's it is a an example of a game that like incorporates a technology and then they use it in the game design and then also that then ricochets up into the, the mood and the atmosphere so the tech is is dynamic lighting and shadow they make a game that is all about like dark corridors which then lends itself to a tone that's maybe a little more intense and horror-based. Oh, did that guy on the table have symbols on his arm? Good question. Find out. Wait, not a guy on a table in here. Or you meant in the next room. I heard a marine though. I hear his feats. I don't know, I don't think a game from 2006 would, or whenever this came out would have details like that. 2005? Something like that. Can't wait to see horror games truly start utilizing ray tracing. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see that too. There's a, well, I mean, I guess Alan Wake 2 is something to be very excited about. That's a, that's a true survival horror game on their engine. So, yeah. oh, it's 2004. Okay, right. a little bit earlier than I thought. Bill Tyson, what you got to say, Bill? Audio report on troop morale. Morale here is beginning to drop. It's nothing to worry about yet, since I keep my Marines sharp and ready to go. But events at the base are wearing on the troops. There have been a lot of things happening here on the base. I believe the UAC experiments being performed here must be the cause. Out here, they could be experimenting on God knows what. There are quite a few people missing. And no Marines, of course. It's the civilian population I'm referring to. Bottom line, whatever it is they have going on here has my men on a razor's edge. At this point, there is no cause for alarm, but I am requesting we rotate squads every 90 days instead of every 180. I will continue to report as the situation develops. It is good we have the new Marines en route. Fresh faces will help. Sergeant Tyson, out. Yeah, there is Alan Wake DLC for control. And it is very, it, it is very specifically about light and shadow. Oh, in a pretty, I would say a pretty direct way, not really like a Audio revolutionary way. Audio deployments for the Mars City Marine Facility. But still, it's nice. requested. The new troops will be arriving within a few days. I've started a series of training exercises focusing on close quarters small weapons combat, as well as instituting mandatory refresher courses on all munitions and weapons in our armory. In response to the large number of security breaches and general feelings of ill will around the base, I've doubled security details, placing two Marines at each checkpoint. This additional presence should help calm things down. I expect that the incoming Marines are not quite as green as the last deployment. They've turned out okay, but some combat experience will go a long way right now. Sergeant Tyson, out. Alright then. 
Ground control boring. Yeah, I I can understand that. I can understand that. It's it's weird. It's kind of weirdly paced, and it requires like it it appeals to people with certain tastes. I think other like if it if it can't hook you with its style and its weirdness, then there's not a whole lot else I think to keep you around. Here we go. This is the good shit. Five eight four. Oh man. That's ammo. Alright, video link up requested. Alright, 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 alright. Marine. I can't believe you're still alive. I'm unable to return to Mars City. All passages out of the Delta complex have been blocked. I'm setting up a command post here. I can monitor status reports of the entire base from Delta Central Authority and communicate with other Marine teams. It's your mission to link up with Bravo team and get that transmission sent. Head toward Alpha Labs. It's the fastest way to find them. I'll update your PDA security clearance from here. Good job. And good luck, Marine. All right. Go through administration. And do. First, got some emails. Some emails backed up. Personal transfer, that's un that's uninteresting. Staff Sergeant Tyson, I have a m I've been a major supporter of putting sent sentry bots on routine patrols. The past they've proven very reliably, that changed today. I witnessed two of our guys doing maintenance on a bot in Mars City. While having it only partially assembled, they activated its sensors to test their repairs. All of a sudden, the sentry locked onto one of the Marines as an enemy and began firing at him. If the ammo had been loaded, that Marine would have been killed. Thankfully, the other Marine was able to immobilize it quickly. The sentry bot is powerful. Maybe too powerful. Why do we need that much firepower in Mars City? Except for the odd report of individuals going a little crazy, we don't have that many problems. Do we really expect the sentry bots to know the difference between someone having a bad day and someone gone mad? I hope you talk or hope you can talk to Sarge about this before something worse happens. I don't remember the the sentry bots actually mattering that much. They're nice to have around because they like can empty rooms for you, but there aren't that many of them. Ow, ow! Holy cow! Oh, I got tricked. These dang demons. I gotta remember to keep looking behind me. <laughs> Reloads are clickety clackety. I got some pretty satisfying clickety clacks. <laughs> What's he doing? Zombie stuff. Here. SMG has a weird reload. Yeah, like the clip slides in through the top. I guess there's some guns like that, but it's still weird. And it's just kind of a clip that goes into an empty, like a flat polygon or something. It shoves in there. God, Super Turkey Puncher is fine. You run across any operational sentry bots, use them. Those guys pack a lot of firepower. You say that? Is there one in here? Oh! Jeez. Is this the remastered version? Sort of. Uh, there is. There was a remastered version called BFG Edition, but. That's not this. This is the original version with a mod pack installed that has, I think, I think it has better models, better textures, uh, and then 
graphical tweaks. Tons and tons of graphical tweaks. Though it's been doctored up quite a bit. But I think it looks cooler than the BFG Edition remake. Which was pretty flat and bright. The UAC is here to help you. Psychological services I'm into things are that are dark. Like that. That was dark as hell. Look at the reflection of the dang mirror. Oh, look at how dank, how dank this bathroom is. Blinking light, so gross looking. This is a pretty top tier dank video game bathroom. One of the best. Aww. I think Doom 3 doesn't get enough credit for the dankness of its bathrooms. Oh, there we go. Uh, well, body's there sometimes. Maybe I'm becoming the demons. Who's there? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I do. Let me just two hands the PDA right to his face. Uh, hold on a second. What do you want me to do? Uh, go through administration for entry into Alpha Labs sector. Okay. Neither of those say Alpha Labs. I'm gonna. I think Marine Command has a has a Sentry bot though. I guess I've already been over here. Exactly that's delicious. I installed mods to ratchet up the dank. And now this is Doom 3 Dank Edition. <sighs> Pretty sure I've been through here. I think I'm backtracking. Yeah, definitely. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think I can move through, though. Uh, maybe I don't want to go this way. Go back. Let's backtrack. Ratchet and dank. Nice. <laughs> nice. Huh. That would be a fun gimmick for the 420 extravaganza. I only play games that I can work weed puns into. I don't know. I think it's better just to... I think it's probably best just to stick with uh, games that are compatible with the weeded state. You know, your Tetris effects, your Child of Edens, Rhythm Heaven, uh, Metal Gear Rising, maybe F-Zero GX? Maybe? I don't know else to play that. Um, i trying to think of what else I had on the list. But yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> I will be a video game sommelier, a video game bud tender. I will. Beat Mania? I was actually thinking more like DJ Hero. Oh, there's there's my guy. Groove Coaster's a, a solid wreck. I'm not super good at Groove Coaster, but I think that there are plenty of songs that are playable. And actually, if I mess it up, the song still plays, so it's not like I have to be good at it. Um, Yeah, Rez? I don't know. I feel like Child of Eden is the more ridiculous Rez. So while I do love Rez, I guess Rez is pretty fast. I can get through, through Rez pretty quickly. Rezo gun? I guess next Machina, in terms of like housemark action games that have sick music. Hmm. Bumper? We gotta get the flowers in place. They need all the firepower they can get. On it. Sending that transmission is critical to our survival. I mean, Sky? Maybe. A little too slow paced, I think. Which I think is, is probably fine normally, but. I want some, uh. I want 
some high powered high powered action. It's an extravaganza after all. Hyperbolica? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> Senran Kagura. Isn't Bon App Bon Appetit is the cooking one? Isn't it just mini games? That's not a bad idea, actually. And none of the games I've listed are horny. Weed and horniness kind of go together, or they can. Kenshi? Oh man, I s so I have yet to play Kenshi. That's an Miku Project Diva. Hmm. Hmm. I think for like rhythm games. I mean, like DJ Hero or uh, Rhythm Heaven or Groove Coaster might be the pick. Does Does Hatsune Miku have the like? I mean, I'm sure it has like a rendered version of Miku dancing around with all of her other Vocaloid band members. But does it have like crazy visuals apart from that? My fiance bought me Kenshi for Valentine's Day and it has taken over my life. Yeah. People say really good things about it. I feel like I would really, really like it. Okay. I think I go to the monorail, and then I go to Alpha Labs. I hope I can open the monorail from in there. Doesn't seem like it. I don't know if this is where I'm supposed to go. Maybe? And that guy was there. Hey, JC. Oh, Deadly Premonition? Yeah, the other is good, but it's a slow burn. It's got the it's got the attitude for certain. No Doom novels this time. Not today. I'm saving that for my subathons, which I gotta do another one of soon. I think I decided it was gonna be Fallout New Vegas. But also, yeah, novels from the or chapters from the Doom novel. Man, somehow, that story continues to one-up itself in terms of what the hell. It's just full-on into, into flight of, like, stream of consciousness writing now or something. I, I guess I'm not supposed to be here yet. Huh. I feel dumb for not quite knowing where to go. I need to get some water, though. So I'm gonna step away for just the briefest of moments, and I'll be back. Is the book good? No, it's not. Really, really not. What companions in New Vegas? I don't know. I've never actually finished New Vegas. It's my great great gamer sin that I wanna I wanna resolve. So people get to tell me, basically. It's gonna be a total like backseat the hell out of me. Tell me what to do, uh 24 hour subathon of New Vegas. And whoever can make the most compelling case gets to choose what I do. Uh Did Arlene talk about her brother yet? No. Oh no. Oh no, Jesus. Oh Jesus, no. <laughs> That's gonna get bad. Alright, I will It'll be a good personality test. Oh, that's interesting. All right, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I gotta get water. Here. Guess what? I got water. <sighs> the demons can't get me now. All these juicy demon feet. Let me do some acupuncture. Ooh, gooey. He gorged. He splorched. Welcome back. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna get unstuck. I have to go through the administrative section to get to Alpha Labs. That's what it said, right? And probably team in Alpha Labs. Go through administration for entry to the Alpha Lab sector. There's a door with administration over it. That's what I'm looking for. Or a sign that tells me where administration is. Or a restroom. Oh wait, I was already in. Is this the reimagined version or the one with everything? Uh, neither. It's the original version of the game, modded. With a sweet mod pack dropped on top. It looks cool as hell. Administration! Okay, I've been through here. Just took a wrong turn at some point. Well, the mod itself has two versions. Oh, yeah! I see what you mean. Uh, no, it's it's the one that has no um, gameplay tweaks. I think it, I think that is reimagined. 
yeah, it's it's vanilla gameplay with all the graphical mods. Because I know that the like the super mod pack did have a bunch of gameplay tweaks, which I probably should have looked into. I think this game would be interesting if if like the ammo distribution were shifted, and I know that I know I saw a mod for that at least. Who who's, who did that? Who's who said that? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there's a zombie somewhere. Alpha Labs, but maybe that maybe that's up there. I mean, it's forward, I guess. <sighs> okay, administration. All right, you like donkey at all? Um, yeah. What I've seen has been funny. Got to do ghost hunting with him, and he was. It was really cool, really funny. Easy to like be on camera and joke with. But I don't know much about him. I don't think you understand, Dr. Well, yeah. Trugger. No. Yeah, cutscene. I understand everything. I'm telling you now, Doctor, the UAC is taking over this operation. Operation? Is that what you're calling it? The situation is out of control. It's not out of control, Swan. You are. I'll manage this, and you and your flunky will be taking control of nothing. Do you understand? Yes, Petruga. I think I do understand. He's good. Okay, plan B. Look at that lighting, though. That all oh, that light swinging back and forth. This is man. This is the room that you use to be like. This is what the game's gonna look like. How sweet this is. Welcome to the Alpha Labs, formerly designated Phase One by the Union Aerospace Offworld Research Division. The Alpha Labs began construction on October 29th, 2095, and became fully operational July 17, 2130. Originally created as the prime science and research facility, Alpha Labs are responsible for the development of leading edge technology such as the elemental phase deconstructor, hydrocon, and molecular fuel storage compressor, all presently being utilized right here in the Alpha Labs. These endeavors have allowed for much needed expansion into the UAC's current leading research facility, Delta Labs, where Union Aerospace is opening all new opportunities in research and development. With continued investment and hard work, the Union Aerospace Corporation strives for excellence and is committed to building a better tomorrow. Excellence. You got a maid in the shade if you can say the word excellence like that. All right, let's go kill some demons. Like an imp. Tried to trick me. They were trying to tricks. <laughs> this game tried all to be connected to the originals. No, it's it's a like a lore reboot. I was pretty explicit about that. Oh, got a video? Limits of the cabinet. Hell yeah. Code 586. Earlier conversation, but it'll be that stuff. I'm just gonna skim these now and see if they're if they have any fun lore. Okay, I heard UAC Corporate is sending someone up here to check on Betruger. His name was Elliot Swan. I don't know who he is, but John said he's a real ball buster. He said he always travels with a bodyguard. This can't be a good situation. Hope this Swan guy doesn't shut us down. We're so close to solving the stability problems and the transfer errors are exceptionally low now. 
keep you posted if anything goes down. Lightspeed Pharmacy. There's always got to be a dick pill. All right. Mr. Dorweiler. Online pharmacy. No doctor visit. Uh, no doctor visit needed. We believe that ordering medication should be as simple as ordering anything else on the net. We can ship drugs anywhere in the galaxy. Embargoes, banned pharmaceuticals, no problem. Go to martianbuddy.com for details. I remember that website actually loading back in the day. But I don't know if it still does. I don't know what's there. I hope it's not porn. Don't blame me if it's porn. Unless you like porn and you want to give me credit for it. I, okay, I just watched that video. Got the labs one. <laughs> it's hymns. <laughs> ah! Sheesh. Oh, oh! it forwards to Slayer's Club for Doom? That's awesome. Glad they're keeping it up. Paying that GoDaddy. <laughs> that GoDaddy uh, sub once a year. No. Oh. Here, William Banks is next to you. All right, I gots to find a, find a PDA. Oh. There's a locker code there? Oh. It's just lost to the ages now. Lost to antiquity. A locker never to be opened. Well, Alpha Labs is where I was supposed to go. ordered this in high school and skipped school to go get it. My older brother had to come with me. The people at Blockbuster wouldn't let me purchase it alone because of the rating. Nice. I'm glad your brother did you a solid. Did you like it? I remember enjoying it once I stop, buddy. understood what it was There's going for. There's nothing you can do for me. They're all gone. Surprised us. They just came out of nowhere. There's still a few squads operating. But they're all cut off from each other. Try to find them. Okay. Okay, buddy? <laughs> you, you, you okay? I'll get you some aspirin. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Damn it. That's right. Access denied. I don't have that. Need some milk? Yeah. Just, I'll just tuck some milk into your mouth there. Just, just tuck it into your cheeks. That'll probably help. Liven you right up. Rub some milk on those gums. Get in there. Okay. Never been ID'd for buying an M-rated game. Or rather barred from buying one. I had to punt a few kids when I worked at GameStop, yeah. But, I don't know. I don't think there was ever realistically going to be a problem with that. It's just more like GameStop didn't want to get sued. So they were strict on us, because what skin is it off their nose to send strongly worded emails about it? Oh. Yeah, the grenade perimeters are a little odd, Dante. Grenades are weird in this game. Ooh! Oh. 
Anyone played that grotesque PC horror game Stasis? Or Status? Stasis. Huh. I can't say that I've, I'm familiar with it. I played Cryostasis, and I really liked that. That was a really fun game. I haven't finished it, though. Ow! It's weird. Chernobylite kind of gives me Cryostasis vibes. I have no idea if that's justified or not. But I'm excited to play Chernobylite. No. What? Ah. I feel like blowing up. All right. What is modded even darker in tail? I mean, so uh, hopefully visibly it's it makes sense, but basically I have a lot of mods installed that make it even darker in certain areas. Uh, I like to think of it more as just highlighting contrast. Darkers are dark, lighter, brighters are bright, because it's a game about light. And a lot of the map design is about light and the distribution of it. They use that to hide enemies and stuff. I think it works really well. But that's essentially what it is. It's called Absolute HD. Um, and it's a it's a pack of a ton of other graphics mods. Uh, I was trying to install them piecemeal and get them working together. I was getting a lot of weird problems. Oh yeah, the pinkies sound kind of weird. They have like a really kind of compressed, crackly roar. Did you ever finish Ultra Nightmare Doom Eternal? I did. I haven't finished DLC 1 or 2 in Ultra Nightmare. Though. So, I need to go back to that and start seeing if I can get through DLC 1. That's going to be the hardest part. DLC 1 is so tough. Boss fight? Jeez. Oh! No! Pinkies have robot legs? Yeah, these pinkies do. Yeah, that damage animation's rough. You yank your, yank your vision all the way around. It's effective. I feel like it's okay for part of the, uh, part of the attack can also be disorienting you, the player. I'm, o I'm okay with that. Not a lot of people are. I think it can make some people motion sick. Just a couple of subs. Nightshot61, thank you for the sub. Sam MK, thank you for the sub. Sorry about that, I was a bit late on that. Catherine, thank you very much for the bits. I think I'm going backwards. I feel like I'm going backwards. Mod fix the shotgun. Not really. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a functional weapon, but it, it just kind of sounds weak. Okay. I gave myself. Yeah, here we go. Let's go through here. Ah! <laughs> so intimidating. It does a little flop. A big boy flop. Everybody shits on Doom 3, but I fucking love it. I think it really, just like, just this, this vision right here, of like multiple flickering lights, it is, it is such a vision, and a, and a well-realized vision of part of what the original Doom was. So I think it's, I think it's really good. I think it's super well made. Ooh. Oh, I think this might be the, uh, on a second. Free stuff! Congratulations, you've been... Congratulations, you won. You've been selected to receive one of our free promotional storage cabinets loaded with useful things that we think you'll need. To access your new storage, visit us online. And re Martian Buddy. And remember, you're always a winner with Martian Buddy. Yeah, this is the... The Metal Gear Solid. You have to look in the real world. Thing for it. I think somebody said it was 0501. No. Oh. Somebody posted a number in chat. I don't remember which one it is. But this is the one where you have to go to the website, and I don't think the website's there anymore. Oh, 508. Okay. Oh, 
Wow, you get the chain gun real early. Cool. I'm gonna run out of ammo immediately for this thing. Like, look at the light flickering on your gun. All steam vents coming out of the walls. It's just so good. It's so good. I'm really happy with how these mods ended up looking. Green. Bravo team reports there's some sort of unidentified growth taking over parts of the base. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it can't be good. Stay sharp. Yeah, the meat walls in Doom 3 are pretty pretty gnarly. Ooh, uh. If you want to feel immersed in Chernobylite, I would recommend switching to Russian VO. That's a great recommendation. I think I'll take you up on that. Isn't working. Oh. I tried everything, but computers aren't responding. I can't get root access to the systems. We can't do it here. We'll have to access the system somewhere else. All right, let's go. Oh yeah, I guess it would be Ukrainian, wouldn't it? Okay. Well, I have I have access now, but I'm, I think there was a path down here. Yeah, the executive offices. It's through here. modified BFG edition or original. It is a modified original version. I don't know. I looked up some BFG edition mods. None of the... Like, they were all just a little... They're all just too bright. BFG edition's is too bright. Oh. Shit. Shit. Fuck. Uh, I thought that was a hell knife for a second. You don't see those for a while. BFG just for the flashlight attachment. I actually, I actually like gunfights with natural lighting in this game. I think they look really cool and moody. The sound of shit warping in, but I don't know where. Deep just trolling again. You're right, I'm just a wuss. Uh, yeah, I get, I get it. I get that most people, most people don't enjoy being in the dark in a game. They don't, they don't enjoy feeling lost. They don't enjoy being in the dark or having to go through in dark environments. Okay, I got the PDA I needed. Oh yeah, speaking of. He's got, he's got some emails. This is the audio log of Director William Banks, dated October 20th, 2145. It has come to my attention that we have an alarming number of missing personnel throughout the place. My office has received four reports from Delta, mentioning that personnel are not reporting for work and that calls to their quarters have gone unanswered. My office has sent the names of those personnel to Mars City Security, and they have promised to initiate an investigation. But this news is very disturbing, especially at a time when we have so many people in the infirmary suffering from sudden cases of schizophrenia and other psychological disorders. I hope there is no connection between those cases and these reports. How can I game hard and style on demons if I can't even see? You have to trust your other senses. This is the audio log of Director William Banks, dated October 5th, 2145. It has been brought to my attention by environmental services that the recent power grid changes 
have caused many non-critical systems to malfunction. The report explains that this is due to either intermittent power outages or lower than optimal voltage input. It also says that sufficient power distribution to all non-critical systems is becoming more difficult to maintain. Little Thanks brain pops out. So-called optimizations to the energy stores in and around the facility. I assured the director of the S that I would file a report with central authority over this. I'll file a report. Okay, I was trying to get back here. Now I can go to Alpha Labs because I got the right PDA. That's what I was after. I think I actually walked through this room and just took a, took a long way around. Whatever. Welcome to the Alpha Labs. Formerly designated Phase 1 by the... Originally created as the prime science and research facility, Alpha Labs are responsible. Oh, dead. Damn. Good thing I just saved. They got me. They got me. Rip no death run. Science and research was going to go down eventually. I was a little I was a little indecisive about what weapon I was gonna use. Jeez. But yeah, there were somebody predicted that there were like this game would be great if I if only I could see it memes, and yeah, I remember I remember that being the takeaway. It's like there's no, there's no duct tape on Mars, lol. Like, that was the big... That was the big reaction when this game came out. Nobody had faith. This is one of the first games where I've realized that people aren't going to... Unless they're kind of tricked into it or, or baited along. They're not going to try to accept or explore the gameplay you put in front of them. They're going to want to play the game that they, they want to play. So if they want the game to be bright... And if they want to see everything all the time, you can't trick them into not doing that. Um, you can prevent them from doing that, but then they just get frustrated. Ooh, getting chilly. I'm going to shut some windows here. One second. Marine, I've received a report that you haven't reached Bravo team yet. I need to pick up the pace. I can't wait for it. Reaching the communication facility quickly is imperative. Gotta pick up the pace. It's not seeing everything, it's seeing something other than the void. Yeah. And I actually like forgot the button. <laughs> it's just click. For some reason, I thought it would be a different one. <laughs> Who's getting up? Who was that? Oh! Like their eyes are just barely glowing. I can still kind of see them. <laughs> Supposed to get a bunch of snow tomorrow? Yeah? It's April. It's not supposed to happen anymore. Hey, this is the time for flowers. See how scary that is. I think it's fun fighting stuff in the dark. Oh, mechs metaphors. Thanks for gifting subs. Gifting uh, multiple months of subs, actually. Very kind of you. The UAC takes pride in its safety record. The Please lights are just like low UAC and kind of procedures. buzzing. Ugh. You've hit hail. Oof. Somehow your reticle knows you hit something. Nice, isn't it? 
That's my that's my uh, marine instincts. I'll always remember how the hallway chainsaw guy is, or the hallway chainsaw guy in this game. <clears throat> hallway chainsaw guy. Are we coming up on him? Cast magic missile. That's what the imps do. They have magic. That kind of like ominous, deep, industrial thrumming, too. Just the wom of the background. What was that? Played with three other friends, got stuck with that guy screaming, Why won't they help me? <laughs> Were like other dudes? Or you mean your friends weren't helping you? Ow. about the surprise door imps yeah there's a lot of that that's that's a lot of this game which i remember that's another thing it was criticized for at the time for generations humankind has lived under the loop. wall panels that slide out of the way and then enemies run in behind you oh, and i could drop in here Going on. Ah! Oh. 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 Wasn't the old Doom games full of uh, secret walls and enemies sneaking up on you? Yes. Yes, that was very much a thing. Because they couldn't, I don't think they could spawn in enemies really. Uh, they had to load with the level. So yeah, if, if they wanted enemies in there that you didn't see right away, they had to hide them in little rooms and then just like open the rooms and then they'd run out. For generations, humankind has lived under the looming specter of slowly dwindling natural resources. Our new ventures on planets like Mars have only intensified our need to find fresh sources for metals, petrochemicals, food, water, and even air. To meet that need, UAC researchers have developed dramatic solutions. Solutions that will soon pay off for the UAC, its investors, and indeed the entire human race. Mars itself is our chief ally and the key to our solution. Look around at its vast red deserts, rich in naturally occurring iron oxides. They are the raw materials of our future. We have developed a process that destabilizes the atomic structure of pulverized iron oxide and separates it into subatomic particles, which are then siphoned off to create new elements. Like alchemists of old, the elemental phase deconstructor allows us to transform red Martian soil into clean air, fresh water, and hydrogen fuel, the building blocks for a sustainable, human-friendly Martian environment. And this is only the beginning. With continued research, we envision creating ever more complex molecules, even organic matter itself. Atom by atom, the UAC is building an ever brighter future for humankind. Yeah, uh, Seven Lively Sins. You know, I was thinking this guy's voice is really nice and seems really familiar. But I think it's because you've nailed it. It's the, it's the Mass Effect Codex guy. I think that is the case. Gotta be. 
That, that may be why I have such a positive association with it. Audio log for Kyle Berger, research supervisor for the EPD project. Uh, the, uh, the elemental phase deconstructor is fully operational, and the research data we have gathered so far is very impressive. <laughs> Unfortunately, the <laughs> research assistant Patterson was calibrating one of the core committers in the chamber, and witnesses say he appeared to see something. It's almost like uh, something was talking to him, and uh, he backed right into the parking lot. It was not a pretty sight, as it took off the backside of his head. He lived a few minutes, although I'm not sure you can consider that. But he, what they say his he eyes were as a He was trying to talk, although after losing that much brain matter, I'm sure it was his reflex actions. Anyway, due to this, I have enacted new safety protocols in the lab. And we have stocked with storage emergency medical supplies. The code for the cabinet is 7 Five, two. End of life. Hell yeah. Are there closed captions for this game? Unfortunately, no. Um, none that I could find. This is an old game. People didn't care back then. It's J. Grant Albrecht. He put. Hold on a second. Help me. Oh, shit. Ugh. All right, J. J. Grant Albrecht. He plays Crypt Cryptoin. I haven't played Destroy All Humans, but Destroy All Humans: The End in Metal Gear Solid and Father Balder in Bayonetta. Oh, okay, he's got a great voice. Yeah, I think I think uh, Mass Effect uh, Codex is where I remember him from because he does have a really nice lore reading voice. And man, did I enjoy hearing about Mass Effect lore. There, buddy. Okay. Blinky James Cameron lights. Ugh. Also, Death Metal and No More Heroes. Ah. Oh. I'm excited. No More Heroes Three is coming to PC. That game will look bonkers uh, running at high frame rate and high resolution. I'm excited for that. That's emails. EPD status. Dr. Berger, everything is going exceptionally well as we prepare for the EPD for its next round of tests. Roy Patterson is setting up the baseline now and we should be able to start testing later this afternoon. Schedule allows, please. Dab, 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 dab. Should be exciting. Yeah, whatever. Testing some shit. Fine. Dr. Kyle Berger, the maintenance team has just finished cleaning the EPD collection chamber. All biomatter has been scrubbed from the area. Deep scan also confirms a clean sector as per your request. 14 collection cones and 5 trays have also been replaced. Please be sure to stop by maintenance. Don't need your signature for the parts requisition form. Is that when the dude got his head blasted off, I guess? Hey, we scrubbed all of, we scrubbed all of Dave's head off the wall. I played Mass 3 yesterday and I did the stupid boss fight with Jetstream Sam, I mean Kai Lang. Why did Mass Effect need Cyber Ninjas? Dude, Mass Effect 3 jumps the shark so much. But it doesn't even know it's a joke. That's the most offensive thing. Maybe I'm not giving Mass Effect enough credit for being self-aware. Because one, one is kind of a, a big dumb adventure. And it's fun. At least what little I played of the remaster. But man, yeah, I agree. Why did 3 need Cyber Ninjas? It has Cyber Ninjas and just like, just, goddamn, Edie's tits are so big. I'm never gonna not think about Mass Effect 3 and not think about Edie's just absolutely hideously gigantic rack. So stupid. And like shrink wrapped latex boobs. Oh my god. Is this like. Is this fun, cheekily reverent science fiction, or is this just 13-year-old spank bait? I mean, I know. It's a rhetorical question. <laughs> I hear you, and yes, but also boobs. Yeah. Yeah. At least, at least Mass 3 had the beefcake, too. Vega was a thick boy. He was a thick boy. That boy ate his corn. Oh, 
love that. God, it's so satisfying. Mass 3 multiplayer is still incredible, though. Now, that I agree with. I think Mass 3 multi was, was well made and it was the best part of the game. I kind of wish that... I guess Back for Blood might be the most recent example, sort of. But that, like, Mass 3 syndicate was kind of that, that sort of deal. Online RPG progression kind of thing. Skill, skill based PVE. Who was more sexualized at the end of their series, Edie or Cortana? That's a tough, that's a toss up. Edie's sexualization was so one dimensional and, and uh, what's the word? Uh, gratuitous? Whereas Cortana's. Oops. I think Cortana's sexualization was to appeal to 13 year old horny boys, but it at least had some subtext with uh, Chief's relation to Halsey and some of the some of the weird shit going on there. So I think I think like Mass Effects was we just want 13-year-olds to jack off whereas Halo's was more of that like weird 80s sensibility of like we want 13-year-olds to jack off but also we want to make people think weird thoughts about their relationships with their parents and 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 what that how that reflects on someone's psyche and their motivations and I didn't play after Halo. Th I didn't play Halo after three, but Cortana got some cheeks on her. Yeah, she becomes. I the way I read it, honestly, she becomes very more. She becomes more matronly, and I think the overtones of that uh, make a lot of sense, given her relationship with Chief and Chief's relationship with Halsey and Halsey's relationship with Cortana. But they make her hips wider. They make her dump truck droopier. She has bigger boobs, but they're not like they're not like video game perky. They're actually a little. You know, they've been, they have, they have sustained some children, some cyber children. That's, uh, that's, that's Halo 4. Oh. As I recall, as I recall, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've played Halo 4. I could be wrong about all of this. They've sustained the onslaught of gravity. Yeah, exactly. Gas leak stop. Cyber boobs. Fire extinguished. Buddy system? Please tell me UAC corporate is kidding. How the hell is a buddy system going to do anything for the accident claims except double them? Tell me how a buddy system would have prevented Joe Torso Boy Moss from having his arms and legs hacked off by the Albuquerque capacitor. Maybe his buddy would have heard the thing growl and engage without power or a CRF module? Maybe his buddy's hair would have burst into flames inst instead and saved us the trouble of needing to run and find water to put him out. <laughs> Next thing they'll do is try to fix the problem by having us fill out more MAR forms uh, or reforecast our ODF. Awesome. Old torso boy. Mr. Smith, in light of the recent increase of work-related accidents in the Alpha Labs, we feel it's necessary to implement a buddy system when routine maintenance is being performed on some of the heavier equipment. We feel this should cut down on some of the claims being filed in your department. Please get back to me if you have any other ideas on how to keep Alpha Labs as safe as it can be. Audio log for Jack Smith, a benefits analyst in HR 1024-2145. We're getting the HR email. I just went through another batch of accident reports from the nice. science team. We've had five more people hurt this week while working with the equipment. The most serious incident was when John Hughes, whose hand was caught in one of the plastic extrusion systems. He was performing maintenance on it, and states that he unplugged it and had the safety key in his pocket. It managed to activate without an apparent power source and uh, shredded his arm up to the elbow before someone got him out. It's been reported that the uh, machine is still running and we can't shut it down. The cost on that incident alone is enough to raise the red flag, but this is just one in a pile. Uh, we're going to overrun our budget on benefits payout this quarter. And while it's not my department, I have to assume that the new equipment budget is going to be blown out as well because, according to these reports, the equipment's breaking down on a daily basis. Please mark this for review at corporate end of log. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I hit, I hit that thing. I hit a button. I'm just... I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I mean, this seems important, right? I've been here before, though. I 
Oh wait, is this the same one I came from or is this a different one? Yeah, this is the one I came from. All right. Oh, totally not Michael. Thanks for the prime. I'm from a different timeline and I need your help. I'm from, it's from... Wait, it's 1997 where I'm from. My timeline's future depends on a single question. What was the first game to ever give you a big stiff one? Um... Interesting question. How can it not be Tomb Raider? Maybe, maybe it was Tomb Raider. I don't know. I didn't play Tomb Raider much. I didn't have a PlayStation when Tomb Raider was was the thing. Uh, might have been Street Fighter? Pausing, doing Chun-Li's high kick and pausing. Still have a thing for triangular boobs. I have a thing for all boobs. I'm not shapist. For triangles, that's great. Rectangles, that's fine. Star shaped? Why not? like they can ragdoll just after they jump too which fires their corpse across the room this is a rare but beautiful occurrence <laughs> personal favorite is rhombus the rhombust nice look at the tilt of that girl's boobs <laughs> I forgot these things. These little, like, crawly boys. I they just try to run at you and try to hit you. Yeah. I don't remember them being that bad. I guess they can just throw a lot of them. Yeah, this game gets pretty satanic. Just FYI. Yeah, there he is. There's our guy. There's gonna be more guts. Guts walls. Just general guts. L guts. So if you're not ready for guts, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe adjust, adjust your expectations. Pivot those expectations towards the guts end of the, uh, the alignment there. Is that the Marine that came with the inspector? No. Sarge, I believe, that guy. Carrying the suspicious suitcase. Yeah, right, Demi? You reload in this game. Weird. Reload in a Doom game. Mad Lads went and did it. Okay. Just saw a few frames of a brain fly across the screen. That's not what video games are all about. I don't know what they are about. Lore and brains popping out. Ooh, that's a lot. Where'd he go? Saw you up there. Hmm. Hey! Meat barrels, the only way to blow up the meat. Gotta get a barrel on that meat. It's like an infinite pit in a, in a UAC facility. Yeah. Spooky. Guys are being divas. Shit. 
Way to be a child. Oh, shit, shit. Man, I really shouldn't have... I actually had him shooting at the barrel. That was terrible placement. Oh well, everything worked out. Not a single problem in the world. You guys doing just fine. Very definite heartbeat sound effect going on, but I'm like, I'm not low on life or anything. That's just in this environment. Ow! room. Oh, I guess photosensitivity warning. Sorry about that. Still, blinky doom room. Whoa. I'm pretty sure there's a strobe room where you fight a bunch of zombies later. I love random machinery. What's it doing? Who knows? Yeah, science! It's recombinating matter. It's pumping away for eternity. Yeah. It's making sound. Shooting off steam. Little steam vents. Heck is that? A bunch of little dudes spill out here? What's going on? No sleep time for you, Catherine. Sleep well. Thank you very much for watching. Solid physics. Man, all the rooms have such like such well-made ambience. Ambience in terms of the audio. There's a lot of different kinds of just machine humming and air whooshing. Got a new instructional video. Hydro Cod. Safer worlds for everyone. For centuries, people on Earth have waged war over two things vital to human existence, fuel and water. As part of its ongoing commitment to create safer worlds for everyone, the UAC recently unveiled its development of the Hydro Cod. Though still in its prototype stages, the Hydrocon will, in one dramatic move, forever end all shortages of water and fuel. By splitting iron oxide molecules, the Hydrocon produces oxygen and hydrogen, cheaply and safely, without the need for large amounts of electricity. The hydrogen is then used for hydrogen fuel, a substance so versatile and clean that it can be used in everything from home appliances to today's most demanding rocket engines. A side benefit of producing this fuel is an endless supply of pure, spring-like water that is more refined than any earthbound spring. We envision a world where technologies such as the Hydrocon can be used to end drought and civil strife in impoverished nations where water or fuel have ever been in short supply. While always at the forefront of scientific research and development, Union Aerospace hopes that the creation of the Hydrocon will continue to make safer worlds for everyone. Wow. Yeah, the UAC is such a cool company. I'm glad that they're working for us. Anyway, back to this nightmare hellscape. Another one. Go. Oh. Boink. Boink. Awesome. Two, three rules. <laughs> yeah, I need to I need to pull some of those clips into media tech, I think. 
Now the question is, do I leave them in as a clip from the PDA with the video rolling? Or do I clip, do I like crop it out, zoom it in? Decisions, decisions. These are just the, uh, the high level creative decisions I face on a near daily basis. Oh, you startled me. Man, I'm ever glad to see you. It's the I boiler room alone. I live in. It's freaking spooky lately. The hydrogun's blown a few circuits. It was unstable. Be careful of that gun. A stray bullet into the glass shields could blow the whole area. I'm gonna try and get this thing stabilized. I'll head to the science office when I have this under control. on through. There's like a big... It seems weird that there's a big chomper like right behind him while he's working on his laptop or whatever. Bernie Lipsits. It is Bernie. Well, the boys and I are headed over to Mars City tonight after the shift for some beers. You are as always welcome to come along, buddy. I will see you there. Lipsits, a siphon hose in the oxygen displacement valve is forming a leak due to the lower temperatures required to boost production in the hydrocon labs. This hose were to rupture, it would cause a very severe instability in the hydrocon systems and could result in a very dangerous situation. It really should be replaced. Okay. Audio logs, alright. Simple guy. He enjoys his beers. He enjoys replacing damaged pipes. Drinking my beers. Alpha Dude, thanks for the sub. Go this way. Oh, that shit. A secret switch somewhere? Oh! Hell yes. Environmental shit. Dude's like drinking beer and laying pipe, yeah. I like drinking beer. I like, I like fucking broads, and I like shooting demons. It's gonna get a hell yeah. Oh, here we go. real fun like the the zombies that aren't armed just kind of wander around their fun target practice once you have a shotgun well target not really target practice you can just blast them away at close range what the hell i don't know what i just did i don't know what happened there Dude man warned you? Oh, that's right. I shot the thing I wasn't supposed to shoot. I shot a thing and it exploded. Right. He did warn me. He absolutely warned me. Yeah, it's in here. Okay. Can't hit these things, I guess. Click on these emails just to make the icon go away. Gotta retain my 100% completion. My 100% email read rate. <laughs> the Baja do be blasting. Yeah, that was, uh... That was me getting blown away by the explosive flavor of Baja Blast. It was like a tropical vacation in my mouth. that like kind of empty whoosh sound it's really good it does sound like you were deep inside a completely like fucked facility I 
by Baja Blast with code red. No. What would that be like a purple nurple? Safer worlds for everyone. The hydro The humming sound? Yeah, just low hum of creepy faraway machine. Ow, 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 shit. What? The fuck? Who why? Here? Ow! Holy cow! Ooh. Man, armor is really good in this game. This is a Half-Life 2 killer? Mm. It's a it's a great game for the wrong time. Too early or too late? Oh! Jeez. What are those things called, I wonder? It's an alternative Half-Life 1? Yeah, yeah, actually. In terms of, like, the flow of the game, it is pretty Half-Life 1-ish. You go somewhere, some science happens, bad shit starts happening. And then you're the mystery lone awesome dude who can shoot through all the enemies and fix this situation. And that sound is so so oppressive and bad. It's like the whistling of wind through an empty house or something. Oh, they're wraiths. Okay. I hope you guys are all having a good Easter. If you observe, gotta keep tagging that on there. Or just a good weekend, regardless. I gotta admit, I'm feeling a lot better now that my PC is is just humming. It's, it's being a champ. So I'm I'm feeling pretty good. I saved like a lot of money on having to buy like a new motherboard and processor. Nothing feels better than that, I think. Being able to, like, reuse something you thought was broken because you were able to figure out what was wrong or something around it. Ooh. How many thousands of FPS do you get in this game? Uh, I haven't checked, to be honest. I haven't... I think... I'm pretty sure it's capped to 120 just because I have G-Sync turned on. Uh, usually it doesn't render frames that it it can't display. Uh, and also, on top of that, I have a lot of uh, graphical mods. Soft Shadows seems to be a pretty expensive feature, but it is turned on. The game, ah, the game looks good. Awesome. Loving the carry Eurodyne 2023 hair right now. Yeah, I just, I didn't uh, put any product in my hair today. I didn't really comb it. When I took a shower. So it's just, this is just, this is just the fuzz. I didn't think I'd be streaming today. Because I thought my PC was going to be dead. Best case scenario, I thought I could get my my new parts tomorrow. Put a new PC together, but look at that! Seeing him like as a silhouette against the flickering light in the back. What soft shadows actually do? Uh, well, it makes it it makes shadows soft, and I will try to find a place to uh to show that. Oh. So dank. The absolute dankest. Alright, let's see. This is a good, yeah, this is a good example right here. So, uh, you see how, like, there is a pretty noticeable shadow there. Actually, you know what? I think I can just turn it off. So if you look at the line, it's actually a little, it's a little blurred. Um, it is not just a straight edge. Like, compare what that looks like to what this looks like. 
That is a really straight line, very definite. This is actually kind of blurred between the two edges to make it a soft shadow. It makes it look like light disperses a little bit, so edges of shadows end up being soft in the real world, depending on how far the light is from the thing it's hitting. I kind of see it here, too. Let me see if I can just turn it off. Uh, let me see. Maybe just in case for some reason. Yeah, so... Look at how crisp and, and sharp that is. And with soft shadows off, it tends to look a little more like, uh, you know, a Xbox a mid aughts shooter. But on, a little fuzzier, a little more similar to how shadows actually look. And there's a variety of uh, of cheats and like math shortcuts you can do to make that more or less accurate to how light would actually go. Oh yeah, there's an easter egg if you zoom into one of the bathroom windows. I think I may have already seen this one. Like where it zooms in on you, being all demonic. Also, I don't think... I don't think I have a button bound for a chain gun, which is why I haven't used it. Okay. Also, I've been picking up any ammo for it. One of the few, one of the first games to fe feature bump mapping. I think. I don't know if it was bump mapping. I, I remember actually, Series Sam did bump mapping. Uh, this is one of the first games to have normal maps, I think. So, what a normal map does is it's a... What do I gotta say? A, a normal vector to anything is shooting straight out of it, perpendicular to all surfaces of a plane. So, like, let's say a desk in front of you that's perfectly flat, a normal would shoot straight up. A normal uh, tells you, in terms of coordinates, exactly everything about the plane it's shooting out of, too. Um... What's also really good for normal, a normal map, is to compute light. So if light is hitting a surface, a normal map will tell you what direction the reflection is going to go. You can make precise calculations between the incoming vector of light and a normal map to a surface about what how the light's going to bounce off of it. It's uh, So if every model in the game has information on every surface of what its normal is baked into the model, when you're when you're doing your uh, mathematics about what light is going to hit, it makes it real easy to do a quick uh, a quick uh, mathematical computation to decide where that reflection is going to go, um, and how severe the light's hitting it. So if light is like bouncing off at a very narrow surface, you don't get as much illumination as if it's pointing directly at it. Uh, so yeah. I'm broadcasting on a very low frequency. If you can hear me, I'm not. I think this was one of the first games to have normal maps for everything. To make the, yeah, the vector math of lighting and shadows really easy to do. Uh, I think. I think, I think, I think. I think that was the big deal with this. Because I remember, I remember modders complaining that it was really hard to work with. Because I think the normal maps, in a very John Carmack kind of way, were just kind of like all typed out in notepad or something. I remember reading into it. Um, ah, because I was kind of in, interested in amateur game development at the time. I was like, oh, Doom 3 just came out. Maybe I'll look into making mods for that. But I remember at the time, the entire scene was like, this is too smart. There's too much shit going on here. Like, you couldn't really just make Doom maps. You had to learn all of the systems. Whereas, like, Doom 1 and 2, the map editor was pretty simple. And the tech was very direct. And there were a lot of, like, very easy cheats uh, to, to lighting and stuff like that. That made it really easy to understand. This game was a lot closer to, like, actual lighting which made it a lot harder to, to figure out. Fun fact, you can also use high resolution models to bake the normal maps onto lower poly versions, which is honestly the best cheat ever. Resolution models to bake normal maps. Oh, okay. Huh. That's interesting. So it's a lower poly model, but light bounces off of it as though it were a higher poly model? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You save the render. And then the lighting does all the does all the work for you. <sighs> the 
window zoom Easter egg is kind of like this. Oh yeah, it is kind of Osafna, you're right. Took me a second to realize. Ooh. Down there. What's up, Phantom? How are you doing? Gonna both get up? Ow! <laughs> yeah, happy Easter to you too. Me. My body loads sometimes. That's the camera. I remember being able to do like being able to do like zero cost cameras was kind of a big deal with this engine too. Being able to see other places in the map. Uh oh. Wait, what? Oh, there's a dude down there. Audio report regarding the disrespectful treatment of new research staff. September 14th, 2145. As you know, I have gone to considerable effort to recruit my staff researchers for Alpha Lab. Finding team members with the qualifications, let alone the willingness to come to Mars, has not been a trivial task. You know this already. But it is necessary that I emphasize why their complaints must be taken seriously. We won't be able to keep our people to recruit new researchers if the harassment continues. No, harassment is exactly the right thing. We getting reports of UAC security Inappropriate questions and submitting my staff to unnecessary background. I must be we be allowed to keep our personal lives and be left to complete our assignments without further delay. If there is some kind of security, I suggest the waste of security to do their own safety. Yeah, sorry. When I when I talk about cost in terms of like rendering, it's in terms of performance hit. Like you gotta basically when you the way that like engines work is you have a certain amount of overhead. You have processors that can crunch X amount of math, and you basically spend that allowance on various features, uh, and then you try to make those various features efficient so that they use fewer resources. So you have room for more stuff. The only reason why Doom 3 was made like a slow horror game back then or was it was just what was popular at the moment? It actually wasn't popular at the moment. Um, I'm not sure what the what the creative process was or why they landed on the design they used for Doom 3. Um, yeah, it, it's an interesting... It's, it's an interesting game. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh all I can figure is that kind of more cinematic and environmental games were were seen as as kind of the future. So maybe that's what they were thinking. So certainly, the intro smacks of the time that it was made. The more more scripted kind of cinematic aspect. Once it gets into the hallways, like the the kind of narrow hallways and shooting, kind of like it's settling into now, and then like emails and voice logs, and that's kind of it. Uh, that is actually that was actually seen as pretty dated when it came out. So yeah, it didn't have the energy of Call of Duty, which I think is what people expected. That was sort of the the next movement in games: is things getting faster and louder and bigger and more expensive and sexier. Doom Three reminds me of the yeah, Reddit games like Butcher Bay. It certainly looks like it uh, in this because I've modded it basically to look like that. But yeah, I agree. A lot of Butcher Bay energy and how how uh, Mars looks in this gameplay. Uh, I'm gonna take a bathroom break. I'll be right back. Hopefully, I don't see any demons in the mirror. Ooh. Martian buddy's got an email for us. Play UA Nets, UA Nets, Draco Wizard now. Online gamer. The quest for the Chalice of Sanguine Drac begins now. The evil Vloxomire has cast a dark cloud of evil across the lands of Nazgath. Who will rise above and challenge his legion of wi wild wolves and berserko trolls? 
Raise your scimitars aloft and strike back. Join you and Nets, hottest RPG Draco Wizard today for only 29 credits per month. Cool. Walter wants to know about his eight-sided die. Dear Cheen, I am writing in regards to the eight-sided die you borrowed from me. You are not going to invite me to the game, then I would like my eight-sided die back. It has been two weeks, and I am very irritated. Says Walter. The E-Rock has landed. Andy just got in. My ride sucked. I flew with the new systems analyst, J Jamie Mendoza. He was always getting into it with these two security goons, Jim Daly and Mark Walters. They would argue for hours and sometimes days about any topic. A month and a half in that sardine can would make anyone bug out after a while. Anyway, let's get some lunch. Get some real food. Here we go. The repair storage cabinet 038, or the repairs to storage cabinet 038 have been completed. The door's no longer stuck, and we pulled a dent from the side. It would be a good idea in the future to remember where your ca uh, remember your cabinet codes instead of trying to force it open with a wrench. Just for your records, the new code for cabinet 038 is 409. Might be a good idea to write it down. Yeah. 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 409. I don't remember. Did I pass that already? Bang. Since the dawn of the space age, Union Aerospace has been at the forefront of this is a new one. developing new technology, but pushing those developments to even more daring extremes. Mm. With an abundant production of hydrogen fuel, thanks to the hydrocon. The specialist teams ask the big question. Can we devise a way to store and deliver that fuel to make the dream of deep space research a reality? The answer has been a resounding yes. Under the direction of Dr. Malcolm Betruga, key UAC scientists have made startling new discoveries in the fields of quantum physics. And with them, they have been able to use the actual space between electrons and protons in a molecule as a storage medium for fuel in our interplanetary antimatter drives. Now, fuel that would once take up half the payload of an interplanetary ship only occupies a fraction of that space. You are looking at the molecular fuel storage compactor. The MFS compressor is yet another UAC marvel that brings the dream of reaching and colonizing the most distant planets closer to a reality. The UAC has long made safer worlds for everyone. And now they will bring those worlds even closer than you could ever imagine. Thanks, UAC. Glad to be on Team UAC. Baja Blast to every corner of the civilized galaxy. What the? Ow, hey! Damn. Marine, Bravo team reports they've located your position but are unable to move to your current location. Head through engineering and try to link up with them in Sector 3. Probably the video I just saw. Yeah. Wait, are these guys demons too? Yeah, yeah. Marines have been demonically possessed. Stuck on the ball. Oh, what the heck? Oh, oh. Wow. Darn it. Get me with those sneak demons. Oh, they were still speaking English? I guess they. Yeah, they do seem to say, like, English phrases through their comms, right? Maybe it's creepier that way. Come 
from here. Oh, no. Jeez. Be English is demon in origin. Makes sense. Stands to reason. Oh, okay. All right. Look how much? Look how much he bobs around when he's crouch walking. Okay. Big time dead. I got the legendary luck of Flynn Fly Tagger. There's a guy up there. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. There's a part where you, like, have to follow this... It's like... Don't shoot. Robot on a track that has a this uh, lantern yeah. on it. The lights are all out. I'll lead you through here if you can get me off this base. If somebody save their save their Excel docs. Come on, I can't wait. I think you have to protect this guy, and he's got the lantern, which is pretty cool. This is a neat sequence because you like go through a pitch black environment. Yeah. Electromagnetic pulses have knocked out the electrical systems in this area. Watch out, a big one could knock out our lights. Chad, if someone with no dick is dickless, then if someone with a dick is dicked or dickful. Hmm. Stay close. And dicked? Be dicked? I think be dicked. They are be dicked. Dick positive? Yeah. It's close. Damn. Really are a lot of ways you can <laughs> are a lot of ways this can go. Benedict? Oh, they did get him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, now it's pitch black for me, I guess. I did think I was basically, like, dodging fireballs that were flying directly at him. I could have turned the imp away, but I didn't. Oh, well. It's dark. Lost my buddy. There's an achievement for saving him? Oh, you bet there is? This this game predates achievements, though. I don't know if they added... I mean, surely they have them on the BFG edition. I actually don't think... I don't know if the original Doom 3 has achievements. Ooh! It's our time. Except I forgot. Luckily, it's it's like usually the, the last one. What? Oh, it's the wrong locker, I bet. Oh, that's for 038. Oh, no. I don't know what it is for 39. No, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll find a future PDA for it. Oh, 
Oh, that guy would have told you? Oh. Well, hold on a minute. I don't remember when I last saved. <gasps> okay, good. We can still do it. Oh God, don't let it get me! <clears throat> Alright, ate the fireball for him this time. God, it's dead. So bravely defending this guy. Oh God! Don't let it get me. Oh, thank God it's dead. It was a nice duck. It was a nice duck, Jay Edwards. We've got to keep moving. Good move. There's the exit. I don't know if I can save him. There's the exit. Hold on, let me let me get up here. <laughs> no, that like that sure seems like it's supposed to happen. <laughs> Just flies across the room. Ah, <laughs> uh, got him. Another shift down. Thanks, Lawrence and Chad, for keeping me company. Have a good night. Hey, right on. I do love hearing when you when you wrap up shift. That's the best time. It's the longest possible time till more work. All right. Well. No code for this guy. I went yellow. The one that holds all the demon pee. Dawned. Yeah, got Wendigoed. Removed from story. Man. A lot of quality vent crawling in this game. Yeah. Upside down skull spiders. Edgiest enemy ever. Of these stupid little things. Don't need to reload fists. It's a good point. <laughs> Always got bullets in these guns. Make some swing at some stupid fleshy spiders. Uh, uh. Shit. Ow! Christ! Oh, bad idea. Wow. Oh, man. They humbled me real quick.
also a good point. Don't have to worry about reloading when you're dead. All the problems of life seem so trivial now. Now that I've been eaten by skull spiders. Oh yeah! God damn! Jesus! Fuck! Ah! Uh. Damn, man, those, these, these things are rough. Ooh! I forgot to save. The uh, machine gun reload animation is pretty long. I don't think you can interrupt it. Fuck! Once it starts. Got me. Damn! Ugh. Remember this game giving me motion sickness back in the day? There's a lot of, like, jerking around of the camera for sure. Yeah, that's true. That is a good chain gun moment. They just have shockingly big hitboxes. I got stuck in the tiny hole. Okay. Save. I just don't have that much chain gun ammo, and I don't think I've picked up any more. Oh, okay. All right. Whew. Played this game for the first time a couple of years ago. The whole thing feels like a fever dream in my memory. I can see that. It is a, a, it is a kind of surreal experience. It does have that Half-Life aspect where you sort of flow through a bunch of, a bunch of objectives and environments in the course of like one very long day. like Bioshock Infinite? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. No! I guess Bioshock Infinite just kind of has each thing roll into the next one. No! Can hit me behind that? Weird. Not doing too hot. Yeah, this is, this is just confirmation that Doom Guy is Australian. Our, our. Oh yeah, kind of reminded you of Dead Space. Yeah, the I think the lighting, the sort of like grungy industrial look, abandoned space station kind of energy. I think it does have the same, like especially with this environmental audio, it's that sort of like, and then like the drips and the deep hum of the environment. No, 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 no. No! Oh. oh. What a class game, Dead Space. Oh. Man. Dead Space 1 and 2 are. 3 did what it. 3 was what it had, I guess. I don't know. 3 was a sign of the times. SGK, thank you very much for the prime. Let's see what we give you. No. Oh yeah, this part. Oh jeez. Got some emails first. 
George Puda won't be in today. Not feeling very well. Storage lockers. Hell yeah. Uh, what is the code of the storage lockers here? I know you told me a few days ago, but I can't remember. None of my usual codes work. By the way, I believe I'm going to be late with my Q4 analysis. I had a late start this morning due to the party at Mars City. Should have known better than to drink that much during the week. Who's calling out again? Please, George. Dusty Welch says, I want to tell you how happy I am to be working here on Mars in your department. I don't usually go on like this, but I'm just so excited by this opportunity. My last employer didn't appreciate my skills the way you do. I've taken the crates from your office to your quarters as you requested, and I organized your closet to your specifications. I'd like to add that you have excellent taste in music. Once again, please let me know if there's anything I can do to better serve the UAC. Dusty is a real team player. This is Operations Coordinator Mark Lamia. Dated November 1st, 2145. I'm filing this report because I am frustrated beyond belief by the level of incompetency I have to deal with here. I don't know where HR is getting the new employees, but the last five guys they've sent me were all a bunch of idiots. They can't get any of their work done on time. I constantly have to keep an eye on them. They work slow, they don't follow any of the standard operating procedures, and they can't even remember basic things that I tell them. For example, I changed the cabinet door codes here to 1, 2, 3 because I thought that was easy enough to remember, but they still forgot it. I don't understand why HR can't get me better people. I'm requesting full authority to hire and fire my own employees. It's the only way I can run my department smoothly. End of log. Okay. I did it. It is finally one, two, three. What the hey? Hey! <sighs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm excited for Callisto Protocol. Uh, me too. I don't know anything about the PUBG universe, though. I heard you messing with his crane. Well, I guess I guess a zombie has a right to be upset. I'm jerking his crane around. <sighs> Just that one dude. He had his head positioned in the perfect spot he did. It was awesome. Puzzle. Real gamer puzzle. Who can handle this? Who can handle this nowadays? Gamer is too soft. Hear that shit. Oh, is there a transfer item to incinerator button? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Fair enough. Whatever. Toxic gas levels decrease. I basically did it as fast as it was going to do it. Probably faster, I bet. Probably more efficient. I bet. I just realized. Wait, hold on. As an old. Uh, and dead as PUBG might feel. It's still got more players than Battlefield or Halo Infinite. PUBG is still a, a pretty alive game. It's not necessarily in the US region. Toxic gas is cleared. Waste disposal It's still got a pretty healthy player base. And I think even a growing player base. You gotta pick up the pace. It's non US region. More men down. Bravo is barely holding their own. I remember where I think it's still pretty big in China. I think. Could be wrong about that.
You're done? No, I'm not. Not until everything is cleared. Actually, having those explosive barrels in there might be better in the long run. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's still barrels. Can I get the ability to open this? Not yet. Okay. I'm going to find... I'm not sure what... Maybe I have to backtrack, you think, to that crate? Maybe. I don't know if I can. Let me see if I can. It wasn't through here, was it? Oh, I can't. I can't even do it. Dang, okay. So that's two crates I didn't open. Ah, well. 100% run. It's 100% run in our hearts. That's what matters. Feelings. Huh. Now I can go over there? Perception is a funny thing, you know? Games like Warframe, PUBG, and Fallout 76 aren't talked about very much, but that doesn't mean they aren't popular. They just have quieter fans. Yeah, yeah. There's a... There's a pretty big disconnect between... Between perception and reality when it comes to... Fuck. When it comes to hobbyist discussion of, of the games industry, and I suppose that's true of any discussion of any industry, really. But yeah, people love... People love uh, discussing games as though they're successes or failures so that I guess they can gloat over some... I don't know. It's, it's a weird scene, but... Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of games that can be very happy. Oh, this reload animation I'm doing awesome. Yeah, I really like that little junk of the plasma canister getting slotted in. I personally dislike the popular sentiment that if games aren't the number one game on Twitch for an entire month, then it's an objective failure. I always fear that expectation pigeonholes studios in developing a very narrow kind of game. Uh, I don't think that that conversation has a lot of effect on what gets made or what gets judged as a success or failure. Um, maybe. I have heard... I have heard stories of executives reacting to blog articles and the sentiment expressed therein. Even though, like, it doesn't really represent the opinions of a, of a large scale of an audience. Or it's... Like, I've heard that... I've heard stories, I guess, of some people taking into account... Uh, the game, the game of sphere when they make decisions or when they want to be liked. But I think, I think on a larger level, and I think in most situations, most decisions are made by, by pretty, pretty rigid business uh, terms. Realistic expectations are usually set, and then honest appraisals of the outcome are judged. I think I'll, I think also a lot of the times people greenlight projects. And they work on projects knowing full well that it's not going to be number one. I think uh, the gaming space is big enough now that you can make a decent money. Like you can get a decent return as a publisher, and you can find a sustainable audience as a developer for games that uh, don't need to target being number one and, and weren't trying to in the first place. But yeah, when it comes to talking about games, it's. People want to slip into this very sort of combative terminology about success and failure. I'm just walking around in circles in this room. Ah! Oh, that's like the worst possible thing. That's the worst possible thing to have happen. All those angry spiders. 
I have 27 health. Shit. Eight-legged freak. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. It's a weird thing. I remember it fondly. I remember appreciating how like stupidly self-aware and dumb it was. But goes playing this one on giga hard difficulty. Not necessarily. There is there is a difficulty harder than the one I'm playing on. There is a nightmare in this game, but I'm not playing on it. I'm playing on veteran. Because I'm a gamer. Ah. to prove to Twitch all the time that I am an awesome gamer capable of great feats of gaming. Uh, which mods are being used? It is the Absolute HD pack, which has like, I think like seven or eight graphical mods. The most important ones, there's like a texture mod. Uh, there's a texture mod. I think there's a couple of model mods. And uh, Sick Mod. S-I-K-K-M-O-D is like the foundational mod that adds a lot of cool graphical effects and and stuff like that. Man, I might have to take a, a food break here soon. All these all this demon combat got me snacking. Oh no! It's definitely a movie, <laughs> lol. Not as bad as Arachnophobia, where Jeff Daniels is just shooting regular tarantulas with a shotgun. I've never seen Arachnophobia. That looks like a dumb. That seems like a dumb fun movie. No Night of the Lepus. What the heck is that? Night of the Lepus. Come on out, spiders! Son of a bitch, spiders! Uh, yeah. As soon as he jumped, I was like, I'm done. I'm dead. Double Frogman, thanks for the prime. The movie had me checking my shoes for spiders until I was 18. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna take a snack break. Take a little food break here. Uh, but I'll be back. I'm really enjoying playing Doom 3. And uh, I hope you are too. We are all having a good night. Doom 3 is cozy. I don't know what it is. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back in maybe, I don't know. Maybe, who knows how long. I'll, uh, I'll put a little timer on the screen when I know about how long I'll be away chomping on my snacks. I'll do them snacks. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Yo, sorry about the timer scam, everybody. Also, there's going to be a dingle, but it's going to be my dingle. So, find your dingle. That was my dingle. I think since I, yeah, since I uh, changed my audio device, it's playing system sounds again. Also, I had to quit the game. Because it was telling me to activate Windows. As I swapped out my motherboard. And it's like, oh, your hardware. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, luckily, you just let me activate off the same key. So it wasn't that big of a deal. But I didn't want to suffer the embarrassment. Of, the embarrassment. The little, like, activate Windows cry for help in the lower right. Although, I don't know. Maybe that's funny. I should just overlay that on all my streams. The power on noise when you transition the video is so satisfying. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. I, uh, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. I blended a lot of, a lot of nostalgic sounds together to create that. Are they buying Windows to accounts now? Sort of. It is still possible in Windows 10 to not be logged into Microsoft to use Windows. I think they may have changed, ugh, I think they may have changed that though. I think you have to be disconnected from the internet when you're installing Windows to be able to do that. So yeah, they've definitely tried uh, a lot. They've tried a lot uh, to get people to accidentally log in and tie their tie their account to their key. I don't, I don't mind it. Whatever. It's where everything's going, or it has already gone, basically. Uh, legit, you have the most enjoyable viewing experience of any stream I've watched. Well, thank you, Teton. I appreciate that. 
just just out here trying to basically I'm trying to make the coolest stream that I would want to watch and I just have to I have faith that there are people who would want to see streams like that um oh speaking of also I did see your question even though I was in the middle of demolishing an apple earlier uh you're asking about the you can try five or six stores uh video that is in media tech yes indeed I should have gone down the crazy hallway Shit. It is my goal to be your number one choice when it comes to video game related background noise. For your work day, your school day, or just any day. I guess there's no going back. Sucks. It's crazy thing. I never know like what's the main path and what's the side path that's gonna have goodies. Oh shit! Oh, that's a. <sighs> that was a pinky. I saw the little face and it was like rotating and I was like, oh, it's a power up. Because you know power ups just kind of look like floating orbs. I'm alert for two hours while trying to take a nap before going to work. Nothing more soothing than some demon brains getting mushed. It's pretty cozy, isn't it? This is the gamer lullaby. Jeez. I think there were three of them? Darn right it's Dark Shadow. Darn right. Why we play Doom for the darkness. What is that? Uh. Uh. Is this the jump scare Doom? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I think it qualifies as that. list is Doom 2, which means my New Year's resolution for this year is to nab all the Doom games and slap every demon on sight. Sounds like you're well on your way. Doom 2 is fun. It's like, demonstrates uh, further mastery of like the map making tools that they had. Kind of requires more uh, quirky knowledge of Doom and the weird things you can do. It does get pretty bullshitty, Malcolm. Yeah, you are correct. It's, it's for people who play Doom and want more. Oh, ow! What the heck? Ow, shit. You got psychic powers now? Come on. Come on. Throwing shit at me? Ammo belt. This is like the first chain gun ammo I've gotten in the entire game so far. Oh? Huh? What is that? Oh no. I guess I'm full on it. Still got Doom 3 and Doom 64. Got the first Doom two weeks ago. Alright. Yeah, you're you're moving on. Um, let me think. There's also Doom RPG for, like, specific phones. That one's going to be a hard one to play. Actually, there's I, there has to be, like, an emulator or something. Knowing the internet, there's, like, a zip file you can download that just has the thing bundled with, with the right emulator. Massive service disruption throughout the entire base. I don't know how long I'll be able to track 
Bravo team has just entered the end program. Pick up the pace. You aren't far behind. Pick up the pace. I always wanted to play Doom RPGs. But I didn't have and couldn't afford a phone that could, like, do that. I can't remember what phone I had. I didn't run games, though. Really. It was on the Game Boy Advance? That's true. You know what is weird, though? I don't think there was a Doom port for the DS, or even the 3DS. Imagine how cool that would be. 3DS ported Doom? Hey, you! Can you help me? I'm trapped in here! Release the door locks and get me out! I mean, come on, we gotta do it. Hey! Hey! Oh. You're just a skeleton. <laughs> Bongo the man, thank you very much for the prime. I won't be a psychopath this time. Reject modernity, embrace Skelly. Thanks for getting me out of there. I got trapped in the chamber when the power went out. I don't know what's going on here. I don't understand why none of the systems are responding. I'm going to try to get an uplink into the main system from here. This is a secure terminal. I might be able to get a connection. I'm going to stay here. I can lock the door after you leave. I think I'll be safe. Look at all these goodies. Oh, baby. Oh. And a new video. Download a hot new MP4 from Napster. In a quest to provide armies with a well-balanced set of weapons, UAC looked to the past when designing and manufacturing the newest line of Mach 2 chain guns. The retro style and mechanical sturdiness of the chain gun is a must for all hardened combat veterans. Early adapters have nicknamed it Saw. With its armor-piercing 30 caliber bullets, the chain gun is capable of literally cutting opponents in two. Packed with all the punch you need in close combat fighting, the chain gun delivers unparalleled reliability and functionality. Always on the forefront of technology, the UAC is making safer worlds through superior firepower. Security log number 3072 for Delta Security Chief Michael Abrams, November 15th, 2145. I've just come from the armament division where I was issued one of the new BFG 9000 series weapons. <laughs> well, they weren't kidding about how much lighter it is over previous prototype models. Won't be so bad carrying this one around. <laughs> Anyhow, for a couple of weeks now, many of the security teams have not been following proper reporting procedures. Not sure if it's the format of the new SIR, so I'll make sure each team is scheduled by training division to get spun up on the new reports. There have been some security issues in the Alpha Labs. I sent a team over to investigate, and now I can't reach them on any comm channel. So I have to go over there myself. Well, I'm headed over there now. I'll finish the security report and pull and get back. Oh yeah, one more thing. I'm gonna leave this BFG locked in my office for now. Please have IT security change my door code to 901. Sure as hell don't need anyone messing around with it. Beep Abrams, end of lock. 901. It was fun recording those? I imagine so. Usually fun to perform, even if you're just reading an email. Kind of. 
Let's see. Getting a lot of reports about strange noises of voices from down here. The team is on edge and most are unable to work. It might help if you could send a security detachment to Alpha Sector 4 to do a sweep of the area. I know this sounds crazy, but it would make myself and a lot of my team feel better. Right? Security Chief Abrams. As you requested, we are sending more security guards to your security unit. The events of Gorman's death were tragic, and we hope that any future incidents can be dealt with safely. Expect a new rotation of personnel in about 10 working days. Human resources. We make working on Mars feel like home. <laughs> Great. Mr. Abrams, we are unable to process your door code request because you included a zero in the number sequence. And as you should have known, zero is not a valid number on door codes. Yeah. Hold on a minute. That's going to be important. Because of the importance of your request, we've decided to take upon ourselves to replace the zero with a three. <gasps> so nine three one. Please advise if this causes a problem. Man, this game, this game. You gotta listen to the lore and you gotta read the lore. You gotta listen and read. And I wish I could get more plasma. Plasma gun in Doom Three is pretty satisfying. It's like as kind of weak as the shotgun sounds. The plasma is sort of a trade-off. Sounds really. Really super punchy. Do, 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 do. Big time sci fi gun. Yeah, run in here. Run in here, idiots. <laughs> ah! Ah! No! 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 Favorite Doom? For me? Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is my favorite. Oh! Plasma. Alright. Stupid little spider. Goddamn son of a bitch. No, 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 no. But they brought the Doom 3 plasma gun into Doom 2016. Well, the, the plasma's from Doom 2. But you're, you're right, actually. Uh, I, I, I see what you mean, yeah. The plasma from this game is the one in 2016. The plasma from Doom 2 is the one in Doom Eternal. Gee. Those voices. Looks pretty for 2004-ish. There's a lot of mods. There's a lot of mods, but yeah, I think the underlying tech is still what uh what's pretty timeless about it. That's what scales up so well. Is there Ar yeah, Harleen? Harleen? Do it all for my sweet girlfriend. Miss the sharp stencil lighting of this era. Fear had it good too. Yeah, I mean that's 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 less style and more like that's the best they could do. Um, yeah, I sort of talked about it before. Uh, this game doesn't quite have that look because one of the mods softens all the shadows. But yeah, that's before they could really blur the edges of shadows effectively. Base schematics show all passages out of your area blocked. Yeah, everything looks very mathematically... Everything very sharp and angular. ...system with two possible routes to it. Activating the system will get you a direct route, but it's dangerous. Extending the service bridges is safer, but the lighting systems are fried. Make a choice. Lighting systems are fried? I gotta take the dark path, right? Dark path filled with darkness. Ay! Shit! Oh, busy being dark. I haven't slept in three days and I can't concentrate on work. Ever since Hal's accident, everyone's been pretty freaked out. I thought the, or I really thought the guys saying they heard voices were full of shit, but lately I've been hearing them too. I don't know how UAC expects us to work like this. Ooh, the tools in the storage cabinet 064 are missing again today. I'm going to change the combination to 651 this afternoon. 
Please do me a favor and don't tell Seneca the new combination. I believe he's the one taking my tools all the time. I think he's a real riot. This is the audio log of plant manager Henry Nelson, dated October 24th, 2145. I don't know how I should report this, so I'll just talk about what I know and what I need. I've had quite a few employees reporting to me that they've heard strange sounds, like voices calling them. First, I didn't believe them. The guys down here like to get around, but they assured me they were serious. I ignored the stories at first, until one day, I heard something too. I was working on one of the lift-up service panels, and I distinctly heard the voice of someone saying, Over here. I quickly turned to see who was there, but the passage was completely empty. I looked around, but I didn't see another soul. I even checked the work logs, and no one else was working near that area. I don't want to sound crazy here, but my guys and myself are a little screwed. And some of the guys were even talking about ghosts. To make everyone, including myself, feel a little more comfortable, I'd like to request that a security team make a thorough check of the EFR area. Thank you. Henry Nelson. Master Miller? Master Miller was Cam Clark. I don't think that was Cam Clark. Cam Clark's voice is a little more nasal. It was a good voice, though. Could have been. Maybe it was. Uh, I'm not a pro voice actor uh, identifier. Wouldn't say that that's in my list of... Uh, Qualifications. 34 grenades. Nice toss. Oh shit. Ugh. Oh, it was Robin Atkin Downs. Okay. Travis Touchdown. Oh, Voices Miller and Peace Walker in five. Got it. Okay, never mind. Played me like a fiddle. I really like Robin. Robin's voice is so good. <laughs> Damn, man. Jeez. Ah! Fuck. It hurts so much. Ah! <laughs> Oh boy, I'm getting myself into trouble here. God damn, they bounce so much! I'm just gonna get shot the second the door opens. Not moving. Uh, I can explode up. <laughs> Bob and Weave. I got him! I got him that time. And you roll a grenade under the shelves. I don't know that I have that much control over where these grenades go, but... We 
go. Now just bank it off the wall here. Nope. Bank it off the wall. Here we go. That's that's the one. Yeah, that was it. That was it. That was the money sh the money shot right there. Oh shit. Yeah, tactics. I just needed to apply my battle tactics. That's all I was missing out on. Rigid application of battle tactics. Today. Panel shifting around. Some weird shit. Got all of it. So cool. Maximum doom time. It's weird because the warp in like does that effect on the screen, but I don't think it actually hurts you at all. Need some health? Boy, oh, yeah, you said it. Oh! oh, thanks for the raid, Gil. Oh, I got chomped on. Don't worry, I'll get some health. I'll get some health and everything will be fine. As long as that doesn't slide open. I mean the jump? It just makes everything jump? Oh, it puts like a red, a red overlay on your screen. And it jerks the screen, too. It looks really similar to getting hit. I don't think it actually takes any of your health. I remember playing this at launch on a 1.5 gigahertz XP machine. Hell yeah. I'm trying to remember what kind of stats I was pushing in 2004. That was when it, that was that was when Crisis was out. Nobody could run it. That was like dawn of Crisis. And I remember being in my real shit college apartment, trying to play Crisis at like 15 FPS. Watching like garbage cable TV in my room. Oh, that's Arrow Hallway! Crisis 2007, was it? Maybe. Oh no, wait. No, no, no. Sorry, Far Cry. I was getting it mixed up. Yeah. That was the original Far Cry. It was around that time. I think Far Cry was a little bit earlier. I remember buying like a, a heatsink fan kit for my video card, hoping that I could overclock it with a sick new uh, heatsink fan combo. But, ooh. but what I realized is like, it's not like chips can just get loaded with voltage forever, as long as you can get rid of the heat. They also just get fundamentally unstable at certain points, so like... Man, this room looks cool. I think there's a berserk here? So yeah, I remember like spending a whole evening after I installed this like heatsink kit onto my... Think, like Radeon something or other. I was like, I'm gonna overclock this and to the next dimension. But I just couldn't get, like, it just kept crashing. It wasn't even hot. It wasn't super hot, but it certainly wasn't stable. There's just a lot of murder in this room. How's the horror roaring ring going? Pretty well, I'd say. I'm really happy with this, uh, this mod pack. It certainly makes the game dark and moody. Yeah, what the hell? Who, what? What? You shooting me from around the corner? Ah! Huh. <sighs> 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 it's 
graphics aged well? You know what? I tend to agree. I agree. What happens when your math is airtight? Hmm. I don't know where I'm supposed to go now. You're running any brightness mods? No, the opposite, actually. I have some uh, graphical effects that make the game darker. There's uh, oop, ambient occlusion, which adds, adds a lot of fake shadowing to corners and stuff. Make it darker. And then uh, soft shadows don't really make it darker, but they definitely make it look a little, a little less stark. I feel like there's something I missed in this room. There's definitely a lot of ghost whispering going on. Maybe, maybe this is just the ghost whisper room. I come here to listen to my ghosts. I don't know. I never thought Doom Three was too dark. I just thought people weren't courageous enough to experience the game as uh, as presented. Maybe I have to cross here. Vanilla D3 didn't have ambient occlusion? I don't think so. I don't know that that existed as a default graphic feature back in 2004. When ambient occlusion became a pretty common graphical effect. Still prefer Butcher Bay. That's an interesting comparison. Oh, but yeah. This game does look a lot like Butcher Bay when it's uh, modded out like this. All right. Definitely saw the name of this before the vote for this. This way. Found it too dark to even see where I wanted to run to. I eventually got over the horror aspects and was purely frustrated with getting around the maps. I have gotten lost a couple times. Yeah. Uh, when the entire game... Like, it's it's almost like a Halo problem. The entire game is like panels. Um, but Halo Combat Evolved, like, there wasn't much of a chance to get lost. It was just, like, a pretty one-directional hallway. Um, yeah, this, this has maps that are somewhat large and have like loops and lots of lots of weird hallways that you can sort of get lost going down you can go in you can go in circles and not really not see the one door you're supposed to go to kind of thing Ow. ah shit they are coming downstairs it. Ah. Ah. Easy to get turned around in the library? Yeah, if you like, if you get in a fight and then you look up and it's like you're in an arena room and there's an entrance and an exit and you don't remember which one is which, yeah, it is. I remember getting turned around in the, in the library. I mean, that wasn't so bad because you'd basically be like, you know, what direction are their enemies? you walk in a direction and it's like empty hallways for a bit, you're like, eh, okay. I've already been here. God damn. Ow! Whew. But yeah, I've uh, I've gotten lost in some of the in some of the earlier maps. It is interesting that they make the earlier maps like not so linear. I just sidestepped it. Oh! Hunk of it made it through. It's super compact, so I get hung up on doors, rails, etc. The bullet damage punch right there sucked because I couldn't recover well enough to win fights. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, the the camera sway when you get hit is very severe. I think they want they want that to like contribute to the the intensity, psychological intensity of being in combat. 
maybe to make fighting like four or five enemies a uh, really con like a really intense deal versus doom where you're like you got rooms of yeah it's usually never more than five or six but uh yeah i can i can kind of see the bits i can kind of see what they did and what they thought it would do like what they thought the result would be but then the actual result is for a lot of people that it's just uncomfortable or hard to navigate yeah doom 3 is really fascinating to me because i think it has a it has a really clear vision and i think it executes it really well i think what it doesn't account for is just the fact that you know i don't think it does as good of a job as it could getting people on board with its vision or demonstrating the virtues of it like it asks i think it asks you to give it a lot of faith and give it a lot of patience <laughs> There is melee. Yeah, you can switch to fists, but it's really slow and not so not so great. I get stun locked far too often, and it just infuriated me that way. Combat was just one factor, sadly, for me. Yeah, yeah. And it's even for the time it came out, it's a pretty old school kind of game. Once all the once all the cutscenes and the dialogue fade away, and they kind of have at this point, it is just like, I mean, it's Doom. You know, it's all it's hallway. Well. Doom, Doom 1 and 2 weren't so much hallways, they were more like arenas. Hallways and arenas, but... It's a whole lot of, uh... UAC paneling and... Monsters climbing around, getting keys... Getting buttons to open doors... It's a different beast in the series, very dead space. Yeah, yeah! Yeah, you're not the first person to bring up dead space. I think, I think with this lighting, certainly, it looks... Oh, sick! Looks very Dead Space, looks very Butcher Bay. Reminds me a lot of Quake 4. Ugh. Although Quake 4 was, I think, trying to take itself a lot less seriously. It was much more of a, a big, dumb, like, 90s shooter. <laughs> hey, fellas. Are we gonna stay dead or are we gonna wake up? winning oh yeah stream with speakers and mic yes do you have your audio setup listed or shared anywhere we'd like to know more about the setup i always get an echo when i try um yeah i've i basically was doing oh jesus i was <laughs> i was doing a little audio testing and i realized that my mic has such near fall off that i can have audio in the room and it doesn't really get picked up on my mic I think that's going to be more a factor of the mic I'm- ugh, What the heck? Oh yeah, it's like- this is the psychic thing. God. Absolutely wrecked. Gotta switch to a different gun. I don't know why I didn't feel a, a fight coming with all the- all the goodies they were giving me. Difficulty mod? Veteran. Not Nightmare, because Nightmare actually has health that ticks down all the time. What mic am I using? It is a Shure SM7B. Uh, and then I have a cloud lifter on it, too. To help bring out the vocal tones and boost some of the game, because it's a pretty low gain mic. Phew. Best mic for streaming? Seems that way. Yeah, it's a pretty common one. It's like this and then those those big old gray, gray like, Pringles tubes for podcasting. I bought a, bought a set of them for the Funhouse offices back, back when I was there. I see those get used on stream sometimes, but it's a bit- I think it's a bit overkill for a stream, but hey, whatever. We can do whatever they want. Ooh, the end pro facility, finally. Sounds great. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, having a really good voice is like, not to say that I do, uh, but I've definitely noticed that a lot of the, uh, a lot of the top tier streamers just have really pleasing voices. I got a blue Yeti and feel like it was the wrong choice after seeing everyone using that Shure. It's a, Yetis are great starter mics, but they are very sensitive. They're omnidirectional. I think Yetis pick up a lot. Quiet. Did you hear that? Oh, that reminds me. Oh, gosh. Somebody asked me for uh, mic advice, and I forgot to write back. There's nothing here, Sam. What the hell? I gotta take down a note.
run an Audio Technica, a Technica AT2020. Yeah, that was my mic for the longest time. I really, really liked it. It is pretty sensitive, though. My 2020 picked up most of the room. Warning. Coolant rod two. But yeah, uh, a USB Audio Technica 2020 is what I used for like the first five years I was streaming. I still use it too. Your operational status is unknown. It's a great, uh, it's a great mic. I like how, even though this room is kind of pitch black, you can still see the uh, ambient occlusion applied because it's darker than black. You can see the, like, corners where the walls meet. You can see these dark stripes in, around where the box is. Yeah, the 2020 is my uh, become my travel mic because it's USB. It's really simple, and it can like pick up a room if if I needed to. Oh hey, little guy, you want to kill some dudes for me? Save me some ammo. Yeah, now my uh, my remote streaming slash recording setup. It's the uh, the Microsoft Surface. I use whatever onboard webcam it's got, and then a USB Audio Technica. Twenty twenty is an XLR. There's a there is a USB version of it. That's the one that I got. Because I didn't want to have to lug around a mix a mixed box. Game doesn't pause. Game doesn't pause for emails. I've always wondered about the difference there. Like what is is XLR just kind of like an old analog format? Uh, and it and the sound of it can be perfectly replicated with a digital connection like uh like USB? Gas leak stop. Or is there still a unique benefit to XLR as a as a medium, as a connection format? I don't know. XLR is just reliable. That makes sense. I definitely understand the the value of reliability in a audio vi in any kind of AV setup. If it works and it has worked for thirty years, you know, there's no reason to change it or do anything. Oh, good night, Timothy. I was prone to USB erroring. Yeah, I could see that. Power, power disconnect or cord not seated entirely properly. Just software stuff in general can go wrong. That's why, yeah, that's why I've, I've switched over the course of time, switched to having all my audio, all my audio mixing and volume balancing being not software. Going over a cord through powered splitters. Oh! Windows Update can't mess with that. As long as it's plugged in, it'll do exactly the same thing all the time. Sick red lighting, right? There's some just. If you trust the game's lighting and trust the fact that you don't need a flashlight, you get some really cool, uh, really cool looking areas to shoot demons in. Corrupted drivers, oh, it's not recognizing drivers? Yeah. Grouse Jim, thanks for the prime. Warning. Coolant rod 2 offline. Main reactor operation temperature exceeding safe levels. Yeah, yeah. I think my processor might have exceeded safe levels. I'm just so happy my computer's back. Back in action. And potentially better than ever. What a day yesterday was. I was I was grousing a bit um, 
to, to steal part of your username, Grouse Chimp. Because there's been a... I've had a few things lately in my life just decide to break. And every time that happens, it, it's like just a chunk of my life falls away uh, fixing something or dealing with something that broke. That was another one, and a pretty... It was gonna... It was shaping up to be a pretty time-consuming and expensive one, but... Luckily, one motherboard swap later, and... Back! Back and better than ever! Oh, what happened with that? I guess it's... I did go over it at the top of stream, but that was a while ago, so... I just want to make sure I'm not telling the same story a million times. Uh, alright, so here's... Here's the narrative. Here's the long breakdown. Um... <clears throat> it was really weird. I was... I was tinkering with Doom 3 mods. And in the process of doing that, my computer was just, it was it was being weird. You know, sometimes your computer's just not quite right. You can sort of feel it, you can feel the waves. Things take a little bit too long. Uh, there was one, like, it kept freezing whenever I would quit Doom 3, which was weird. There was one time I tried to boot and it didn't even find Windows. It just went right to the Windows recovery utility and was like, hey, something's fucked. And I was like, hey, you're telling me, thanks. Uh, but it seemed fine. Uh, and then I was, I started, I figured something out, which is good. Uh, I was like, my fans weren't spinning as fast as they should have been for as how hot my CPU was getting. So I went into the BIOS, uh, changed some fan settings. Oh, see you, see you, Gil. Thanks for the raid again. Have a good night. I found that um, my chassis fans were linked to the chassis temperature, not the CPU temperature. But those are the ones blowing because they're the ones connected to the water pump. So I changed those. My fans started spinning faster, uh, CPU got cooler, and most importantly, my performance went way up. I ran 3D Mark because I, I presumed that I was getting uh, thermal capped less, and it turns out to be the case. Like, my processor was actually working way better. Arlene! I think this is the first, this is the first lady in the game, the entire game. Oh, her head exploded already. She said two words and she's dead. Ow! Dang it! Hey! Stupid face! No, Arlene! No! Ooh, Teresa Kazar. Oh, I bet- I bet there's gonna be a code in here. There's gotta be. Oh, I picked up- Oh, that's right, I never read these. Alright. Let me- let me see if I can condense the rest of the story. Oh yeah, okay, so I was- I was fiddling with some of the PC panels on my computer because I was going to swap one of the case fans. Uh, it's kind of hard to get to, which is why I never really swapped it, but it was old and spinning so slowly. And it's like the intake fan for the whole case. So I was like, all right, let's swap it out. Uh, I was taking one of the panels off and my computer just went, Doo! just turned off. I was like, oh, that's not good. But I was like, eh, maybe I just rattled a ca uh, cable. Maybe something's loose. So I finished, I kept working on it. Uh, I changed out the fan. I was like, okay, time to boot. And it just wouldn't turn on. Nothing. Uh, it's not like it wouldn't post. It's just nothing. You'd hit the switch and fans wouldn't turn, no lights, no nothing. I was like, great, good. I thought maybe the power supply went out. So we hooked up another power supply, still wouldn't boot. I was like, okay, I guess my motherboard finally died. Uh, or it could have been my processor or who knows what, but... Uh, long story short, I swapped in a new motherboard. And what's, what's really weird is, once I swapped everything, uh... I... I booted? Went to the new BIOS just fine, set up things, it even found my RAID array, booted off the RAID array, got into Windows, everything was great. And I was like, phenomenal. Did not expect that to be so easy, but it was. I got up and started plugging in my other monitors, and then all my monitors went black. Uh, and then, like, my, my keyboard wasn't responding, nothing was going on. And then the computer just wouldn't boot anymore. It just did it. And now it won't. Uh, so I spent, like, I want to say four to five hours troubleshooting that. And I could not get it to, to post at all. Could not get it to output a video signal. And then this morning, after trying a ton of things, uh, my last shot was to, uh, I had already popped out the battery for the, for the CMOS to reset it. And that didn't work. But what I didn't do is pop out the battery and hit the CMOS clear switch. So I popped out the battery... I took like a flat blade screwdriver and just kind of stuck it on the, the contacts to trigger the, the clear. Put the battery back in, put my video card back in, and lo and behold, somehow be somehow then, it boots. 
What's really weird too is um, it wasn't booting, but the this is one of the cool motherboards that has like LED lights on it to, to tell you what status it is on the boot. It kept hanging on DRAM. It would like clear CPU and then it would just stick on DRAM and do nothing. Uh, and I reseated RAM all over the place. But somehow, resetting the CMOS made it clear that. Even though I didn't change the RAM at all from that point. So I, I don't know. Whatever. It's working now. I'm not going to question it too much. But yeah, who knows? It's just, you just try everything. You Only, only one thing has to work. As long as you don't break it more. Ugh. You would have figured taking out the battery would have cleared it. Yeah. Yes. I would. You would have thought that. There's a lot of things that happen that make no sense. The fact that it was operating totally normally, and then me just plugging in cords. Uh, or some, it did something after it had booted into Windows, and then decided no more a until I reset everything. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe thinking about replacing the CMOS battery? No, it's a, it's a new motherboard. And those things last for decades or more. Uh, if the CMOS battery were going out, I would turn it on and it would just be like, what time is it? <laughs> That's what happens when the CMOS battery goes out. It resets your BIOS to default every time you boot. Anyway. All right. Ice cream social. All staff. As a reminder, tomorrow is our ice cream social in the Mars City kitchen. We'll have the typical flavors of vanilla chocolate, strawberry, blueberry, and a few surprises. Really hope you'll be at the event. The social committee is working hard to find fun things for us to do on our meager budget. It's a real downer when people don't show up. I mean, come on. If only seven of you came to our pizza social last month. If you got better ideas for the social committee, please forward them along. We hope to see you tomorrow. Awesome. New clone porn movies posted daily. Is this the new taboo? Come and see what everyone is talking about. See gorgeous identical clones in action. Only 15 credits per month. That's hot. I have some email, or I have some vocal logs to listen to. Teresa, please take a few moments the next day or so to create an audio report based on your plasma storage findings. The board is looking forward to hearing your accomplishments, or hearing about your accomplishments. As you know, security has been tight lately with all the accidents, and as a result, we can't be too careful. Please make sure to lock up your test weapon and add the cabinet code into your report. Ooh, test weapon. I guess there's plasma in her storage locker. Teresa, hope you like your new office. I think you'll find it much easier to concentrate on the plasma gun project without those dweebs in engineering drooling all over you. How pathetic, right? Haha. <laughs> anyway, I'll be down there from time to time if you ever want to talk or get something to eat. You're probably sick of hearing it, but I think seeing you every day is more valuable to me than any amount of money I've gotten from working here. Believe me, being a supervisor, I make a lot. Your pal Lloyd. And then Elizabeth reply to Lloyd is driving me nuts. I know what you're talking about. When I was still there, I felt like I was the only woman surrounded by a bunch of drooling men. I miss the work, but I don't miss that place. I feel like I'm lucky to be out of there. Keep your eyes open for trouble. I don't trust any of some of the executives up there. Can't wait to see you back on Earth when your research is completed. Oh, geez. To an email. The original email. Lloyd has really outdone himself this time. He's moved me into the office next to the trench in Enpro. Does he really think by moving me to the most remote office in this wretched base that I'll be more attracted to him? Wait, it might be working. Being isolated in the, being isolated for this long is getting to me. I'm a chatterbox and never get the chance to talk to a real person. Okay, I've got to get back to work. Yeah, that's a yikes. Lloyd is a creep. This is the audio log of weapon analyst Teresa Chazar, dated November 3rd, 2145. I'm pleased to report that the preliminary tests on the ammo storage in the new Mach 3 plasma gun has far exceeded our expectations. We realized a full 50% gain in the storage capacity of ammo packs as a result of utilizing techniques engineered in the Alpha Lab's molecular compactor. I believe with the ongoing compaction research, we will reach our goal of three times the plasma storage currently available in standard ammo packs. I would also like to mention that all of the employees here at the Enpro plant have been very helpful and quite eager to accommodate all of my requests. For security reasons, I've locked the plasma gun and the extra ammo in locker 063 with door code 972. End of lock. Hmm. This is Greg Griffin, but McNeil is voiced by Jennifer Hale in Return of Evil. That's cool get to that lore eventually. Paul Rad, Chief Technical Officer for the Enpro facility. During my weekly inspection of the cooling system, I discovered yet another safety violation. 
As I've stated repeatedly, our service manuals must be followed to the letter. This includes changing back to the cooling system on schedule and not when maintenance gets around to it. As you know, unclean back filters will create pressure inside the coolant system's release tubes. Even a minor disruption in a release tube can dislodge or destroy its coolant rod, overheating the core, and possibly sending the entire facility up in smoke. Now let me be clear, if I see this again, the team responsible will be transferred to sewage treatment before the day is over. Man cares about his cooling rods replaced. All rad, Chief Technical Officer for the Enpro facility. Came from here. I appreciate UAC's concerns following the number of stress-related illnesses spreading throughout the base. However, I don't understand why we require such a large detail of armed security rods in Enpro. Now you may disagree, but I trust Main my team's mental condition far more than whatever programming levels. is running inside those rods. Which brings me to the reason for this report. Today, one of my best engineers, Patrick Thomas, was nearly shot when a bot refused his clearance. That's right, Attention. shot. All personnel Luckily, a nearby team from safe. maintenance caught up to it and snapped it with a pipe and put the chase back down. Now, if you go, the boy's ready to return to work, I hope it's not getting close to one of those bots again. Our jobs are difficult enough without needing to avoid getting shot. If we're going to be treated like prisoners, I respectfully request that you afford us the courtesy of being guarded by people instead of machines. Machines! Ow! Oh boy. I built my first PC. I took the motherboard in and out like a billion times because I love messing with my new PC, but it was a cheap case with painted motherboard standoff. So all the paint rubbed off eventually. And I put my motherboard back in, it didn't boot, and I straight up couldn't figure out why for a week. I've been using brass motherboard standoff since. Yeah, I have I have a set in my case that I've just used for the past god who knows twenty years. Hazard doors sealed. Please contact plant management for immediate assistance. I've been using my case for way too long. The amount of heat that current hardware puts out is just this case is not not prepped for it. But luckily, it's been a workhorse so far. I think I've actually identified a couple of places I could mount some more fans. There isn't a whole lot of real estate for fans in this thing. Uh, not like modern cases that are a lot bigger and taller. But there are some... There's like a grill on the side that I could just drill holes into and then put fan screws through. I just need to find uh, fans that are tiny enough. There's this like row basically next to the PCIe mounting brackets that uh, that I could put a couple more fans into. Help with the, yeah, help with airflow. I think those would at least pull the the hot air that's exhausted by my video card out of the out of the case instead of letting it circulate around. So it would help. I could also maybe so there's there's five and a quarter drive bays that are in the front because it's that kind of PC case, you know, where all the all the DVD drives and stuff used to be. Um, I could try to cram a fan in there too. Um, because there's little, like, vents on the side, and if I put a fan sucking air in, then it would probably pull air from the sides that way. So it would pull in a little more cooler envi environmental air. But, mounting a fan there would be a challenge, because I don't really have a whole lot to mount it to. Um, there are still some of the, like, it has these metal panels that cross the five and a quarter bays. That when you want to put in a drive, you just, like, snap it out. Um, I can either just pull them all out and then maybe put in my own, like, mounting brackets. Uh, or try to mount it to those removable panels, but those aren't the most, uh, those aren't the most reliable thing. I mean, they're meant to be, like, they're meant to be worked and removed. There's nothing that can be glued with a hot glue gun. I mean, that's true. I would prefer, like, a screw through a hole, but yeah, that's true, I could just glue glue something in place. Or use, like, twist ties, coping wire, I think I have some of that. So there's there's a lot of options. Uh, fans don't necessarily need the most secure mounting. Also, it's not like this PC gets knocked around a lot. I mean, I just have a free-floating solid state in there, because there's no drive bay for it. How many five and a quarter bays? Oh my gosh. Four, I think? The bottom one actually has a Blu-ray drive in it, because that's how you... That's how you watch anime, baby. <laughs> Jesus. So I've thought about it. Uh, 
Putting a fan there requires popping the front panel off of the case, but it's actually not that hard to do. I had to do that to replace the one fan that was old as hell. I think they make fan plates for five and a quarter bays. Uh, th I think they do too, but yeah, maybe, I, maybe the ones I think the ones I saw for five and a quarter, the fans like pointed up and down, but. I can look around. Degrees Celsius. It's a bit... I guess it would still work the same way, but like... Warning. Yeah, like three five and a quarter bays and slap in a 120 millimeter, something like that. Something like that. I need to measure and see if there's like... See what I could mount a fan to. Find that transmission card. If Swan gets his hands on it, I don't know why. Yeah, I think that should work. Ah. What about swapping cases with a streaming computer? The streaming computer is a mini ITX case. So, no doing that. It's also the cheapest case I could get. The uh, the stream computer is a total hack job. It is It is meant to be small and stupid. Yeah, I found a I found a mini ITX motherboard just so it would be a little bit shorter. Warning. Reactor core temperature. I didn't really save that much space. But eh. That was an adventure. Uh because I had to put the pieces in that case very delicately and one at a time. It was the sort of thing where like once the once the heatsink is on, I can't reach the RAM kind of thing. Oh, that's weird. I'm dead. I did not expect there to be a third. But yeah, I I don't know. I get pretty good performance. I think it's not ideal, but I get pretty good performance. I'm pretty sure my my CPU is still uh, getting thermally throttled, but not nearly as bad as it used to be. I'm not convinced that adding, like, two or three fans is going to revolutionize the performance, but, you know, if you can add a couple fans, you get 10% more, 10 more, uh, more performance, why not? Ooh. Found a thing on Etsy that takes three five and a quarter bays, converts it to a 120 millimeter fan. Ah. Okay. Okay. I like it. That's that's ideal. That's perfect. Uh, okay. I think I will get that. Percent seems like a lot for just adding fans. Well, uh, I'm theorizing. Are you going to control those fans? You have all the appropriate pins. Yeah, yeah. The, so the previous motherboard I had actually only had like three pins for chassis fans. This motherboard has like six. So, and and honestly, even if not, you can get like Y cables for fans. Or you can just plug them into Molex. Like you won't get you won't get fancy uh, wattage control based on uh, based on temperatures that way. But it'll still turn and it'll still push air. After years of streaming, Lars gotten good at handling fans. Nice. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was. It's funny you bring that up. Uh, I appreciate the pun, don't get me wrong, but also, I was also very resistant to the idea of uh, tinkering with my airflow. I swear, like, 80% 80, 80 of the time, PC enthusiasts think the problem is heat, it's not heat. I want to say, no, 95% 90, of the time. The first, like, if you have system instability, I swear to God, there's, maybe it's not everyone, but there's always going to be someone in the room that insists it's, like, airflow, or or overheating or something. Maybe because that's like, that's an easy problem to solve. Ugh. With good fan orientation, you can get away with good airflow using four good fans. Yeah, I don't even have that. I have two. Two and that's it. I have one in the front of the case, pushing air into the case, and then one, one, cha one chassis fan on the radiator that's pushing hot air out of the case. 
and then the, I guess there's all the fans on the video card, but that's generating heat, not really moving it away. So yeah. That's why I think I like some... I can maybe fit some tiny, tiny fans in the back of the case to help push air out. And then one fan in the five and a quarter bays in the front to help suck air in. I had to replace my thermal paste since I never did it recently. How often does that need that, like, as a maintenance thing? I've never replaced thermal paste for no reason. Uh, and I've used processors for like three to four years, I guess. I actually did end up replacing it just now because I moved, I moved the processor to a new motherboard, so it's kind of required. done every two years that seems a little I mean whatever if if you want to do it and it's fun to do whatever I'll do it every five years five sounds a little more likely I I guess I worry that like the benefit you get of having, having fresh thermal paste Okay, let's get probably this. doesn't outweigh the risk of potentially like dropping something on your Whatever CPU you say, or counselor. nicking something. Dropping a heatsink on a on a RAM stick and breaking the dim or something like that. Straight from the horse's mouth. Wait, hold on a minute. What's this here? Intel.com has some content for us. How often should you replace thermal paste? In most cases, you shouldn't need to reapply more than once every few years. You should replace your paste if you remove your cooler for any reason. I mean, you also want to consider reapplying thermal paste if you find your CPU temperatures are climbing. That's kind of what I would say. Is like if, you, if you're looking at your temps and they're not significantly higher than usual, why worry about it? Coolant rod 2 online. My rod is stable. My rod is strong and real and stable and my friend make this looking so demonic. I put this shit on there. Bye. Oh. That's not a window. <laughs> ah! No, 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 no! more of a mental thing for most people yeah which i i support and i'm totally okay with i think i think it can be just like it's like a zen garden thing i think tinkering with pc hardware kind of scratches the same mental itch as like building a building a model or working on a car it can just the act itself can be like meditative and fun it can be expensive though up the last health in there yeah i don't know i'm just i got a i got a song on my lips i got a whistle whistling a tune because i was able to get this shit all working again and working well i'm glad i got to ditch my old motherboard i'm glad that that ended up being the issue as far as i can tell let's see i military transmission card all right Compared to most other hobbies, PC building isn't really that bad in terms of cost. I mean, it's, it's like more expensive than Lego, you know? It's more expensive than... Well, it's not more expensive than cars. More expensive than jigsaw puzzles, probably? I don't know about that. And like knitting or perler? It's probably more expensive than those. I think that if you have hardware and you tinker with like the same bits of hardware, you don't end up break, breaking them. Then yeah, maybe. Which honestly is is the that's the part that I like. I like being able to solve problems with what's on hand, uh, or being able to solve problems as as efficiently as possible. You know, if your PC breaks, you could just buy a new PC, right? Like you could spend twenty five hundred dollars. Or you can troubleshoot. Oh man, the flickering light's so good looking. Or you can troubleshoot and figure out the part that's broken and find a really cost-effective, efficient solution. I love doing that. I love the process of 
of dissecting a machine, poking it, figuring out how it's working, what's what's wrong, and then pulling out the one part that's busted, swapping it in, and then getting it back up and working. That's very satisfying. That's the part of PC hardware that I, I really enjoy. It can be stressful though, oh my god. Also like, I don't have a lot of good space to work on stuff. My workspace is, or my streaming area can be a little cramped. I have just enough space for, well, I have almost enough space for all my stuff when everything is like exactly in its place and everything's working normally but when i gotta start taking things apart and moving stuff around oh man ow oh no oh no that wasn't the first thing to warp in oh boy i don't know how i lived there's like a little lip that i landed on because i didn't fall heart stops every time I click that power button for the first time after building or rebuilding a PC. Yeah, it's. It, I feel like it has to be like turning the ignition for the first time in a new car build. You can like, you can sort of unit test with cars. Like you can build a chunk and then just kind of try to make sure it's fit together well. But yeah, it's nothing quite like firing it up for the first time. Just praying God that you see a BIOS. These power pins are such a bitch. They used to be. There's actually some pretty cool, uh, I've seen some pretty cool engineering on how to make that easier. One of the more recent ones, actually here. So for a while they've had like these, uh, like separate jumpers that you would put your pins on and then shove those into the, into the cluster. This mother, this motherboard has a really cool thing. There's like a whole, like separate bank. Hold on a minute. Hold on. It's like this whole little separate piece that has all of it on there, and each each uh, each well has a little clip. So when you put sorry, it's pretty dark, but when you put the jumpers on, they like slide in, and the little thingy holds it in place. So you just put them in one at a time; they don't pop out on their own or anything like that, because the clip holds them. And then you just put the whole thing directly into the the jumper part of the motherboard. Uh, that is probably the coolest way I've seen that be done or dealt with. So, that was cool. The rest of this motherboard sucks, though. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. This motherboard looks okay, but... It... I think it died. It either died, or there was this chunk that fell to the back of the motherboard and actually shorted it out. But... Like, there's no scorch mark on the back. I don't see anything that looks like it's damaged. I don't know. For all I know, if I put it back in there, it might boot, boot up. Uh, yeah, I didn't really talk about that. There was, like, this little... One, once I took this out, there was, like, uh... There was just, like, a ball of, of like, scrap metal stuck behind it. Uh, and I think... That may have been left over from... I had to do some drilling on this case a while ago. I had to drill out some of the drive bays so that my 3080 would fit in it. Because that's how old this case is. There wasn't enough clearance for a video card. But I had to drill out some pop rivets. Which is not the hardest thing to do. But it is possible that there was a chunk of... Like one of the pop rivet chunks was left inside. Oh, they teleport? So yeah, it's possible that that, like, a, when I was taking the side panel off to fuck with the, uh, with the fans, it's very possible that a random chunk of metal rattled loose, fell behind, shorted out part of the motherboard, and then my computer did me a solid by shutting off immediately instead of letting itself catch on fire. Hanging on to that case no matter what, huh? I am emotionally attached to it, OJ dude. But yeah, you're right. I've... A lot of a lot of the headaches I'm currently experiencing would be neatly packed away if I just got a modern case. 
I'll never go with Asus again. Had a horrible experience with them a few years ago where the North Bridge failed. It was a nightmare to get it warrantied. Took forever and they didn't even send me another new one. It was a used one and it fried again not too long after. Ugh, that sucks. Motherboard problems are the worst. Because they can be really erratic and hard to pin down. Yeah. And they can change... It, like the nature of a motherboard problem can change over time. Which is why with this one, with the way it was acting, I was like... It's so bizarre, and it seems to cross multiple components that it does feel like a motherboard thing. And I was looking for a reason to ditch the motherboard I was using anyway, so it all works out. This one has fewer USB ports, though. The last one I got a ton of USB ports on because I was like, maybe I want to do VR. I got to get back there and find two USB 3.0 ports. So I just want a ton of USB ports. Uh, and then the joke is on me that VR kind of sucks, and it's, it's especially not very good for streaming. So, eh. See something flash in the bottom left hand every now and then. Huh. Uh, the, I guess the health might change? If I pick something up? Is that what you're talking about? It kind of flashes white when I pick up armor or health, but it feels a little too obvious for you to be asking about it. My, uh, my experience with Asus has been solid. Uh... Just cut the case you have apart, get a new case that attach the different sides of the old case to the new one. Ah, I've thought about that. I thought about trying to uh, maybe drill a grill into the top and mount a fan, an exhaust fan, to push air out the top. Because most fans now have even like pushing air out the top. I could even put like a I could put like a, a grate over it or something like that. That actually wouldn't be that hard to do. Or even cut out a chunk. I don't know. Maybe. I feel like, though, I feel like... Thank you for that link, by the way, the one to the eBay fan mount. Uh, I feel like with that, and then some, some mini fans mounted in the back, that'll, that'll, give, that'll give my shitty old case the modern airflow it needs. Um, oh, somebody asked how old it is. That's a good question. I want to say I got this... I want to say I got this around the time I played Doom 3 the first time. I want to say... Because I remember the case I had before this was like a, a clear blue lucite case it was like a it was like a atomic blue n64 controller it was just clear plastic uh with cool glowing leds and shit except that case was trash garbage just just the worst since it was all made out of plastic nothing really grounded all that well i got tons of like i got tons of static in my in my speakers uh i remember even trying to do video out like uh, some video cards back then had, like, analog video out. You could do composite out. Uh, HDMI wasn't a thing yet, but you could do, like, S-video out to a TV. So sometimes I would, like, hook up my computer to the TV and invite people over and we'd watch anime, like some big dorks. Um, and using that case, the video signal coming out was actually much worse. It was, like, staticky and fuzzier. I was like, man, this case sucks ass. Also, the power LED was so bright. And it, like, faced me while I was sleeping that I ended up just, like, putting a... I ended up putting a college book on top of it whenever I would go to sleep just to block the light because it was so bright. Oh, yeah. Cool strobe. Cool demon strobe. Oh, yeah. The Baja Blast is flowing. Baja Production Facility 3. The peak efficiency. I don't know why more, more people don't get workstation motherboards. Everyone I know who has a beefy B PC decided to get like a $400 RGB board instead. What is a workstation motherboard? Is it just like a hyper efficient? When I think of a workstation, I think like CPU, one stick of RAM. And then, like, four USB ports. Onboard video. That's it. No frills. I don't like frilling motherboards. I, I look around until I find one that doesn't have, like, onboard Bluetooth and doesn't have onboard Wi-Fi. I don't need that shit.
to look into that. Uh, workstation motherboards. I got pretty lucky. I'm pretty happy with this one. That's my story. We haven't come across the BFG office yet. I like that they, they give you that so early. And you have to remember it way, way later. Go to the cabinet. I don't think this is the same thing, though. There's a PDA around here. PDA with a curious combination. But yeah, I for sure don't need uh, RGB anything. My uh, the motherboard I have now has has pins for case RGB. I was like, okay, that's cool, I guess. Hey. That. We were hit. <laughs> I don't know how much farther I can go. Here, take the transmission card. We can't stay here. is isn't safe. We better move. Ooh. What happened to your hair? Or what happened to hair? Uh, I just didn't... I didn't comb it today. This is my normal... Normal fluffy hair. Without anything in it. Usually I put a little, little styling mousse. A little pomade. But yeah, I didn't think I was going to uh, stream today. I thought my PC was still going to be toast. But I lucked out. Got my PC up and running. And boy, is it running. I'm very happy. You're not allowed to not need RGB. Well, my PC is not in the shot, though. I, I don't, like, I'm not, I'm not powered by some NPC, or some PC manufacturer. Which is why I'd have to have some, like, glowing obelisk of lights behind me. I don't have, oh, there we go, there's the one. I don't have a mini fridge of, like, Dr. Pepper back there, which would be rad. Dr. Pepper, if you're listening. Good beverage. Eric Grossman wants us to help this poor girl. Uh, guys, this isn't a chain letter, but a choice for all of us to save a little girl that's going to die of a serious and fatal form of cancer. Please send this to everyone you know, or don't know at that. This little girl has six months left to live her life, and as her last wish, she wanted to send a chain letter, telling everyone to live their life to the fullest, since she never will. She'll never make it to prom, graduate school, or get married, and have a family of her own. By you sending this to as many people as possible, you can give her and her family a little hope. Because with every name that this is sent to, the UAC will donate three credits per name to her treatment and recovery plan. One guy sent this to 500 people. So I know that we can send it to at least five or six. Come on, you guys. And if you're too selfish to waste 10 to 15 minutes and scrolling this and forwarding it to everyone, just think it could be you someday. It's not even your credits. It's just your time. Please help this little girl out, guys. I know you could do it. I love you guys. Awesome. Oh, really nice motherboards. Hmm, okay. Steve! I'm still shaken from that incident with Swenson. I close my eyes, I can still see that look on his face in the instant between the impact of the plasma and when his head turned to blue vapor. I don't think I'll ever be able to sleep again. I never liked him. I don't know who was crazy enough to give him a plasma gun, but no one should go that way. The worst of it is I've seen a lot of folks who seem more on edge than Swenson was. Something needs to be done. We should lock up the ammo in one of the storage lockers for starters. You pick the code. Make sure you file a report, too. We gotta find Morton's PDA. Oh, here we go. Steve Hammer, service technician. Since Private Swenson wigged Perfect. shot up that drink machine and lit himself up with a plasma gun, we've all been a bit nervous. All of us in maintenance knew he was losing it. Finally, when that darn drink machine wouldn't accept his credits, he lost it. Started swearing up and down, and you had to laugh when that machine lit up. But before any of us could react, he fed himself enough plasma to power an office building. Plasma. There wasn't enough head to clean up. Just vapor. It's a bad thing to happen to anyone. Anyway, I know Anywho. all the psych problems we've had lately, we need the additional security. But when the guards start going nuts... I don't know, all this extra weapons and ammunition, 
I mean, do we really need so much firepower laying around? Our power? Well, a couple of us decided to lock up all of the unsecured plasma rounds we could find. The code is 734. I think we'll all sleep a bit better tonight knowing it's locked up. Oh, strobe room, sick! I wish there were more dudes in here. Need all that plasma. Gotta get a tank full of plasma for my Ford F-150. Really blow up its towing capacity. Could haul a load straight up a mountain. <laughs> Coachella vibing. Apparently Danny Elfman played Coachella? I'm excited. All the little babies discovering how awesome Danny Elfman is. I don't know if his set was recorded. You watched it? Was it good? What did he play? Was it like a mix? I saw somebody tweet about it. Did he do any Oingo Boingo stuff? Or like hard guitar rock stuff? <laughs> oh, gotta admit, I'm actually kind of excited to see how Cyberpunk runs on this build. He switched back from his own music and soundtrack stuff. Huh, okay. Huh. From Asus's marketing blurb, Asus Pro workstation motherboards are designed for professionals in AI training, deep learning, animation, 3D rendering, or media production. Featuring expandable graphics, exp extensive storage, impressive connectivity, and exceptional overall performance and reliability. Okay, so they're like, it is for, it is for like, high grade, high, high demand processing stuff. Like one step above, above what gamers usually need. I'm used to workstation uh, motherboards having like slots for multiple CPUs and stuff like that, which is, yeah, usually more trouble than it's worth and not really all that useful for gaming. But if you have like scripts that render out videos that can distribute to multiple CPUs and stuff, that's what that shit's for. Check and see if Ghostwire works. Get your ass to the communication facility. Great question. You gotta get that Boy, if Ghostwire just runs like a treat, oh my god. I'm gonna be even more upset with my old motherboard. If it just if it just works perfectly. Multiple CPU boards, those are server boards. I haven't messed around with any of that stuff. My only experience with that stuff is like playing Uplink. <laughs> Having like slots for eight CPUs. Although when one CPU has like 16 cores on it though, do you really need multiple discrete CPUs? At some point, the, the difference doesn't matter. I guess you... I guess the idea maybe then is you can you can stack up your workload and have more <clears throat> like more ability to distribute heat. <laughs> Got to run those VMs, but you can just run VMs on different cores. Uh, I guess I guess having if you had if you have 16 cores on one CPU, what if you had four CPUs? Then you have 64 cores. Uh, can run 15 15 different clients of Final Fantasy XIV at the same time. Jesus, you run like 15 clients and the server. I'm <laughs> thinking too small. You're right. I'm, uh... Displaying a discreet lack of imagination. Hey, uh, you were supposed to be dead. You're running stress test renders for engineering workloads. Many socket mobos are super worth since I do that and peg my 5950X off. I have to admit, I gotta 
Ooh. <laughs> I got a 5950X just because I wanted the big numbers. And also, I had noticed that Cyberpunk was actually capping out my CPU, my previous CPU. I was like, okay, Cyberpunk. What if I juice you up with a billion cores? And it did help. But I still think I was hitting uh, thermal... Thermal caps. Thermal bottlenecks. See, I'm curious to see how Cyberpunk works. Uh, I am curious about Ghostwire. Ah! But I do think, I do think for most games, uh, most of my CPU just sits there unused. And then also it gets too hot to even use most of it. So it's like, what's the point? I mean, the point is I got to cram more fans in my case. So those cores turn on. God, slow elevator. Games just hit the CPU different. I hit 100% when launching Minecraft, but it quickly drops back to normal after a few seconds. Minecraft is pretty CPU intense, or it can be, depending on what you do. No Man's Sky, Elite Dangerous. And yeah, I, I guess maybe it's like Cyberpunk is the only, only game that isn't like a grand simulation game that seems to really hit the CPU. Dust, dust off Crisis 3? I don't know. I feel like, I honestly feel like the the tech, the tech bar is Cyberpunk 2077 now. That is the most system intense PC game out right now. Maybe like Microsoft Flight Sim? Uh... Star Citizen? Star Citizen, yeah, I don't know. Star Citizen doesn't run very well, but I don't think that's because it's like... I don't know. I don't know if it's an actual tech, tech benchmark. It doesn't... it didn't look very good from what I saw, but I, I need to check it out again. It's been a long time. I haven't played it in like two years, I think, since the first playable beta pushed out. And it ran like ass and looked really bad. So it's been a long time since then. Oh, 07 Remake. 07 Remake's just unreal. I say just. It's pretty good, though. It runs really well on my machine, or at least it did. Man, imagine how it's going to run now. Yeah, I wonder if the Elden Ring stutters are going to be gone. I was having a lot of, uh, a lot of less than ideal PC behavior, so I'm excited to see what's been changed. Fast. Switch before the ammo. What are you sipping on? This is a, a weed beverage. Uh, Wonder. Higher vibes. Grapefruit hibiscus. THC beverage. Is an Elden Ring receiving ray trace? Oh. I'm aware of. That'd be cool, but... Ooh. Ooh. Awesome. A beaver tooth, industrial chainsaw. Find some meat. <laughs> Why it makes you jerk forward. <laughs> the 
lowest brightness Doom, you know it. And I've made it even less bright. That's just how I game. Let's see. Those damn chainsaws! What are we gonna do with all those chainsaws? We've got two shipments of excess medical equipment coming in very soon, and we're gonna need the space. Can't believe someone misshipped those things. I can't think of a more useless piece of equipment than a chainsaw on Mars. Anyway, you gotta help me get rid of these beaver tooths. This is the audio log of controller James Holiday, dated September 24th, 2145. Oh. The recent transport issues from Site 3 have caused the board to call a formal inquiry. We'll study weight limits and suggest better ways to provide protection for Site 3 artifacts. Our equipment. Does anything work? Finish this later. There's an instruction manual in there. A full plasma. Oh yeah, Metro Exodus. Forgot about that. Metro is another one of those games, or Exodus especially, that was pretty technologically ahead of its time. Very aggressive. Uh, technically. I need to I need to go back. Actually, yeah. That would be a good game to check out. With my new setup. That has RTX, yeah, it does. Maybe once I, uh, and even once I cram uh, a ton more fans in my case, unlock the hidden processing potential of my 3 billion core CPU. That reminds me, I gotta play Final Fantasy XIV again. Check out that new patch. I gotta make my adventurer plate. Oh, control, yeah. Control's really cool. Ah, ah. Somebody said these are the wraiths. I was gonna ask you, still doing the new Vegas subathon? Uh, yeah, I just don't know when. I have to find a uh, I have to find a weekend that's uh, that's nice and clean. Like it's not only like a Friday or a Saturday with nothing going on, but the next day I can just have a nice padding to sort of readjust. Or maybe not do it on a weekend, uh, maybe. But I feel like I feel like uh, weekend's probably the best shot. Get people to watch, throw subs. But yeah, I need to do another one. Been a while. Sub numbers uh, could use the lift. If you do your New Vegas subathon, you could reach out to the game's director, Josh Sawyer. He streams and talks uh, game design every now and then on Twitch. You guys could have some cool conversations. It's a really good idea. I follow him on Twitter. He does seem like a pretty chill dude. It's gonna be a fun stream whenever it ends up happening. I hope so. I hope people are into it. And it's kind of criminal that I haven't like uh, haven't played that game. I haven't played and respected that game as fully as I ought to. Do dev interviews qualify for inside games content? Sure. Yeah. I guess that, sure, that could be stuff. Why not? Oh yeah, there's like a, I think like a slide puzzle here, kind of? Who 
literally can't see the enemies moving. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. How am I shooting all the enemies if I can't see where they are? I get it though, Epic. Uh, or Ekif, Ek excuse me. This game is dark, but that's good. Look at how cool this hallway looks. You can't have cool looking hallways if the entire game is super bright. Worth it. These are some dank video game environments. I'm into it. <laughs> Ragdolls are so wacky. Uh, New Vegas has a game debilitating bug that requires a community patch to be playable past a certain point because of the asset loading. Yeah, I'm I'm somewhat familiar. I've I've installed and modded New Vegas before, so I'm kind of aware of some of the stability patches and community patches that make the game more playable. So yeah, I would I would definitely get a PC install all cozed up with modern stability patches and stuff before trying to play it for 24 hours. Got no face. Ah, oh, Jesus, man. Let me, let me get. You got something there. Let me get that for you. Oh, it moved. Hold on. Let me just. There you go. No problem now. I don't have any idea what to do with those things. Why don't you throw them down the chasm near end pro like you did with the other shit? <laughs> just toss them into the Martian ravine. Ron, we need you to enforce maintenance lift access restrictions from this point forward. Several of these lifts can be used to gain entry to areas that are off limits to the personnel, but might only have maintenance access. Please see to it that this is enforced. Ron Ridge. This is the audio log of Officer Ron Ridge dated October 16, 2145. To Recent transport tunnel accidents are causing major headaches for both supply and maintenance. Each accident cost is an estimated one to three hour delay in what are mostly time sensitive shipments. It's becoming evident that certain junctions need safety adjustments as well as recommitment to driving safety by all personnel. The Improto Com Center route has shown the biggest increase in accidents over the past six months. Safety signs and improved lighting are needed throughout the main junctions over the stretch of tunnels and paths. Absolutely, no recreational vehicle passing should be allowed during peak hours. All personnel should use monorail travel whenever possible to keep cargo shipments flowing smoothly. Oh, hey, hey, who? Oh. This is the on a rail portion. Have you hit 420 FPS yet? I have stayed locked at 420 FPS this whole time. Rock solid 420 FPS. Play all games at, a, at 420 hertz. I remember this game running pretty poorly too when it first came out. This and uh, and yeah, Crisis. I remember were two games that I didn't. I played the first time and enjoyed but didn't get the full experience because they weren't they weren't running as fast and as buttery smooth as they should have been. So I didn't get the full impact of the graphics, I didn't get the full impact of the gameplay. I remember playing Doom 3 when it came out and being like, yeah, all right. And then I played it again a couple years later and I was like, oh shit, this is rad and this is what it was supposed to be. Uh, same deal with Crisis. I played it when it came out, I was like, eh. I didn't quite get it, because it would just run so stuttery sometimes, which kind of required me to not really... Like, I couldn't really run and gun, or enjoy running and gunning. Yeah, shit. Ow, fuck. But then I played it again a couple years later, after a couple of big upgrades, and uh, was able to, like, switch my suit style all around, running and jumping and shooting and flipping all over the place, and I was like, oh my gosh, this game is just the dopest. This game is rad as hell. 
better than Eternal. Uh, I mean, from a game design sense, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so for the kind of game that I like to play and the sort of design that I like. It's still a very good game, though. And I could see why it would suit, it would match certain sensibilities better than Eternal. If you want, like, more of a hallway game. More of a feeling like you're exploring a real, a real fucked up derelict space station kind of thing. It's more of, it's more that than Eternal was. Tailed on his own chainsaw somehow. Maintenance exit now accessible. I guess that's where I'm supposed to go. So that means if this other hallway's open. Or if that's just closed. No, well, just closed. All right. More of a horror game than Eternal? Yeah. You're supposed to be scared of the demons in Doom 3, whereas in Eternal, they're just there for you to kill. I don't think there's a lift call button over there. I guess I need to ride it to the exit or maybe jump up there. Yeah, well put, uh, Lazarus. In Eternal, you were the horror. You're right. Demons running around thinking they're the shit. And they hear muffled shotgun blasts and power metal. Slowly getting louder. Like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Let's see what's over here. What's over here? What is that? What is that? Oh, he chomped me! Damn. I don't know how long, I, how long it's been since I saved. Uh, I don't know if I hit switch yet. Let's find out. Eh? There. I thought it was up. I thought it was on this level. What? There's like another hallway just around the corner. Maybe it was downstairs. What the? Hmm. I swear it was up here. Hallway with the chainsaw guy. I guess I can jump down there from here. Maybe it only opens after you come out here. Out in the second half of 2004, along with Half Life 2, Halo 2, and World of Warcraft. Yeah, it did. Pretty good year, huh? That was also. Wasn't that around when, when um, Burnout 3 came out? Maybe that was early 2005. I think Metal Gear Solid 3 was around that time, too. Oh, here it is. Maintenance exit now accessible. 98 and 2004 were the base years. 2007 was pretty good, too. It was the Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect. Oh, that's why this is here. Okay. Uh, Bioshock. There were some, there were some heaters in, in 04. Oh, that's interesting. Can't call the elevator. I do. Hmm. 
Oh, I think I can, yeah, I can call the platform back. Service lift. Bioshock was 07? I think so. And I think that was also Modern Warfare 2. Uh, 07 was a, was a heater year, is what I'm saying. Hot year. Low-key excited for the Perfect Dark reboot? Yeah? The, uh, the trailer they showed was an interesting choice. It didn't really communicate a whole lot of what the game would be, I guess, aside from maybe their intention to make more serious... more serious commentary-laden science fiction. Which, sure, I'm down with that. Hey, Captain. Welcome. Playing Doom 3 in its most pure form, the ultra-dark form. Something perfect dark's going woke. It has a female protagonist. It's already already been woke. Even though the game's treatment of Joanna. Or at least the featuring of Joanna and Perfect Dark Zero's marketing was pretty cringe. Pretty pretty not woke. And maybe in fact based. If you're a creep dude. They give her like a whale tail or something. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Make her younger and hotter. <laughs> so waiting to see more about the Callisto Protocol? Yeah, me too. I think what, what ends up happening a lot these days, I think especially like post-2020, there's been such a rush of money into the games market and uh, I think a surge on a surge on hiring. The, uh, what we see a lot of now with game announcements. Uh, oh yeah, there's that room. End up being like more proclamations for hiring than they are telling you as a consumer to get excited about the pending release of a product. So yeah, I think I think Glenn Schofield saying, "Hey, I'm doing like a space survival horror game." That's more a clarion call to de developers that really liked Dead Space. Of like, hey, come work, come work on this project. Like the Dead Space remake. I mean, yeah, yeah. Or anything Bioware has said in the last like four years. The Star Wars Eclipse announcement. Hey, you want to work on Star Wars? Come work for Sunny Quantic Dream. I think I should have lowered the platform before I jumped off of it. I hope I don't have to reset. System Shock Remake is what I'm waiting for. Looks pretty good, not gonna lie. Yeah, it's, it's close to done, right? Isn't that like the last update they gave? It's like, yeah, we basically got it. Which is great news. A surprise, but a welcome one to be sure. We read all six Dune books by Frank Herbert. I haven't read a single Dune book by Frank Herbert. I started the first one when I was in like high school, I think. It was pretty trippy. I didn't finish it though. I think I was borrowing it from somebody and gave it back. Oh yeah, a number of devs left the initiative. Yeah. It's always, I feel like it's always tough to tell from our perspective, you know? You can put together a post of like five or six people who have left, and that sounds like a lot. But in the grand scheme of things, I feel like a, uh... I feel like five or six devs is not that, really that much turnover. If a, if a group has like hundreds of people in it. But, I don't know. I think it does. I think when you see a lot of high level turnover, when a lot of producers and directors bail out in the middle of a development, that's that's a bad sign. That indicates that there's a, there there might be a high level lack of faith in the project. But I don't, I'm not quite sure what the departures have been from uh, initiative.
I think the game director left. Uh, well. I mean, game director is an important position. But I do think games can transition directors and be fine. But I think if they go through like more than two, that's that's trouble. Huh. I think Diablo 4 has had a string of them now. Same with Overwatch. Well, I don't Overwatch 2 has been through ever since Jeff. I think there's been two since then. Oh, hell yeah. That's what we were waiting for. Although I remember the Berserk in this game is kind of intense. There's a lot of screaming. <laughs> but let's do it. I'm being more red. This is still pretty good. <laughs> Punching the shit out of everything. So bad. Microsoft's temp, temp staff rules are going to ruin a lot of games in the near future. I've actually, I've heard from studios that have been acquired by Microsoft. Microsoft is extremely hands-off. Um, which I don't, which just to your point, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure that any of their hiring or staffing practices they would then push onto the companies they acquire. Um, they may, for all, I don't know. But yeah, from what I've heard from from just people talking just about the administrative day to day is that Microsoft acquires you but like they don't they don't force you to switch to teams. They don't like take over your accounting or your HR. Like they just let you operate as a business unit. Fine air. Yeah. People need air. Fuck. I need air. I'm out of sprint juice. Oh, stamina comes back so slowly on the surface. I didn't know that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That might be it for old Doom Guy. Uh. Remember when I was like, Gee, I wonder. I wonder why they make you do these surface sequences. There I go dying. Oh, uh, they still have to follow the eight. Hold on a minute. This armor. They still have to follow the eighteen. Eighteen month rule for temp staff when you work under Microsoft. Hence the issue with infinite. Oh. Maybe. Um, often that is, that is less the uh, stipulation of the individual company and more state law. Um, that might be a, a Washington state thing. I know that at Machinima, they certainly loved rotating uh, contract workers, but they would set that pace because of California state law. Yeah, Angel, I'm drinking a weed. It's a, a THC beverage. Marine, are you at the communications facility yet? You gotta get that message to the fleet now. Hey, uh, Watch out for Campbell and Swan. Those UAC suits don't give a damn about what happens to any of us. Now get a move on. What 
What are your company rules? I'd like to know before I send in my resume. Uh, we really don't have any. Uh, <laughs> whatever is legal. Whatever is legal goes. I just wait for the state of California to send me angry letters. And then I pay them taxes. Oh, wait. King Saren, did they actually officially announce a Halo Battle Royale? Is that what, is that what certain affinity is working on? Everyone, everyone assumed that that was probably going to happen. I didn't know if they officially said it. Oh, shit. Halo Warzone sounds neat. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess it's got the vehicles and stuff. Sure, why not? Yes, sir, and why? I mean, you know why? You know why? Oh, code ref or code from the game referencing it has been leaked and that it's being tested. Okay. Huh. That's why there's not, like, just more stuff. More, more armor chunks. It's because they're just making a new mode. can't get over the terrible Halo Infinite campaign. Yeah, it wasn't very good, was it? I mean, it wasn't bad. I like the grapple. I like the environments, but it did it did seem like it really it really like glitzed people. Uh, people seemed really smitten by the Halo Infinite experience for a while. It was it was good, but I was nonplussed. I don't know, man. I think like ah uh, Halo has its has its uh, I've 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 rambled about Halo enough. It's just weird, man. Halo's in this spot for people. It'll always be there too. I think there's going to be a generation that'll always think really highly of Halo. Um, I'm still confident because it was my position even back when Halo Combat Evolved was out. That's like this is a shooter made specifically for like people who are just getting used to console shooters. It was exactly the right kind of game at exactly the right kind of time. I think everybody's, like, the things that make it Halo are also the things that make it old. How slow it is, the big floaty jumps, the ridiculous auto-aim. They've, they've found, like, Infinite was so smart in bridging a lot of those gaps. But I still think the Halo-ness of it that people like is also the part of it that's going to keep it stuck in the past for us. I do appreciate that it's got a really long time to kill still. Characters in Halo are still really really chunky, and fights feel like duels, which I really like. We're the two old fucks who loved PC FPS and hate how Halo made all PS FPS slow down. They did. Call of Duty made them speed back up. Like, Call of Duty found the baseline that it just has to be this simple, like, shoot, sprint, reload, melee. Uh, and then we, and like also maps that only have like 45 degree or 90 degree hallways. And that's it. No looking up, no looking down. Gotta just screen all that stuff out so we can get the speed back up. And now that people are cool with that, they can start adding the rest of it back in, which is nice. So it's getting there. And at least, at least now with the vibrancy of the PC platform, there's... There's enough room for everybody, which is the ideal situation. Titanfall 2 was moist as fuck. Yeah, Titanfall 2 was the real shit. It was the business. And Doom Eternal now? Also the business. Like, the fact that Doom Eternal is on a console and super playable and viable... Nice. Communication system stuff. overload. It means we did it. I no longer have to resent consoles for holding down. back shooters. Ow. Yeah, I... I don't know. People have such a... Uh, Halo has vertical maps? Yeah, no, I... Sorry, I was referring more to uh, Call of Duty when uh, talking about games that have to strip out the up and down to get, get the speed up. Uh, Halo was always up and down, but it was just really slow uh, to, to accommodate, I think. 
I don't like Doom Eternal too gamey. Yeah, it's very gamey. That's for sure. It's it's borderline arcade, with the like the, with the lights, the indicators, the feedback sounds, and stuff like that. Yeah. Definitely more excited about potential new Doom games over Halo. Yeah, or whatever its software is working on right now. What if they what if they reboot Quake? What if they give Quake the same ridiculous once over that they gave Doom? Like a cosmic horror, like mind of madness shooter, where you're some crazy intergalactic warrior defending the multiverse from from eldritch terrors that want to undo the fabric of reality. That's what Quake is, or that's what Quake One kind of is. Two and four are their own thing. Three is its own thing. Well, whatever. Um, bring back Trent as well. Sure, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Let's check every box. I don't. I don't remember what the last video game Trent Reznor worked on. He's hopefully it's still worth his time. Green. Delta system computers are showing all off-base communication down. It's that fool Swan. You're gonna have to find another way to send that message. Make your way to the satellite room and manually establish a link from there. Base schematics are showing the quickest way is through engineering. You can't fail, Marine. Of course. Get that message sent. What happens we might see a tribes revival ah oh, they tried that what was it tribes ascend i think it was a uh, high res made that like 2013 2014 it was really good oh your receipt built to universal credit greater classic music thanks you for your order those who purchased your selection champagne tomiko by the z-sex also purchased the Head on My Tongue by the Hellish Dragons and 20th Century Classics Various Artists. 20th Century Classics by Various Artists. Great one. What the hell is up with the sentry bots that are stationed in engineering? I thought you told me this was a better place to work than admin. How do you get how do you get to hang around the main communications room? Well, I'm stuck down here. Valid this is the audio log of technician Seamus Dated October 16th, 2145. Our relatively new remote module replacement procedures are taking some time for maintenance technicians to adjust to. In the long run, it's a much safer, quicker, and easier method. Once a technician receives a call, he simply locates the problem module and gives a replacement command through the remote terminal located in the main comm block. This will initiate the replacement procedure as well as create a repair report, which notifies the repair team of an incoming module. Some minor repairs can be done on-site with normal equipment. I'm hoping the new system will need less and less use once the source of the recent power fluctuations is located its home. The system is built to handle most other things with its automated recovery systems. Hello, gooses. Oh! Welcome, everyone. Howdy. We're appreciating the classics tonight. I brought my computer back from the from the brink. I exercised it of all of its de- OW! All of its demons. It's been running like a dream. A beaut. But yeah, playing Doom 3. This is vanilla Doom 3. With a, uh, a pack of mods installed. Last time I was here, this game looked darker. Did my eyes trick me? Uh, I mean, maybe? This is pretty dark, though. This is- this is Doom 3 Extra Dark Edition. Because I have some mods to make it even darker. But also to, like, change and add some shadowing and lighting effects and stuff. What brand is the new motherboard? Uh... MSI. It is, uh, hold on. Got the box right here. An MSI B550 Gaming Plus AMD motherboard. Uh, I didn't- I was kind of starved for choice. Uh, because my motherboard went, or I assumed that my motherboard went out. I think in the long run I was, I was correct, but I just had to look on, uh, like, bestbuy.com and see which AM4 motherboards were in the area. But this one actually is solid. It's got everything I need. Uh, yeah, everything's, everything's fine and dandy. So, shoutouts to Best Buy for having a good motherboard at a reasonable price. Anyway, not sponsored. But yeah, I'm glad that that's working out. Ooh. It was actually a, a bit of a harrowing adventure. 
Uh, it's weird. I, I moved my CPU over, plugged everything in. It booted up just fine. First time I was like, well, that must have been the issue. Problem solved. Started plugging in some other stuff, and then all my monitors just went dead. Like, it actually booted into Windows. I was like, that's it. You know, it's a wrap. I'm done here. And then it just blanked out. And then it wouldn't wouldn't post, like, the rest of the evening. Ah. Hey! Bro! I saw you back there. Oh, look at you just hiding. Maybe you won't notice me. Here. Eventually got it up and running, though. Had to... Zero at the sea boss. He reminds me of another game you played a while ago. Don't remember the name. It was an old game that had been modded, looked super HD and shiny. It had a bunch of rooms to go through and shoot zombie type enemies. It was super sci fi looking. Sci fi zombies. Um, System Shock 2, maybe? Like the the closest one. I want to go back to System Shock 2. It's like Dead Space. Not super old though. I think System Shock 2 might be the one. System Shock 2 was a is a king video game. Was it Prey? Oh, well, could have been, but I doubt it. I haven't. I don't think I've streamed Prey. Ow. Who did that? Who did that? Who did that? Where the fuck? Behind? What the? Oh! Oh! Ugh. I don't know where this guy is. NYC Geek, thank you for the raid. Where? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, not a, not the greatest. Ow, not the greatest. Quick save. There we go. Drop another quick save on that. Honor to raid the quintessential gamer. Oh, well, thank you very much. Then I'm glad I could do you this honor. Looked it up. Is right. Your system shock too. Nice. I need to play through that again. I'm familiar with G-Man Lives. YouTuber? The tone of my voice should imply that I'm not familiar. I'm guessing. That dynamic lighting. The rad dynamic lighting. Ooh, thanks for the anonymous gift. And Blue Metallic Crow, thank you for the resub. And Ozzy is big on FPS games. Cool. I think does YouTube or uh, YouTube video essays, I think, maybe? I don't know. I spend a lot of time making online content, which means I don't spend a lot of time watching it. Which is. I could probably be better at. I think I could stand to take in some proven ideas from other creators. Oh! down here now. Never finished System Shock 2? Oh, man. The last part of it, like, it goes to some different places. It's not all on the space station, which I hope that wasn't too much of a spoiler, but yeah, it, it gets creepy. It's, oh! <laughs> it sounded like a horse. <laughs> haven't had the time. Yeah, I understand. There's a million great games that I want to play. 
all beautiful video games. Now, System Shock, it, System Shock 2 is more of the survival horror energy. Having to be very careful with your, your resources and your ammo. Things are breaking, you gotta repair stuff. You're always, like, packing, packing bags of chips into your mouth. Insisting on, like, cola and chips. <laughs> That's a sick reveal, reveal though. Reveal? I oh, I said it that way. I mean, it's, it's the game that Irrational made before they made Bioshock. Um, and also, it was a more PC sort of experience, so... Kind of harder RPG application, inventory management, a lot of that stuff. Um, but it had, like in the way that Bioshock had a whoa, like a, a mindfuck moment. System Shock 2 had one of those too. And it was pretty good. It was really good. That's, I think that's what didn't, like I still really, really liked Bioshock. But after playing System Shock 2, the trick wasn't quite as amazing. worked. It's, would you say it gave you a shock? It did, actually. In the reveal moment of System Shock 2, I got goosebumps, man. That was awesome. Are you, you nerd? Where are you? Oh! Oh! I didn't see him! Jeez. Oh, crap. I heard... Oh, no, no. Yeah, if you're playing System Shock 1, you could see it coming for sure. They did they did enjoy spoiling the, the twist, or like teeing it up really hard. Yeah, if you're paying attention at all, and you know what to expect. Twist and Shock 2 didn't get me as hard as I guess other people did from on my first time playing. Yeah, I wasn't used to games, like, doing twists at all. So that, that was kind of the novelty of it. I think I think the impact that a lot of people got with Bioshock... Ow, dude! Was, was me with System Shock 2, specifically. Oh, he's gonna kill me because he has a stupid shield! Ugh. sucks hard that in development for System Shock 3 fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, it does. I'm I'm wondering if the remake does well enough that I don't know if Night Dive is the one who has the rights to it. But I'm hoping if the remake does well, then maybe it will create an environment where working on three or pursuing three is worth it. That's kinda how I feel about Max Payne with the remakes of Remedy. If one and two sell well enough I don't know if that automatically means Remedy would get to make a pain four, but it would make it more likely, for sure. Your request for communication security access is granted. Officers are now allowed access to level two security areas. Communication cabinet code is 246. Cool. Join now and save 20%. Dear radar enthusiast, you're being offered a one-time exclusive opportunity to become part of the most exciting subject in the solar system, radar technology. Please take this opportunity to save 20% off our normal prices. If you feel this is for you, please respond immediately. Martian buddy, were you saved? Who wants to buy some discount radars? What's up, Silver to Bomb? Oh, jeez. Shoot, guys are real turds. I think plasma hurts hurts them even if you hit the front of their shield. Or it, I think it has, like, small AoE... Patches Keck. Thank you for the resub. I still have to ride you over till the next novel reading? Yeah, it, it won't be too much longer now. I'm gonna do another subathon soon. But that'll be with, uh... Fallout New Vegas. Because I never finished that game. Black Goose Goof. Thank you very much for the resub. Oh, jeez. Oh. oh, yeah, it's... Oh, I'm, oh, I died. That's right, tomorrow's patched... Or tomorrow's tax day, huh? Okay, that's fine. I think I don't have anything going on in the morning. My returns have been prepared, I just gotta look them over and double check all the numbers. Hurry up. 
Marine. I believe the source of the invasion was from the main portal here in Delta. After you send that transmission, get here as quickly as possible. Taxes just review how shit the IRS is. I mean, they've never given me any trouble, I guess. Aside from taking my money. But like, I've been able to submit my, submit my taxes fine. They've never audited me. Did VR stream ever be a, an idea? I've streamed VR a couple times. It's okay. It's just less comfortable and a worse viewing experience. I think that's kind of the fundamental. <clears throat> I don't think me, I don't think me playing a game in VR creates a better stream for anybody. Uh, like the, the, the view that you guys get is not as smooth and, and it's usually quite a bit pinched off in terms of FOV. So it gets a little hard to see what's going on in the game. Uh, sometimes floating floating UI. So like health and armor and, and ammo and stuff like that. It's not always visible uh, from, a pers from, a, from a perspective's viewpoint. Or a viewer's viewpoint. So it gets harder just to follow the narrative of gameplay for anyone that cares to do that. Um, I used to stream every night in VR chat, and I had a nightclub. We would do new sets each night. 2018 was wild. Uh, yeah, I could see something like VR chat being really fun. That is that is a VR experience that is like I think does provide something unique to viewers. But if it's like if it's a normal game just in VR, that's cool for me. But it none of that translates to anyone else, and I don't think my reactions to VR games are so much more. Uh, Profound that they add value to the stream either. Is it? Oh, hold on a minute. Is it difficult to do your taxes as a? Hold on. I'm trying to. F oh, here we go. Silver asks, is it difficult to do your taxes as a content creator slash streamer? Not typically, no. Because I've I've filed as a sole proprietor slash uh, self-employed person for many years. You just have to like. There's more numbers to fill out, basically. There's more exceptions and rules to look over. See if they apply to you. They often don't, though. Um, what's complicated this year is I now have an LLC. I have a business. Uh, and I've paid wages out. Not W-2 wages. I've only paid people as contractors. But still, uh, the, the way that I take in money now is money comes into my company's checking account. And then I pay myself payroll as a W-2 employee. Uh... And that changes my tax situation much more than just taking in money as an individual and then paying the taxes on that money. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, I also pay out pay out multiple contractors. Uh, Bruce and I square up our money with Inside Games once a month, uh, which is also kind of money flowing in and out. So, yeah, my situation is, is a little more complicated than uh, I would say your typical streamer, where streaming is their primary and maybe only source of income. Yeah, I've got I've got several, uh, and then also kind of pay out money in several ways. So, I own a bar and I'm on a W two because it's way easier. Yeah, yeah. What uh, I have a CPA this year, hopefully one that I can develop a, uh, a multi year relationship with. Uh, and they elected my company as an S corp, an S corp LLC. Which means I pay myself out wages, but then the revenue that the company takes in that doesn't flow to me as payroll isn't taxed as heavily or isn't subject to self-employment tax. So that way I can avoid spending money that isn't like necessarily going directly into my bank account, but is being used for business stuff. Uh, yeah. So that that will that will save me some money. Computer system shows Swan and Campbell are still in the area. Watch out for them. Get that transmission sent. That's what's slightly more complicated about it too. This tax talk is the content I come here for. Yeah, it's 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 front of mind for me right now because uh, I have, uh tomorrow's tomorrow's filing deadline. <sighs> but I already have like um 
I already have extensions filed just in case. We're all old. Yep. I don't mind it because uh, it's it's an annoyance, but it's one that I enjoy because it results in me being able to get money out to people. That's that's the end goal for me. Is uh you know for for people who like I can't afford professionals not yet anyway, but for people who are starting out, I can give them you know solid work that pays well and pays on time. Like I can I can try to be one of the good ones. That's my goal. Uh, and the back end of that means that there's just a little more paperwork to handle. Hey, bro. Mom told me that you were heading home in a week or so. I bet you can't wait for that, can you? I've been pretty busy down here. Little Annie is almost nine now. Can you believe that? Diane and I were thinking about another one soon. We're going to have to move into a double wide orbiter. Anyway, I won't keep you. See you soon. Flapper. <laughs> Dude's name is... This guy's brother's name is Flapper? Oh, yeah. And everyone... Everyone in the, uh... Utopian Society of Europe, or I guess Sweden, has their taxes done for them. Even if I should be self-employed, I just have to review their numbers and accept. That's so awesome. And it creates work, too. Don't forget Trivia Quiz Night is this Wednesday. Do yourself a favor and brush up on the Shakespeare, mate. If we lose those twits into administration again, we'll never hear the end of it. Although I imagine there are probably people there who would rather not have to pay the taxes and would rather do it themselves? Or, uh, would rather pay their, a private company of their choosing to, f to prepare those taxes. Let the free market sort it out. Why do we need all these cushy government jobs? Manual uplink established. That's welfare. That's a welfare state. Marine, you hear me? Back off from that console. Do not call for reinforcements. We don't know what the hell is going on here. And until we do, this area remains under UAC control. Cancel that transmission. Satellite connection established. <gasps> Surely it doesn't matter, right? You fool. You have no idea what you just did. <laughs> just get hold of those ships. Who knows what could happen? Actually, wait, hold on. See what happens if you cancel it. Transmission terminated. We did the right thing. Until we know what's happening here, we need to keep ourselves sealed off from everyone else. The monorail entrance looks clear. Meet up with us there. We need to reach the Delta Complex and stop this. Do you meet up with them if you, if you send it anyway? You fool. You have no idea what you just did. If the creatures get hold of those ships, who knows what could happen? You might have endangered all of Earth. I'm going to Delta to stop this. Don't get no Transmission way. successful. I'm actually going to go Transmission with Transmission terminated. We did the right thing. I wonder if you get more cuts in this We way. know what's happening There's here. More dialogue. We need to keep we trust ourselves you now? sealed off from everyone else. Branching stories were the big deal back then. Oh, Quiet Storm, 1904. Thank you for the prime. And stop this. Missed that a while ago. Thank you very much. Turn to the lobby. Head for the monorail station. Green, you have just violated the direct order. Get your ass back to that console and send that transmission. Green, this is your last chance to get... Huh. That's interesting. Some variable dialogue there. Stopped working out since my wife became a towel. I got rye, but she got wet. What? <laughs> anyway, what's your advice for workout routine? I feel like there was a joke there that I didn't quite get. Um, has to do with vaginal moisture. Ow! Oh my gosh! Uh, that's my advice for a workout routine. It's gonna be boring. Uh, and it, maybe it should be funnier. Maybe we should just make a joke. That's too late. It's too late for jokes. Uh, anything sustainable. Anything sustainable. Find what's sustainable and add on to that. Examine, examine your, uh, your... Pattern. Well, examine your behaviors. Like the times you, you've you been able to work out or you've worked out in a manner that you liked and you felt positive growth. 
Examine all the factors and see if you can recreate them. See if you can intentionally move things around in your life to get closer to that scenario. Um, yeah, make, make actual changes to your... Ow! My god! Oh, just do steroids. Exactly, just do steroids. Joke is I was getting drier, she was getting wetter. I get that, why were you getting drier? Crack does wonders, just a little crack, a little meth. A little meth never hurt nobody. Why they marry a towel? Yeah. Why would why would somebody marry a towel? Dry on steroids. Steroids make you dry. Jeez. Good advice. Thanks. Been in a bad spot. Love you, man. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I've um. This is, this is, it's different for everybody, which is another sort of oversaid thing that doesn't mean anything. But, uh, I'm saying that as sort of a disclaimer in that, uh, what works for me may not work for everybody. But, I, I find more success if I examine my behavior patterns, um, like, pretty, pretty, like, almost scientifically. Where's the... Go to the lobby and head for the monitor. Lobby in the garage? Blue Metallic Crow, thanks for gifting us up. But yeah, I, I, it, once I start thinking about myself, like, like somebody else I'm giving advice to, uh, if I, if I examine myself in the third person, and if I think if this were someone else, if this were a friend, and this friend were asking me, how can I do blank? What, like, what are the mistakes I'm making? I would look at my life that way as like an objective outsider and notice like, okay, you tend to overeat in these situations. So like, find ways to avoid those situations. Don't just not do it or try to cut it off. Like, try to avoid the strings of behavior that lead to the unde that, that terminate in the undesirable behavior. Change the decisions before that. Cut it off from happening. That kind of thing. I have to be eating while watching TV shows and movies at my PC? Yeah? Yeah, then that's just a... That's just a situation you have to be aware of then. Then maybe, like... Merge that activity with the meals you have. So, uh, watch movies and TV at breaks during the day, and those are your meal breaks. And then make sure that your meals are, like prepared nutritious foods so if you do have a habit of of station two what the heck i think i'm not supposed to be here so if you do have that habit you can maybe merge it with another one to make it not an unhealthy one i experimented with that a little bit uh like coming down off of weed you get hungry but if you time it so that, like, you get high in, like, two hours before you would normally have a meal, and then you have that meal prepared, or you already know what you're going to eat, so that's, like, locked in, then, uh, when you're coming off of weed, you can just have, like, a nice chicken breast and some vegetables, and it still tastes really good. You still get the, the hit. It still works in exactly the same way. It's just instead of Cheetos, you're eating grilled chicken. You're just like, oh, garlic or something. Broken mouse. Oh, damn. Broken mouse. Thank you for gifting 10 subs. I don't know. Where do they want me to go here? Maybe I have to go back up to communications? Thank you very much, uh, broken mouse. Appreciate that generosity. Appreciate those subs. You've given the gifts of no ads. 10 people for a month. A harbor from the storm. Sub-level 1 left access control is located at station 2. Just a place I was supposed to go in here? I 
My weight loss plan is to move to Japan and have society shame me into losing weight. Pretty sure it's gonna work. Yeah, just random comments from strangers. Oh, you're quite fat. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I am. I wonder how, uh, how successful that is. I think... I wonder for, like, Americans. Would it be easier to move to a country where the food portions are more humane? Or would you just end up, like, getting multiple portions to overeat in the same way? I wondered about that. I've gotten a bit better, uh, with proportions and stuff. Definitely, like, carry around a lot of leftovers these days. Broken mouse, holy crap! With 20 subs now. Maybe I should turn off the, the sub alerts. <laughs> That's gonna be a lot of wows. But you know what? That is a lot of wow. Wow. Thank you very much, Broken. I appreciate that. I'm gonna lose- I'm gonna lose a pound. Just for that. Just because. Just cuz. I was gonna do that anyway. I'm actually on a pretty good weight loss tear so far. Okay, I guess I am supposed to go back up to communications. Weird. Ooh. I've been ripping shit up in, uh, Ring Fit. Almost at level 150. pretty good at squats. I've been doing a lot of yoga too because I've I felt myself tighten up real bad the past couple of weeks, so that's been helping a lot. Okay, now the monorail's up. Yeah. Snacking, all the snacking. Yeah, late night snacks get me. That's, that's actually a, a behavior pattern that I've identified that I haven't figured out how to cut off yet. Um, the best I've been able to do is to make my late night snacks be uh be healthy so like like greek yogurt with almost no sugar uh an apple which is kind of carbohydrates but you know it's not chips but yeah yeah i get kind of i get kind of snacky late at night and i think if i could if i could drop that i would hit i would hit my weight loss goals so much faster by brushing your teeth early I've tried that, and I even I even wear like I'm doing trays again to get my teeth back in line. So it, there, it's even more work to like put the trays in and like feel like that's locked in, right? Like I can't eat now. But in the past, I've even just taken the trays out, <laughs> taken the trays out and had like berries and stuff. Oh, it's so scary! Broke my broke my bridge with his demon power. Oh shit! One thing that I have identified there is, uh, that is, that is a, a very direct consequence of indulging in THC at night. Uh oh Because if I, if I start to sober up, like, exactly when I'm going to bed, then that means that the, the munchies basically are hitting me when my stomach is at its emptiest at the end of the day. So it's, a uh, it's it's kind of a one-two punch, and I I've at least identified the uh, the pattern, and I know why it's happening. I just have to like. I think that's one thing I that's like the last thing to really nailing my calories every day and getting to my weight loss goals on schedule. I throw myself off a lot. It's just delays, you know. I'll get there eventually. I think I've finally gotten to a point where over a long enough time period, I'm gonna get down to where I want to be. But it's just, it's the smallest things. Oh, it's the smallest things that over time make the biggest differences. Those tiny little habits. It's, it's ridiculous how like, how little 300 calories really is and how it can make the difference between gaining or losing weight over the course of a month. It's so small, dude. Bodies are so ridiculous. I don't know how people like, without, without writing everything down, I have no idea how you know. I don't know how people and stay, like, lean, uh, just kind of eyeballing it, or just going by how they feel. 300 calories is nothing. I can, like, sneeze and eat 300 calories. Like, during... Ooh! Being lean is hard. It is! 
I, I get, like, I don't necess I get, like, being uh, disciplined enough once you know what you're putting in your body and, and what you're spending out. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm able to work out every day, so that helps. Yeah, that must, like, having a really active lifestyle must give you a lot of, a lot of buffer. Oh, he's so mad. Revenants are awesome. It's, it's for real doom now. He's dead. Booger's so addictive. Yeah, it is. It really is. It's crazy. Once I started... I've heard people say this before, and it's so it's weird to be saying it now. But yeah, once you start eating things that don't have sugar in them, you can taste it. You can taste... Uh, you can taste over sugar in everything. I finally stopped putting, like, sugar in my, like, coffee and stuff, because I noticed just sipping on even slight amounts of sugar uh, just kind of made me feel gross. Just put a weird taste in my mouth. Same with salt. Oh, man, I still love salt. Salt has no calories, so I'm okay with over-salting things. I'm sure... I'm sure if... The only salt uh, flavor that I get now is not enough. It's the only salt reaction I have. This needs more salt. Corn syrup uh, isn't everything we eat. Yeah. It, yeah, it's gotten to where I can taste it. It has kind of like a cloyingly sweet, twi twingy, kind of sour aftertaste. I mean, it's the corn. I, it's almost like a corn aftertaste. Stale corn. Uh, it is what it is. But, uh, but yeah, I don't like it. I've, I've gotten to where, like, yeah, the, the bread and the yogurt that I pick is mostly just whatever has the least amount of sugar in it. Actually, sugar can be pretty good in yogurt, but... But, oh man, is, is yogurt calorie efficient once you take all the sugar out? What the fuck is corn syrup? <laughs> I guess it's corn turned into a syrup, and it's sweet. It's like a specific kind of corn that's a very bred to be a very simple, sweet carbohydrate, I guess. Yeah, I never really looked into how corn syrup is made. But it is the universal sweetener here in the United States. I take an antidepressant that takes away hunger and the craving for sugar. It's really good because I just eat less. Oh. It's called, uh... Bupropion? Okay. I guess I didn't think about that. Medication that just makes you not hungry. I don't know, some people are just not hungry. They just don't care for food. I don't know, I think also sometimes I do uh, underestimate how many people are just, like... ...on drugs or whatever. Maybe, maybe not everybody. I, I uh, Here's what it is. Oh, Gamer McGee, thank you for the cheer. Uh, thank you. Uh, I remember reading an interview with John Mulaney. And in the interview, he talked about how he found food to be a nuisance. And I was like... <laughs> like what a... What a I don't know. To me, I was like, what a sniveling, weird thing. That's like that's like saying, I don't care for music. Too loud. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, come to find out. The man was... The man was rocking cocaine. So, of course, he didn't care about eating. Man. Chaos 40K. Thank you for the prime. Ugh. Ow, fuck. Oh, jeez. This is rough. I've always been skinny and often go days eating one to two meals per day. Never been underweight, but I've definitely never been able to put it on. Mm. Just gotta introduce you to the beauty of chicken nuggets. Did you know you can eat 20 of them? Did you know you can eat 20 whole chicken nuggets in one sitting? Because you can. Surely you won't regret eating 20 whole chicken nuggets. Nobody does. It's the one thing everyone loves to do. Eating 20 whole chicken nuggets. Oh. I think there was another one. Ooh! 
Oh, there's another one. Woo! 20 is rookie numbers. <laughs> I just did that once and I felt really gross. Yeah, those nug numbers are low. Gotta pump those nugs. I always feel like I have to eat until I can't eat anymore. Yeah, that's... Toast, that's a pretty common reaction. Uh, what I found... And, th and this kind of goes hand in hand with what I was talking about earlier. And, and this is, again, just how I think about it. But to not... To be out... To be in your body and not outside of it, I guess. To, to be grounded and literal in how you think about your feelings and your reactions to things. When you sit down to eat, you have to consciously acknowledge that your body's going to want to eat more than you, the thinking you, should eat or, or in the long run, will feel good about eating. Uh, it's not a lot of the times, too. It's, it's like it's deciding in advance how much you're going to eat with your thinking brain and then not giving yourself over to the reverie of a meal, which sucks because it feels really good to just operate on instinct, operate on id, especially while you're eating. Just give yourself fully over to, like, animal brain and just, like, really savor all the food and decide, like, impulsively as you go what you're going to eat and how you're going to eat it. And then you take us away water and you're like, rah, 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 rah. like, that. that is the best. Uh, and, it, and certainly life should be lived that way more than once. But every meal sh can't be that. Uh, it's got to be more like, this is a meal where I'm going to nourish my body in this specific way. And I'm going to give my, I'm going to, like, take this in because... It makes sense in the day that I'm going to have and the week that I'm going to have, like what I'm going to do next. Like you have to, it's unfortunately like that kind of process or that's what I've helped or I find has helped with me. Is I have to make decisions with that sort of thinking. Really think about it like, you know, you know, it's a car you're maintaining. It's a, it's a machine you're operating. It's eating for fuel. Which is, again, it's dumb and dispassionate, and it can be frustrating to think that way. Especially if you're used to eating being an emotional thing. Which I love it being, which kind of sucks. It's almost like you're... You're holding out on yourself, I guess? That, that's kind of what it is. Whee! Said short-term goals, uh start that way and you'll slowly be able to go longer yeah for survival not comfort yeah yeah pretty much what I've started to to try and grasp and hold on to more is that eating right is a gift to my body or it's a favor maybe think about it in terms of like positive relationships uh I, I'm going to give my body clean fuel to run on because it feels good when I do and it'll do me favors by running well and uh, looking good and like it won't protest I have to be my bar my body's partner we have to work together and part of that is giving it what it wants not necessarily what my soul wants Just macaroni and cheese gut bacteria you can control your appetite huh well, that's actually another thing I noticed too is that uh, there was definitely an overeating pattern tied to drinking I would drink a little too often which is bad calorie wise already but then it would upset my stomach and I would just have like ooh I would just have sort of like generally upset stomach the next day as part of a hangover but with an upset stomach, it was really hard to tell how hungry I was. Because my stomach would just feel uncomfortable all the time. And it would feel better to eat more. So it would actually, like, send the wrong signals to my brain. That I was hungrier than I thought I was because I was actually feeling pain. And that the relief I felt when I ate was my hunger going away. Instead of just the discomfort of having an empty, hungover stomach going away. So I think that can be tricky, too. I think sometimes your brain can can mix up signals it sucks because in the way that you want to be your 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 body's partner and friends with your body your brain can can fuck with you um and it's trying its best too but it's also not perfect i think that's that's maybe another part of it is realizing that 
your your brain and the systems that control your body are are also flawed and they deserve constant or er, conscious monitoring so i think uh the brain can can interpret and misassign a lot of feelings and a lot of sensations and it again requires that sort of like conscious analysis of like am i hungry should i be hungry now what have i eaten today does it make sense for me to be hungry and all that stuff Warning. Flow control system failure. Toxins identified. Execute cleanup procedure. Look at all this goo. Squiggly doom goo. How do you maintain the social battery to stream for so long? Uh, this doesn't actually expend any of my social... Social endurance. Because everyone is like... Warning. Control system. I guess I guess I understand and am very comfortable ooh, with the I guess the rules of streaming online. Also, it ee, it is a place where within the boundaries of good taste, nearly everything I say is okay. It's like in bounds, maybe. If people if people get offended or something, like I don't have to I don't have to burn a lot of uh, social energy. Uh monitoring how I'm acting or uh, anything. Maybe I don't have to do that in normal social circumstances, but sometimes it feels like I do. Maybe, maybe, maybe I overreact to social responses and social cues because I think, I think I'm constantly paranoid that I'm missing them because I missed them for a long time. But in this, in this circumstance, there are no social cues. All it is is text. So there's nothing for me to like overreact to or hyperanalyze. Um... So I don't know. But yeah. It, ooh. And it doesn't really take that much. Also, like, I'm pretty blessed because everyone is everyone is really nice. <laughs> I uh, either either just incidentally through my personality or through some maybe some specific community curation moments. There's a lot of really nice people in chat, so it doesn't, like, it doesn't work. I don't get a whole lot of negativity and combativeness. Uh, there's, there's, like, it's, it's really smooth flowing. So I, uh, I think maybe if, if chat were more antagonistic or I maybe invited more antagonism, then maybe a bit, be a bit more exhausting. Uh, I also, I'm also pretty passive when it comes to messaging stuff. It might it might take a little more mental gas if I like were constantly trying to like push energy levels up or or stuff like that, uh, or like if I were concerned about numbers or anything like that and trying to like kind of act out. But this is me in my most default state. Oh, weird how a lot of Twitch is just super chill. It's because people have to do it for hours. I have to, but. I do think it is. It lends itself better to to something that's a little more relaxed. I got a video, right? Welcome to the UAC Maintenance Department. This video will provide you with the necessary tools and information to do your job efficiently and safely. A safe worker is a happy worker, and ah. your safety is our number one priority at UAC. Observe all signs and follow all procedures to keep you and your co-workers out of harm's way. Many signs. Cleanup is one of the most important aspects of what we do in maintenance. This phase of our job keeps everyone safe, and research has shown <laughs> no that working in a clean and toxic-free environment has a positive... Oh, look! A smiley face right there. Power generation on Mine go up. produces two byproducts, steam and green goo. We vent the steam all over the base through vents, floor grates, cleverly placed pipes, and pretty much any place else. <laughs> it is a result of the MFS process reacting with core elements in the Martian soil. It is not radioactive, but it is quite toxic. Remove all toxic spills at once. Hazmat suits are the best way to protect yourself when a spill occurs. And if you happen to come in contact with the goo, report immediately to a medical station for a scrub down. After a few days in confinement, 
you should be ready to report back to work. <laughs> report any rule violations to your immediate supervisor. And don't forget to read your employee handbook for additional rules and information. <laughs> Super bad at social interactions, but you feel comfortable talking on stream. There's... I feel like talking through streams, uh, or like talking in, talking in a group text chat, takes away a lot of the factors that can make interacting in a per group in person a little more stressful, socially anxious. Uh, like if no one's talking in, in a group chat, it doesn't matter, right? But somehow collective silence in a group feels so much weirder in person. Uh, in the flow of natural conversation, even group conversation, there's almost this like, it's like tennis, you know? People are expected to like talk and exchange information and take turns. Whereas in a group chat, you can lurk. You can lurk until there, you have something to say, I guess. Uh, which I guess is true if the group is big enough and there's always somebody talking. But yeah, it's almost like, I don't know, the dynamic is a bit different. The dynamic's different and I feel like it, talking online takes away a lot of the stuff that can make it difficult. Or uh, make it require more mental energy, I suppose. I'm in a group discussion in person at uni, and no one wants to start talking. I would start blurting out after five seconds to break it. Yeah, Damask, uh, and God bless you. Uh, that's the thing that I, I think I've settled into as well, is that like there's so many different kinds of people that have different social interactions and stuff. I think it's... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. I think it's having the self... It's having the... Self-confidence is, is a little too... It's not quite what I mean, but it's having the comfort with self to trust yourself and your actions in a group setting. And just roll with it. To, like, feel it. Feel the group. Uh, not physically. It's gross. Unless it's, you know, some kind of party. Anyway... Yeah, that, that takes... I, th I think that just takes time. Maybe? Or it maybe just never really feels completely natural to certain people. I don't know. People just don't want to interact nowadays. I think some people do, but yeah. I think I think people interact less, so it makes people less likely to want to do it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm projecting too hard with that. But I do feel like it's something that is... Uh, can be practiced. And makes it, uh, makes it easier the more you do it. Something like a group chat, you have time to think and consider what you're saying before you say it. I don't know how people do that and listen at the same time. Maybe that's the trick. You have to listen to what's being said while also monitoring your own, like, I guess, internal dialogue for things that might be additive to say. My judgment's not so hot there, though. And I think that's, the, that's why Twitch is good. Because I say a lot of stuff that doesn't matter. Uh... And I think that annoys people sometimes. I don't have I don't have a good judge of what other people would find interesting. So the things I find interesting are not interesting to other people. So figuring out that balance is I think the thing. Uh, and that can be I guess that's just trial and error, maybe. Saracen's lament, hey, how you doing? Uh, I have learned that uh just in general I need to say less. Oh, talking on Twitch. It's great. Because you gotta feel Gotta feel the stream, personality, and pump malfunctions. Nick loss. Redirected control for the main pump to the flow service terminal located on the maintenance platform above this area. The main pump should crack or malfunction and cause a spill. The only way to shut it down would be from there. Entry into the pump room would just be too dangerous. If any questions, please see. Well, there's got to be a code in this one, Mr. Sadawage. I fear that the rumors I've been hearing might actually be true. The other day, someone from my team was cleaning up a toxic spill in Delta, and they said they actually saw some sort of creature down there. He'd know what it was, but it really scared him and got us thinking we can't be too careful. I've locked some ammunition and combat armor in the cabinet by the monorail airlock door here in Sector 2. If you ever need to get out, the code is 43. Brad. Cool little, like, drum beat going on here. I was always great, even when the topic gets a nerve. 
Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I wonder what the right balance there is. I think, uh, I think it's far more rewarding and safer <laughs> to, uh, to offer ideas and kind of incorporate and react to other people's experiences than it is to offer uh, so much of my specific thoughts on things, because I only have one tiny perspective on stuff. I feel, I feel like I've done maybe a little too much of that. Pump station shut down. What's up, Asuk? Azuk? Hello. Can't please everyone. You do really good though. Well, thank you. No, it's. I guess it's not. It's not super my intent to please. Although maybe that's one way of saying it. More that um. I think this stream has more value as a place where people can decompress than an event as a space f to hear one dude's charged opinions about complicated topics. Uh. Also, just the older I get, like, <laughs> the less, the less, like, time and interest I have in opinions, and that includes my own. I, man, I don't even care what I think sometimes. Which is tough, because it can, like, I see people, like, making content and, like, earning money and getting growth out of being very opinionated. I'm like, gosh, oh, uh, I could, I guess I could have opinions. I have opinions. I guess I could say them out loud. Yes. But, ugh, how exhausting. How exhausting to have opinions. I had a friend from rural Colorado come down to SoCal to visit. When encountering a group of people with nice looking old Toyotas, a friend is a Toyota fanboy, he reached out and said something along the lines of, Hey guys, sweet Yodas. They looked real nice. Or they look real nice. And they completely and utterly ignored him and turned back to their conversation. Huh. Yeah, that can happen. Uh, I guess here, uh, you don't always have the assurance that somebody is approaching you in good faith. And if you don't need anything and don't want anything from a stranger, you have no real reason to engage with them. Aside from figuring out, like, ten minutes from now that they're asking you for money or something. So, yeah. I agree, that can that can maybe be a side effect of uh big city heartlessness. Oh Not something else. It's kind of the California way. Yeah, there's just so many people here. I guess that's the other thing too, is like if they already had a group, they probably weren't looking to make any new friends, I don't know. It's just been so many, like, hallways and panels and grates and stuff, though. I've gotta really appreciate how much, like, en environment variety has just been such a, such a design point that's been drilled in. I wonder if that's something this game got, got knocked for in, in the review cycle. you brought up active listening in regards to group conversation. I never really think about it because I've done it through my career so much. Yeah? I... Maybe that's the problem is I'm not... I usually don't active listen as a... as like a... something that I'm consciously trying to do. I'm just genuinely more interested in what other people have to say than what I have to think. Uh, so when other people are talking, they usually like... I'm usually like really interested in what they have to say. Uh, and then I think what happens is because I'm because I'm like following what they say, then it'll go direct from like a reaction or a connection in my brain to speech, uh, which means that I'm not putting the right amount of thought 
to what I say or why I'm saying it. It's more like, well, this is how my brain reacts to the thing that you just said. Because I guess I thought that was conversation, maybe. Is, uh... Is two people exchanging ideas and thoughts. But I think... The thing that I think drains me, then, is putting that barrier in the... It is think before you speak in its most fundamental way, but it's like... It's not, it's not necessarily that, it's more like... What's the point and value of saying this to the person I'm about to say it to? And how will they receive it? Like, go through all those checks. First, what the heck is going on here? Hey, what's up, McPop? Or MC Pop 9 The game is too dark, how dare you? Literally, when I played this on a CRT, I couldn't see jack shit. That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> I've, uh, no, I, it's fine. If, if you don't, if you don't like it, uh, I get it. It's annoying. But I think it's part of the game's conscious design that I think makes it really unique and fun and nerve-wracking and cool-looking. But you have to be so willing to to follow it down and have faith in it. Like, it, it can be hard to see, but all the enemies largely have little light sources on them. Tiny little beady eyes glow in the dark ever so slightly. You can just barely see it. What the heck, man? Do I need to blow this up? I actually really like the uh, the gameplay implication of making you choose between a gun and a light source. Although guns can also be a light source, uh, depending on the gun. The plasma lights up like crazy. Makes it really easy to see for a little bit, as long as you're shooting. What the heck? Where do they want me to go? Am I supposed to go up here? Maybe I wasn't supposed to go up here. Maybe I just keep going up. It does look pretty cool if this game wasn't called Doom. Yeah, that might have... Yeah, I can see why that would set certain expectations. I don't know, I kind of talked about this before. But for I think for a lot of people, this was Doom. This was the Doom they played. Because there were a lot of people that played Doom very slow. And played it like it was a horror game. They got really scared by all the demons. And thought all the maps were super crazy cool looking and oppressive. So... For the person who played Doom like that and had that experience, this is a Doom game. Um, it wasn't necessarily the Doom that I played. I, you know, I played the fast, metal thrashing Doom Eternal Doom. Uh, so I, I identify with that experience a lot more, but I get it. I get what they were going for. I see how this is a part of Doom. It was a part of the original Doom. Reminds me almost of Quake 4. Yeah. Quake 4 is, is special. Quake 4 is awesome. Also on this engine. I want to do a, a modded Quake 4 playthrough soon, too. I swear it has to be this way. How's the aiming feel on mouse? When I played it on Xbox, it felt kind of sluggish. Uh, it felt that way the first time I played it, even on PC, because it was just running really poorly. But now that it's, uh, now that my PC can annihilate it, it actually feels really good. It feels pretty, pretty responsive. The animations are not crazy snappy, though. The animations are a lot more kind of floaty and spongy. Of, like, reloading and shooting. But aiming around feels nice. What the heck am... Okay, so the entire level flows through to here. There's, like... There's nothing. What am I missing? Is there, like, a switch I have to hit? Well... Ah, Christ, it's 12.30. I should probably call it call it for the night. Getting stuck is a good good reason to do that. Mantle. Eh. 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 Whatever. Yeah, I think I'll call it there for tonight. Ugh, I'm just so pleased. Actually, actually, I'll call it there for Doom. Thank you for watching Doom.